seconds to the VT, VT lit in the street. Only miss. It's on blue actually, mate. Whether you're playing in the shadows of rugby's greatest fortress or in Wales' wild interior. Thomas Williams will score for Wales. You're part of our team. Your team. the corner of the cup through snow so the jasmine choice gets there the custodian of this jersey represents everyone else who wears it from the verdant valleys of the south to the craggy mountains of the north a try scored here began way back there. Hannah Jones seals this victory for Wales. Because every player's journey starts at a rugby club somewhere. This jersey is your jersey. This game is your game. It's where we all, through the chosen few, become one. Umline Cymru. It's been an initiative at Fitbed, run by the WIU, and currently today we're working uh, here within the Dragons region with all the disability children from around our region. It's lovely to see them all today here. I was very excited for today to meet up with uh, the trainers, the coaches, uh, all, my, all my friends from normal rugby training just to have a day out. As a mother, to see Regan playing with other children today is just a godsend. Like, without the inclusion sport, Regan wouldn't have anything. As where we live, we haven't got any um, football teams, rugby teams that will take on children with additional needs. So this is very, very important. Ready? Come on, sweetheart. Go oh, off. Have you go? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh that it. Wow. You are so strong. My son is Leo, he's nine years old and he's got Down syndrome. You need groups like this that can have children who've got all different abilities but with a disability um, and they can just they can be blossoming that ability then, you know, in that sport. It is respite for myself as well because I can send him here and then he just has fun with, with meeting new friends and building his confidence. Rugby is a game for everybody and it should be a game for everybody um, and I think now the, the Union and the Dragons and, and the other regions alike 
are really focusing on that inclusion, on, on those inclusion strategies to make sure that everything's accessible no matter what disability you have. So we like to think that these sort of things are the, are the kickstart for those children then to move forward and enjoy rugby. The new changing facilities are fantastic. It brings a real brightness for our, for our walk-in values. We ask the players just to concentrate on the rugby element side of things and close working group have worked hard to let the players do that and the changing rooms are certainly one, of the, one part of that. It's part of their toolkit. Well, this changing room, for example, um, the plasterboard was falling off the ceiling. Um, there was a lot of damp and mould in here. We've got under sixes to youth and two senior teams running, so we need all the changing rooms running all the time. So the facilities, grand. we wouldn't have been able to do it without the WRU helping us. So it's been a really big help for us. It took between six and seven weeks in total, but we did have a little bit of a break in the middle because we had such hot weather. Um, putting the ventilation system in the attic was a bit of a, an arduous task, so they had to pull off for a week. But yeah, so it was really quick, yeah, really happy with the work and the, the contractors. It means a lot. As a club and a community, we've been on a journey for about seven, eight years. Uh, really incorporating bleed black and amber as, uh, as a club motto uh, and that does uh, transpire for, from million juniors up to seniors and back again. We couldn't have done it without the WRU backing because of the, the cost of the changing rooms to be done. We just wouldn't have been able to with the funds that we've got. We've been happy with the last 125 years and hopefully with the WRU backing we can get through the next 125 years plus. groups like this that can have children who've got all different abilities and they can just blossom in that ability. A lot of kids growing up like me are in the same position as me. My take on rugby because they've seen someone that might look like them or from the same area as them doing that. We can use rugby as a vehicle to empower people to see that they can actually do much more, then, then it, it, it's worth its weight in gold. Pinaich bod chi'n chwarae yng nghysgodion y gair gydarnaf y mid rygbi. Neu mas yng ngwyll cefn gwlad Cymru. Thomas Williams will score for Wales! Rhi chi'n rhan o'n tîm ni, eich tîm chi. the corner of the cup through Snowsell and Jasmine Joyce gets there. My Ceidwad y Chris hwn yn cynrych i oli pawb ar at sy'n ei wisgo. Ronach yr add, 
Dean Hardy and Arat and then Arvi the goal yet. Ah, Josh Adams in the Dali. Ah, and it's gone. O gymoedd godidog y de, i fynyddoedd mawreddog y gogledd, mae cais sy'n cael ei sgorio fan hyn wedi dechrau'r holl ffordd yn ôl fan yna. Hannah Jones seals this victory for Wales! Gan bod taith pob chwaraeor yn dechrau mewn clwb rygbi yn rhywleth. Eich gêm chi yw'r gêm yma. Dyma ble yn i gyd trwy'r ychydig a ddewiswyd yn dod yn un. Ymlaen Cymru. Hello, Achris Akunes, Ir Stadium Principality. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Principality Stadium for another jam-packed day of rugby. And today we have the DC Thomas under-11s bowl, plate and cup finals, and the intermediate group Lawrence Miller bowl, Morgan Griffiths plate and Diwa Shield final. So plenty of rugby to come between now and the end of the day. Uh, today, keep it company to me, Owen Gwynedd. There's once again Wynn Griffith and Mike Landers to my right. Uh, morning, Mike, how are you? Very well, thanks, Owen. Yeah, looking forward to today. Um, you first day in the commentary box as well. You, you just told me. You just told me. <laughs> <laughs> just say what you see, okay? That's what we do anyway. <laughs> like a like a good referee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you can, if you don't see it, don't say it. Um, and when we've enjoyed a, a good week of rugby so far, and we're going back down to the junior section, and, and it's great to see these youngsters um, show their skills at a, at a younger age. Yes, indeed, and we've already seen evidence this week of how well coached they are. And thinking back to that first game we saw on Monday between the model school from Carmarthen and Ponteclean, and bearing in mind the conditions uh, on Monday morning, uh, the roof had been open and we had a downpour, but the handling skills were to be admired. I, I know the scoreline uh, was one-sided, but didn't reflect the, the value or the quality of the play, I don't think, Mike. I think you're right. The, the strength of Ponteclean was superb. And Model tried very hard, their defence was excellent. And unfortunately at this age, we, we forget that they're only under 11s. And they will knock on and they will drop a greasy ball. Well, today, of course, we do expect a, a step up in class. We're talking about the DC Thomas. And, uh, you know, that has a proud, pr a proud tradition in Welsh rugby. Yeah, and here's a team representing Neath. It is Neath against Pembrokeshire today. We have Oshan Morgan, Zach George, Jensen Evans, Thomas Morgan, Jackson Evans, Bobby Bramwell, captain, captain is Isaac Parfit, Jacob Williams, Harrison Jones, and Jack Thomas. Maya Richards, Johan James, Ollie Steinman, Cora Potter, Harrison Morgan, Luca Topper, Charlie Evans, and Flynn Roberts. That's the team representing Neath. And Pembrokeshire, Jamie Cook, Ewan Wright, Yori Williams, Billy Lamb, Jevan Geimer, the captain, Carter Williams, Misake Catalina, Cody Culshaw, Harry Underwood, Toby Jones, Thomas Nicholas, Ollie Harper, Leo Werner, Will Haynes, Ethan Brace, and Tyler Ayres. Team representing Pembrokeshire. And Mike, for those tuning in today, the rules for this one we can see on the field, the parents and family also yes. coming into the stand to support 
uh, the players. We can see a shortened field uh, yes. on, the, on the pitch. What are the rules for this one? The, it's between 22 and 22 and five metres in. Yeah. And this, of course, is a big pitch for, for 11 year olds. And they'll get tired. It's a big pitch for seniors. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but but yeah. It's 20 minutes each way. Yes, you've got it, yes. Ten aside? Oh. Ten. Twelve. Twelve side. Just making sure, just testing you. <laughs> but it's a great day. Look at the parents. Really proud moment for them, obviously. It is. It is. Seeing their young ones step onto this salad turf. Yeah, and just as you're a proud North Wilian, uh, oh, and I'm a proud West Wilian, and I'm delighted to see Pembrokeshire being represented uh, in two tournaments in two competitions uh, here today um, and that shows again you know the uh, the development side of uh, Welsh rugby down there in uh, in West Wales and Pembrokeshire represented the schools in the north uh, uh, in the, the traditionally the Welsh area and then down below as we used to call them beyond the Lanska yes. um, no great it's, it's good to see them and it's also nice to see the primary schools being represented we so often associate players with their secondary schools or sixth yeah. form colleges it's great to see that, that the primary schools also uh, getting mentioned here we've got the likes of Ysgol Gynrad, Castell Nedd, uh, Abbey Primary, Carreg here Primary just to name a few a couple in the Neath ranks and in Pembrokeshire Penryn, Holly Name, Roach, Saundersfoot, Tenby, Ysgol Arberth We'll give everybody an honourable bench as we go through the day. Ladies and gentlemen, the time is over for And here they come. The time has arrived for Neath Schools and Pembroke Shoe Schools to step onto the Principality turf. Neath in the traditional black kits running onto the right. Just getting those arms to go. Don't you just love it? You know, yes. the, uh, these boys, yeah. you know, they wave at their parents and their families up in the stands there. I've made it, I've arrived, I'm here, and I'm going to go for it. Yes. And no one can take it away from them. No, that's ever, right. Ever. Exactly. Yes. And, uh, on left, Pembrokeshire, in their orange and white kits. As we need to kick off, playing from right to left. With. Isaac Parfit, the captain, <coughs> looking to kick off for the men in black. Yeah. It's a bit like Eric Morecambe here, isn't it? You know, uh, we've got the numbers, but possibly not in the right order. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go, yeah, apologies from the off if we don't get the names correct straight away. But we'll get to know the teams as play goes on, as we see a thundering run by Jack Thomas down the right. Yes. Offloaded well to... There's a gap in the middle here. Yeah. Pembrokeshire. Oh. Have yeah. stolen it on the floor. An arcing run around Rush. the yeah. outside. Support. Good tackle in there by Jacob Ooh. Williams, wearing 21. That's a penalty. Taken quickly by Bobby Bramwell. Not sure if they're back. They required five or ten metres. Could be. Well worked. Good hands. Shuffled well out to number 15. That's Maya Richards having a, a first touch of the ball and having a run. Good tackling from uh, Penrith's Harry Underwood. Scrum half. Turned over. Neath come again with Ocean Morgan. Ocean Morgan here, yeah, 10. Using the big runners up front. Some stern tackling needed on Zach George. But it's been turned over by Jamie Cook. Good. Like the, yeah, I like the way they hold the ball in two hands. They've been coached well. We saw this uh, on Monday, didn't we? Yes. Yes. And he's been some good pressure on. Oh. Pembroke behind their own try line. Offside. Yeah, Neath over eager to close that space down. So, uh, an opportunity for Pembrokeshire to try and move downfield. Some willing runners. That's a great turnover ball. Out left, the numbers yes. here, good hands. One more pass, potentially. Great, towards good. the corner. Oh, what a tackle by Will Haynes. Ably, ably assisted by 
a couple of teammates. Yeah, Jacob Williams, uh, the flame head, Jamie. Uh, Jacob Williams seemed to be over in the corner there, yes, but as you yeah. say, a last-ditch tackle saved the day for the uh, West Williams. Very good, very good defence, very good. He went right through some lovely locks. Good throw in and no nonsense. Pump that one downfield, try to find some territory. Which he's got. Jacob Williams, he's off to the races. <laughs> find some grass, <laughs> some stop, space. Stop in Queen Street. <laughs> yeah, Jacob, Thomas Nicholas coming over for the cover tackle. Oh, nice step. Lovely. Lovely. Oh, and that's a big hit. Driving backwards. Again, Neath enjoying the early possession and territory. Bosch and Stole. Morgan stripped. Well, this lad has had one run already. Yes, Will Haynes. Yes. Support now. He's certainly got pace. Oh. Pembroke's a little narrow at the moment. So give it to the big guys. Yes. Yes. Put a platform down. Contested contest so far. Neath need to go low and chop the man down. Just... Toby Jones with the carry. But in fence, back on the 10 meter line. Pembrokeshire slowly growing into this one. Yes, I think you're right. They started very hesitantly. Now they're beginning to get some moves together. And Neath was runners up here 12 months ago, so they'll be looking to go one better. Yes. Yes, and in the traditional black shirts. It's great to see Pembrokeshire uh, represent Neath. Obviously, a, a traditional powerhouse as a, as a rugby club as well on a national stage. Yeah. Pembrokeshire, when we look at to, to a college stage, um, have, had a, have a tough season, but hopefully these guys will be coming through the ranks and representing uh, the region. Uh, in the years to come. You can see that I got a smile on my face here. Yes, well, at yes. one stage, Neath was Pembrokeshire. You know, you had the front row of uh, Brian Williams, oh, yes. Kevin Phillips That's and John right, yes. Davis. You had Roland yes. Phillips, you had Adrian Varney as well. Some great stories come to mind. Yes, yes. Oh, my goodness. Happy days. Now Pembrokeshire on the attack. They're up towards the halfway line. Have yet to visit the Neath half. That's a really good jackal. Yes. Difficult to see the shirt number here. Number six, Zach George. And no nonsense by Bobby Bramwell. Off we go. Five man overlap on the right. He's lost it. Missed control. He's lost it. A chance for Ethan Brace to weave a run, spin, turn, and dazzle the defence. A lovely pass, it was. beautiful pass off the left hand. Yes, he to no, straighten up it. and draw the player. Yes. And mishandled yes. by Will Haynes. You've got to admire the ambition and the endeavour on both sides. Yes, they're getting it out of the wings, aren't they? As well as they can. And just what do you want uh, this early in the morning? Some entertaining rugby. Yes. The chill in the air. Talk about early in the morning. These people must have set off very early for Pembrokeshire and needs to arrive here for nine o'clock. They're young enough. Neath, they're probably the better of the two sides so far. They've had a bit of territory, lovely passing along the back line out towards Maya Richards. Support. Richards beats the first, beats the second. Great offload <coughs> toward Evans. Just not the final pace. You no, know, the touchline arrived too soon. Yeah, Zach, uh, sorry, uh, Jackson Evans, the vice captain, just being squeezed out. But again, lovely passing up, probably the weaker left hand for the majority of these players. Yes. And Maya Richards, the weaving run, drawing the play and Ooh. Offloads well. Oh, the little step. <laughs> lovely. Yeah. Met with force. No, no. Out towards the flyer, towards the corner, has already had there. one sniff. Doesn't need a second invitation, Jacob Williams. Boneath opens the scoring for the boys in black. Oh, he's absolutely delighted with that effort, isn't he? He had to work hard for it, he's got the pace. Yes, yes, yes.
ball tucked under the left arm. Yes. Great turn of speed pace. from uh, Jacob Williams. There's no substitute for pace. I no, know it's a cliche, but it's it's a truism and a true today as it ever was. Great start by Neath and probably a deserved yeah, score as well in on the balance of playing the first yes. half. I'm yes. not sure I haven't quite had the territory to get into that Neath half. So they're in that clam, aren't they? They're in the clam. Uh, a miscued kickoff. So there'll be a chance for Pembroke. They've got a scrum in midfield. <laughs> Pembrokeshire piling the left hand side. A couple of dummy runners lying deep. Yeah, directly behind the scrum, there's a ploy. Let's see what playing deep, trying to take it up to the gain line. Stepping inside well over the halfway. A difficult man to bring down. Was there a clear release? Yes, says the referee, Bobby Bramwell, in there with the jackal. Ooh. That's a brilliant steal. Can Jevan Geimer, the captain, go all the way? Dragged short. This is the best opportunity for Pembrokeshire. The referee looking for the uh, the quick release. Penalising Neath for holding on to the ball on the ground. Yeah, Terry Dixon, the referee. Billy Lamb on the charge. And Rashid means he's careful they're not running they're laterally. Going, they're going backwards too, aren't yeah. they? They need somebody to take this upfield, give a base and start again and bring the forwards running onto the ball. And he's competing on the deck. That was Toby That's Jones. better by Pembrokeshire. Is nice, it? Nice pair of An legs. opportunity, that's a great run. Drag short, great tackle by yeah. Bramwell. Pop pass, he's oh, in. Oh, lovely Let run. Him. Brilliant. Corey Hill esque against. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. England for Wales and what a try. Lovely line. Lovely line of run. Will we get it now? Yeah, perfect line, perfect timing. Yes. Ball well presented. Yeah, Leo Werner could have gone himself, I think. Could have got in at the corner. Yeah. Yes. Yori Williams with the scream. Pop it up and crashes <laughs> over. <laughs> Pembrokeshire with the perfect reply. Yeah, Yori Williams from a skull Arberth. The Otters. Down there in uh, in Narbeth. Me five, Pembrokeshire five. What character do they have? They've controlled the early stages of this bowl final, DC Thomas bowl final. Yeah, when you look at the uh, list of players who progressed from the DC Thomas, the veritable who's who, led by uh, Will's captain now, Ken Owens, yes. Alan Wynne Jones, Adam Beard, Sam Warburton, Talupe Faletau, Dan Bigger, George North, Liam Williams, and the list goes on. Do we mention the Vinopolas? Well, yes, of course we do. <laughs> the tackle. He's under pressure, ball turned over, holding the ball on the ground. I like the way they congratulate one another, having pulled off a tackle. They play for each other. Come Pembrokeshire again. It's definitely... They're coming back, aren't they? Yeah, the tide seems to have turned. Oh, Side entry, coach killer. Discipline, accuracy. Neath have lost their way slightly. Bobby Bramwell here. Now has been noticeable, not just for the hairstyle. Good nice. handling, bringing Good. in yes, the runners. Yes. Oh, space the on the right. Jensen Evans. 
difficult to bring down powering onwards three or four orange shirts around uh, Catalina is in gets his hands on the ball good work by the Pembrokeshire number seven yeah, Misaki Catalina just come on looks a, a bit of an athlete he does he does <laughs> That's a great steal, one-handed pick up on the floor. And Neath trying to turn defence into attack. Bramwell, the scrum half. Players deep, width on the attack. A couple point. more passes. Oh, uh -huh. juggled in the air. Jacob Williams was lurking with intent on that left wing. Catalina cuts in, presents the ball. <laughs> Nearly the intercept. Oh. Everything by Pembrokeshire. Well, Seem a bit rushed in the midfield there. Can't take your eyes off this game for a second, can you? No, no. Even though it's five all, I don't know if you guys would agree. Neath seem very composed in possession. They spread the ball well, accuracy of passing, they work the overlap. Sometimes Pembrokeshire just rushing it in close quarters. Yeah, they know they've got the pace out wide and they're trying to uh, to release the uh, the players on the uh, on the wings, we already seen the fair turn of speed from one or two on their players. But if uh, Neath can get the ball into the hands of uh, Jacob Williams, then they've got a yes, a, a finisher, as they say. No, that's interesting. Now then, a space on the right hand side. <laughs> the speed spurts against each other. Good tackle by Jacob Williams. Got a handful of shirts. Pembrokeshire line well to the Good left. Play. That's great Good running. Play. Offload to Catalina. Cuts back inside, beats the first and second tackler. Oh, the pencil placement backwards. Yes. Brilliant play. They're certainly getting into this game now. Yeah, Neath trying to win the ball on the floor, win the race. They're under pressure. Oh. Yeah, a couple of Neath players offside looking for the intercept. Jump in the gun. This is a good one. And Pembrokeshire sensing this is their opportunity to take the lead for the first time in this DC Bowl final. Oh, a stumble oh, forward, over. unfortunately, by Billy Lamb. Not only are they presenting the ball well, but they're reaching back to lay the ball at the feet of the, uh, the, the incoming uh, player, the supporting runner. They're yeah, taking in a metre or so away, and they have from those clutches of the defenders. Oh, great step by Catalina, held up by three or four black shirts. Temperature going back on towards the no. shorter side. If, if it comes right. Oh, it's just been nudged forward on the ground. As they try to extend for the try. Pity. Pity, huh? It's great play by both sides. Yeah, yes, the build-up yeah. was good, wasn't it? Yes. And the Rolling subs? Three, yes. Williams, and he's by number eight, Cody Rolling subs, though, every boy, a oh, girl, the opportunity. <laughs> Neath with a defensive scrum. Bobby Bramwell feeds technically they're off the field <laughs> <laughs> that's a good kick downfield Jacob Williams on the chase who gets there first a good dive on the floor that's brilliant cover work by I believe it's number 14 Will Haynes just nudged forward in the air by Billy Lamb I thought for a second the referee missed yeah, yeah. his back was turned yeah yeah positioning ref <laughs> <laughs> Right under the nose of the assistant referee in this side. <laughs> See the team, uh, the touch judge and cameraman having a good chat as well. <laughs> Eyes on a job, boys. <laughs> the assistant referee must be a bad eye boy then. <laughs> it's it's Phil Friend. Ah, right. I think. Go, go. Oh, that's lovely passing go. along the back line, Go. working the ball into space. Williams coming on to the right 
Hand wing cuts back inside. Tacklers flying towards those ankles. Good offload. Jackson Evans. Johan James. Well, he's Driven held on backwards. Well. That's a lovely tackle. Yes, yes. Well controlled by Harry Underwood. Again, there's space out wide for Neath. No, lovely not. dummy. No, he needs to meet up with him. Great play, one-handed offload to Jensen Evans. Yes, yes. Jack Thomas brought to the ground. Time to need to roll away. Unfortunately, just see the yeah, penalty. Just in way of those oncoming support defenders. <coughs> this is good reply and a good attack by Neath from the shadows of their own posts and try line. He's in. Darting run. Can he no. flop over? No. Held Not up. quite held up, is he there? Great defence. Held up and turned. Superb. Referee goes to touch uh, assistant ref. Is that a try given? He's given a try. Oh, would you mind seeing that one again? Controversy. A short ball bringing on the runner. I thought he was over there. Osher Morgan, somewhere there, somehow. That no, no. He may have smuggled it to the ground on the far side before he was twisted over. Difficult to say from here. Can't get the right camera angle, can we? No, oh, blame the blame the director. <laughs> Oshan Morgan, try stands. Pembrokeshire five, Neath ten. As the first half is drawing to a conclusion, a minute or two remaining. Yeah, the ball, the restart didn't travel. The... That's the second time the Leaf. <laughs> Pembrokeshire will feel disappointed to be behind the scoreboard. But can they score their second just before the half time oh, whistle oh. knocked on? Neath will be hoping to capitalize. There are numbers to the right if this can be spread. Again, good deep passing by Neath, creating the space out towards Maya Rob Richards. The pass wasn't given. Comes off the boot of Bobby Bramwell. There it is now Maya Richards. Does well. Pushes off three or four tacklers. And Pembrokeshire, yeah. the Pembrokeshire, yeah. Pembrokeshire again defending narrow here. Good line. And Jacob Williams on the uh, far left, waiting, eager anticipation. It's on its way. The ball arrives to the hands of the flyer. Yes. Lovely inside yes. step. Then out shows the outside. Good cover in tackle. Yeah, great defence. Has that one found? Touch. It looks so. The last thing Pembroke now have time. want to do is concede a try. Exactly. And thanks to the referee, they won't in the first half. <laughs> the whistle's just gone. <laughs> and there we go. He's in my wallet. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> An entertaining first 20 in this DC Thomas Bowl final between Neath and Pembrokeshire. Two tries to one in favour of the boys in black. Neath 10, Pembrokeshire 5.
question now, and that must be a question again. Where do all these skills go? Because they've lost them by the time they're in. Standing up, Vincent Palatine, the winning name, going to give it an eye on Here we go for the second half, the match evenly poised, makes the noise of both teams. Leith and Pembrokeshire. So here we go, the second half for the DC Thomas Bowl final between Neath and Pembrokeshire about to start. Neath 10, Pembrokeshire 5. And we've had some standout players already when uh, it's, it's difficult to pick one or two, but there's... They can pick 24, I think, <laughs> <laughs> because they've all committed themselves in, in that first half and the, uh, the rolling subs that have come on as well. I mean, I mean the passion and uh, the commitment of the players. Been an entertaining, entertaining first half, Mike. Very, very interesting and full commitment. Full commitment. Oh, that's a big, big tackle, I believe, by Will Haynes. We timed it perfectly. Yeah, ball didn't travel the 10 metres, so they have to come back. You, you, you will notice, gentlemen, that the rolling subs are happening to allow players to play at least half the game. Yeah, that's a a good it's a better kick. Rule to have. Williams. Popping it off nicely, showing some handling skills to go with the pace. Bramwell. Ah, just slides through the hands and the legs. He's losing a Penalty. bit of territory and losing possession. Yeah, a bit of miscommunication there. So a chance here for Pembrokeshire to put the disappointment of that. Uh, Try that was allowed to Neath uh, two minutes before the end of the first half. This is Billy Lamb. Slides it away to Haynes. Driving the legs. Good drive. Good drive. Yeah. Just not accepting the tackle. That's the try line in the background. A good, good defensive set by Neath. Pembroke going route one, I think. Carter Williams in the orange scrum cap on the deck. Back to Billy Lamb. Tries to swerve on the outside. Can he's he in. get there? He's in. Billy uh, Lamb. He's over. Ten all. Two tries apiece. All to play for. Uh, from the Kreuzgorg area in the uh, St David's Peninsula, Billy Lamb. Look at this. Fooling the opposition. Good strength. Takes him over the try line. Ten all. Yeah, it's game on, isn't it? A good Dane. early score for Pembrokeshire. A couple of minutes into the second half. Exactly what the coaching team would have hoped for. Yeah, Kenny Davis would have been delighted with that effort. Oh, and lucky. Knocked on by and Bobby Bramwell. Nice hands, Pass nice roll. Haynes, Haynes, and Pembrokeshire have come out with fire in their bellies. The timing of the pass, crucial. Really good, really good attack. <coughs> and Pembrokeshire concerting some pressure on the Neath defence in the second half. Uh, Neath haven't really woken up in this second period yet. Throw to Jackson Evans at the back of that line. No Good nonsense by Neath. Good and kick. That's a thumping kick. Doesn't find touch. Maybe not trying to find no. touch. No. Tyler oh. is is. Oh. 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 Yes. Oh, breathtaking stuff. It is. It is. Yeah, this is what we like to see. Players expressing themselves on the rugby field with the ball in their hands. Here we go. Neath using their handling skills again. A lovely long pants off the left. Lovely, lovely. Creating space, cutting inside. This is Maya Richards offloading to the danger player, Williams. I'd like the look oh, of this boy, great Williams. Turnover. Cody Culshot. Number seven there for Neath, Johan James. Lovely stepper. And we mentioned already this week, haven't we, that we're making uh, copious notes here and they put a little tick against certain players. Yes. 
Yes. What was the name of the... This it goes back to the 90s now. And the Scarlet Akaneshi fullback with ginger hair who came from New Zealand. Played for sure. Matt for Cardi. Matt, Matt Cardi. Cardi. It reminds me of Matt Cardi. Yes, yes. Here come Neath. Good try, good run. Oh, good jackal by good. Ayers with the steal. Very We've good. seen Tyler Ayers on the attack. Now we see his defensive capabilities. And that could have gone... Oh, so wrong, couldn't it? But he timed his, uh, his intervention well. Confidence of these young players. Good take. Here comes James again. Look for the oh, step. Oh, lovely step. Oh, and another one. Leaves the first, and second, one. and third. Play for dead. And another oh. one. Well, we're going to make the comparison with Shane Williams now, aren't we, <laughs> with the knee shirt? <laughs> lovely running by Johan James. And then the offload there by Cora Potter. Not far off a try. Good luck. Oh. And Jess losing the race for the ball. But I'd love to see that run by Johan James again. And well, that'll be played on the replays. You can bet your bottom dollar. And here's another chance, and in space as well. Oh, he'll be dancing, he'll be licking his lips, looking at space. Little hick. hick. Yeah. Doesn't beat the first man on this occasion. Bramwell does well to show the goal. Great instinctive play by the Neath players. Right. Oh, if this goes wide, that's a great spot blitz defence. Oh, good tackle. Oh, just a knock on, I think, in there by oh, Potter. It. Away. The Pembrokeshire on the counter attack. Lamb is away again. Again, identifying oh, space well. Fantastic. Lovely passing, fantastic lovely play. Running. Oh, that's got to be the try of the Leo Werner. Yes, a beautiful He's try. He scored. And Pembrokeshire, for the first time, had a head in this fantastic enthralling contest. The standard of passing has to be admired. Have another look at this one. Yes. It was Billy Lamb again that started it all off, but what about that pass, that overhead pass, releasing the try scorer Werner? That's a super Excellent. score. Super score. He stepped three players then. <laughs> Ethan Brace it was with the pass, and uh, Brace, a well-known family down there in Tembe, have uh, represented the Seasiders with honours over the years down there at Haywood Lane. Catalina. That's a good Could have steal had on the four by Catalina. Here goes Billy. Haynes cutting inside, finding space. This game is turning around, isn't it? It is. We can sense that Pembrokeshire have got the bit between their teeth. Yes. Another score, maybe enough. That's brilliant counter ducking by Cora Potter. And it's a steal. A couple of passes out no. wide. And Neath could be looking to strike from deep. Richards, oh, good great tackle, tackle on good tackle. Maya Richards. Textbook. Breathless stuff, isn't it? Yes, yes. One knock-on in there, first by Neath. Yeah, two knock-ons, the first by Bobby Bramwell. And how often have we said, you know, uh, in senior rugby, the next score could be crucial? <laughs> yes. 15 points the to play, The players don't seem to be suffering by the speed of the pitch, do they? Gosh, it's, no. it's not taking it out of them yet. I, I imagine this is probably enhancing their performance. I can imagine a, a sticky wicket down on a couple of those public parks may be making things difficult. Yes. But we were lamenting Owen yesterday the standard of, of, of passing and, and the number of times that we heard the referees whistle. But today, I mean, the, the passing is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. It's fearless play from both teams. Good to know if uh, this one finishes in a draw, what the rules are. They share it, do they? Okay. Billy Lamb again on the charge. Just losing it forward this time. Oh, neat. Oh, nice. Finding a hole, a chink in that defence. A lovely off the Should have gone. offload tools. Richards, Richards trying to get oh, on the outside. Tackle. A lovely uh, tackle. Yes, again, I think it was Thomas Nicholas. Here we go again. All these Stainman. 
Potter allowing Bramwell to play the ball. Nice. Pendleton Lovely rushing hands. up Lovely. the defence. One here. more pass, good hands. Just a slip by Harrison Morgan is still alive for Pembroke. No. Stolen by Catalina. Haynes stepping in. Oh, he's good, doesn't he? Good he strength yes. by Haynes. Yes. Many a player might have wanted to kick that. Oh, again, a lovely timing of the pass, Andron. Perfect play by Yori Williams. Oh, penalty. Oh, <laughs> boys, Bach, take a breath. And they're off again. Thank you, ref. <laughs> <laughs> the skills aren't suffering with the speed, though, are they? The skills are still there. Uh, the focus of the players, and you can see, uh, can't see the faces of the supporters in the stand on the far side, but they're enjoying, they're loving every second of this match. Yes. yes. Yeah, using the wide players then, bringing up. Ooh. Yeah, handoff too high. If I'm correct, handoffs have to be towards the chest only. Is yes. correct? We don't like them, we, we discourage them. Yeah. <laughs> now then where's the support? Oh change of direction, that's good. That's, don't like Lovely that pass. floaty ball over the top. Yeah, it's brace again. See the the, the pen presentation. Again, one more score. Needs, needs to be wary oh. and on their tiptoes. Bramwell. Releasing the ball. Yeah, maybe. I thought Jackson errors. Evans may have got away with that one. Little little errors coming in. Yes, yeah, sealing off. Just lost the race to the ball and maybe losing his footing as well as he's trying to secure possession for Bramwell. Catalina. Yeah, Catalina. Does well to offload. Out. Pembroke oh. going backwards. They, tight, they sold it at well. Oh, Neath have got it. So Neath have won it. This you have. Passing. And the penalty in from the side. Bramwell wasting no time. But that tackle it is keenly contested, isn't it? Boys, and we had seen some key turnovers at very important times. Brilliant interventions. Look at the way Neath are lining up deep. Yes. It's Bringing players on to the ball. And again, using the big runners to start off with. Is there space to the, to the right-hand side? They switch it left. Again, using the cap vice-captain, oh, Jackson good, Evans. Good well tap. tackled. Brilliant skills on display. Neath starting to lose a bit of shape and depth. But a cutting run. And there's an opportunity to, on the right-hand side if they can straighten up. Finds Richards in the end. My Richards does well under pressure to recycle the ball. It's there. Billy Lamb does well to leave the ball alone. Well, a spin, an pass. offload. <laughs> Beautiful, unbelievable. Try. What Wonder a score. Try. Yes, Jensen wonderful. Evans. Wonderful. 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 Well, Thomas Morgan deserves credit for that. A little pass out the back door. The number 11 for Neath that ties up the scores. There's that pirouette, wasn't it, as well, before the offload. A lovely run. That was a lovely flick. Yeah, and just before that, there's a pirouette. Something off Strictly come dancing <laughs> to evade the tacklers. Oof. Yes. Many. The score by Jensen Evans. Yeah, I guess Sonny Bill Williams, wasn't it? The pass out the back door. Yes, and many a coach, many a coach would not have liked him holding the ball in one hand for so long. <laughs> Is that on ten? Right. Just about the referee lets <laughs> and allow plays to continue. <laughs> oh, that's a big decision. I mean, not on ten. It was just about hovering yes. towards yeah. the line. And now Neath sensing this is their opportunity. They're back on even terms, 15 all. Bramwell bringing on Ollie Steinman. Steinman breaks the first tackles. 
Morgan weaving his way inside towards support. Three or four meters short. One more phase of play. Great counter attack by Pembrokeshire. Have they been able to steal it? Neath under pressure. Here's the try scorer. Morgan, a meter or two. Pembroke have their hands on the ball. They have to release. He's in. Cora Potter. Potter! No. Knocked on over the line. As she stretched for the try line. Uh, she protests. <laughs> but his penalty to Neath back towards midfield. Potter giving the boys what for there. Where yes. were you? <laughs> yes, he did. Cool head by Bramwell allows the team to set up positionally. It's a bit, it's a bit oh, slow. The, the show, the goal, the stretch isn't quite there. Yes. Could. The ref has a think. It's worth Double looking at. Movement. Double movements. Oh, well, this game's got everything, hasn't it? It has. It has. Skill, controversy. Jack Thomas thought he was over. Not so, says the referee on the spot. Oh, Bramwell, lovely step in a phone box. Loses the ball on the floor. Good competition. He had the breakdown. Pembroke. We will run everything, look. Tyler Ayres. He's had a couple of darting runs already. Gets outside of Luca Topper. Thrown to the floor. Yeah, ball kept alive. The parents are going <laughs> absolutely <nuts>. wild. <laughs> Quite rightly so. Oh, what an entertaining game this is. I'm not going to call it a curtain raiser, but if this is the standard of DC Thomas rugby, I'm all for it. Very, very good to hear that. Eh? Well, in days gone by, it would have been a curtain raiser during the Schwab's Cup final, yes. the, in the yes. final itself. Oh, what a step by Harrison Morgan. Beats one, beats two, offloads. Neath throwing the kitchen sink at this Pembrokeshire defence. Could be a try on, try on. Morgan, Evans, the try line beckoning. Pembrokeshire defending for their lives. And he's got it. That's a great steal again. Oh, you can't stop and take your Ooh. eyes off this contest. It's gone five. Caught behind his own try line. Run five, win. I'm not going to survive the day if it continues like this. <laughs> right then, it's scrum five, Neath. Neath, Neath, Neath singing around the Principality. Oh, I haven't yes. heard that in years. Look at the signs they were showing at the back there. There's a couple. Less than a couple of minutes remaining, a, a play or two maybe, can we find a winner? Options left and right here for Neath, it's with Bramwell. It, 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 it could be here, it could be here. Along the back line, stepping inside towards the corner, it's a try! Has it been grounded? No. Wait for it, no. wait for it. Oh, drama, suspense! <laughs> He's not giving it. We're on tender hooks. Oh. Oh. Scrum oh. down. Scrum, neat ball. It's 15 all at the moment. The DC Thomas under 11 bowl final is being shared. And this is the bowl. It's the third tier competition of the DC Thomas. When you're looking forward now to the next match between Bridge End and Cardiff, old adversaries. Yes, one yes, to three, yes. then Isco in the final of the cup with the feed. A lovely run. Yes, yes. Harrison Jones on the angle, needs to hit the deck, does so. It's coming wide. Half it, the captain releasing the back line. Morgan under pressure, needs to find support. Pembroke the bunch. Plenty on the left. If this goes out left now, Neath could be on to a winner. Bramwell yes, sees yes, the space. Yes. He's Towards in. the corner. Jackson Evans, the vice captain. Has scored. The and crowd go wild at the Principality. And they have broken many hearts. Many parents' hearts from Pembroke being broken there. An unbelievable finish. But it still had to be scored, didn't it? And it yes. was the number four that uh, clinched it. Jackson Evans in the last minute.
And we've just been told there's a minute left on the clock. Time for Pembrokeshire to try and salvage the game. Neath 20, Pembrokeshire 15, four tries to three. And it's the try scoring team that gets a restart, isn't it, in these matches? Yes. So, yes. if Pembrokeshire can keep the ball in hand here, they've got some strike runners. He's going across Haynes the pitch, of it has been impressive. Now, then, it has to go out. And Pembrokeshire galloping upfield. They've not given up. No. Last chance saloon for the Origin White Hoops. Good wrecking there from uh, Neath. But Pembrokeshire would appear to still have possession, or do they? They have to be squeaky clean. Penalty Neath. Pembroke. Offending on the floor. Jackson Evans. Oh, no. no. Trying to find space. It's gone forward. And that could be the end of the Pembrokeshire hopes. Yeah, wrong option there. The runners, they had a numerical advantage over on the near side here. Jackson Run, Evans finds touch. touch. Yes. That's enough. That is your lot. That, that is, is your lot. And cue the celebrations. What a game. What Wonderful. a contest. Thoroughly enjoyable for us, the neutrals up here at the commentary box. A wonderful advertisement for under 11. Rugby, rugby is the winner today, yes, that's for yes, sure. Yes, yes. The winners of the DC Thomas Bowl are Neath by 20 points to 15 by Pembrokeshire. Wonderful, wonderful. We should mention that in the semi final, Pembroke beat, he looks quickly, beat Bertha in the semi final, and that Neath beat South Powys. So you can see it spreading around. Yeah. It is not the big boys all the time. A great <laughs> advertisement to a rugby. The under 11s have kicked us off with a magnificent festival of rugby. Pembrokeshire, of course, will be disappointed not to take the bowl home with them, but they have contributed mightily to this. Enjoyable, entertaining. Oh, they can hold their heads up high, can't and they? Yeah, they yes, scored some yes. uh, and I excellent like, tries. I like the referee. I didn't think he got in the way. No, he was he was good fair play to him. One decision. Yes. One decision. Yes. I'm sure Pembrokeshire will be <laughs> looking thoroughly through the tapes back in school tomorrow. <laughs> well, I do sympathise with them because I couldn't see that the ball was grounded but then again the referee was much closer to the action yes, than I was. Right. That's true. That is true. And it's a, it's a terrible statement but a draw would have been a fair result. Well, that is <laughs> true and I, I agree with that statement as well. Nobody, probably Neath or Pembrokeshire would have wanted to share the bow. No, no. Look at the smiles on the Neath faces. The jubilation on the faces of the uh, Beneath players, that uh, young man Jacob Williams, he suddenly lit up the uh, <laughs> Principality Stadium. And who's doing the work? <laughs> Craig Astley. Craig, <laughs> Craig Astley. Yes. Brilliant. <laughs> well, if you're looking for a video to advertise the best of uh, Welsh rugby, you could do much worse yes. than show not just the highlights but the whole of this match. Yeah. They do. They do. And I'm sure DC Thomas would be looking down, most impressed that his trophy is still getting good rugby played. Yeah, here, yeah, here. Yeah. And it's great to see the sport from the schools as well, who we'll travel down here to Cardiff to cheer on their fellow pupils. Yeah, Neath runners up last year, they've gone one better. But let's congratulate Penrickshire, their first ever visit uh, to the uh, Principality Stadium yes. to the final. Yes. And also, Neath have now put pressure on the Neath Rugby Club <laughs> to succeed later on this season, battling for promotion to the Premiership. Those are the uh, the coveted medals. Good start to the day, gentlemen. Very good start to the day. And the referee gets a tie for his troubles. <laughs> yeah. He's got a wardrobe full already. Oh, a fantastic work by the referee Terry Dixon. I have to thank him for his contribution in allowing the game to flow. 
course, thank you to Pembrokeshire for their commitment to the cause. Exhausted at the end of their endeavours. They leave with the runners-up medal. You know, all receiving a well-deserved runner-up medal. Catalina also. Uh, mixed emotions, and one can well understand. Yori Williams tried his level best, didn't he? A fair play to the refereeing team. I think same three who are on the pitch at the moment will be refereeing the second game as well. Will Phil Friend, the touch judge in this first game, will be in the middle for the second. Ah, Get ready for about. it now. Get ready for it now. It's just a warm up, the first one for the referees. <laughs> Many a story can be told. Here we are. Idris Power, the chairman of the Welsh Schools Junior Group from Merthyr. Yeah, congratulations to Neath Schools, Bramwell. In the middle of all the action for Neath. All contributed. As we can see, the first try scorer as well, Jacob Williams. Those flowing red locks coming through the screen. You want James there, the, uh, the sidestep extraordinaire? Yes. Maya Williams had a few darting runs. And yeah, how and close did uh, Cora Potter come yes. to sealing it for Neath? <laughs> yeah, she... yeah, she was adamant she scored. Oh, she was. She, she was adamant. Yeah. We've got enough medals there. Yeah, the winning try scorer. It's looking a little bit doubtful, isn't it? Jackson Evans. <laughs> Another presence of mind to run it out then at the end. Clever play. Mike, yeah. Mike Farley, president of the Welsh Schools Rugby Union. And here's the captain, Isaac Parfit. The fly half who's pulling the strings. <laughs> Receiving the DT Thomas Bowl. We couldn't have a cup C, it had to be a bowl. It had to be a bowl. <laughs> Don't drop it out, Isaac. Oh, or oh, keep oh. it on the base. This is going this is asking for trouble. Oh, yes. <laughs> he'll learn. Might be the first of many trophies he'll receive over his I'm sure, rugby I'm career. Sure. For the under 11s DC bowl winners. Neat nice school. Neat nice schools, the winners of the opening competition today. Yes. Great scenes on the Principality pitch. Yes. Yeah, and commiserations to Pembrokeshire schools yes. who contributed to an entertaining contest. Joining Neath for the well deserved photograph. And this will be a day to remember yes. for all the pupils on there day out to Cardiff and the Principality. Lovely. Good and to see. Very good to That's see. That's what rugby is about. Yeah, great sportsmanship being displayed. Very good. Winners and runners up. But as we've already mentioned, rugby certainly is the winner here this morning at the Cathedral of Welsh Rugby. Very good. We're hoping for, for a sit down now in before the next one. <laughs> I'll be shattered by well, six o'clock tonight. Tell you what, they've got a lot to live up to. Well, yes. they've, they've really set the bar for all the teams to follow. Uh, and the next final here Bridge. at the Principality will be Cardiff against Bridge End the in plate. the DC Thomas Plate final. <laughs> Thank you for watching the first game. Hopefully, you enjoyed as much as we did. The winners.
Neath schools. And here are the highlights.
Whether you're playing in the shadows of rugby's greatest fortress or in Wales's wild interior. Thomas Williams will score for Wales. You're part of our team. Your team. the corner they come through Snowsill and Jasmine Joyce gets there the custodian of this jersey represents everyone else who wears it from the verdant valleys of the south to the craggy mountains of the north a try scored here began way back then. Hannah Jones seals this victory for Wales. Because every player's journey starts at a rugby club somewhere. Without you, we would never get to witness this. This jersey is your jersey. This game is your game. It's where we all, through the chosen few, become one. Umline Cymru. Been an initiative Fitbed and fun run by the WIU and currently today we're working uh, here within the Dragons region with all the disability children from around our region. It's lovely to see them all today here. I was very excited for today to meet up with uh, the trainers, the coaches, uh, all, my, all my friends from normal rugby training just to have a day out. As a mother, to see Regan playing with other children today is just a godsend. Like, without the inclusion sport, Regan wouldn't have anything. As where we live, we haven't got any um, football teams, rugby teams that will take on children with additional needs. So this is very, very important. Ready? Come on, sweetheart. Go on, oh, you go. Oh, 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 that's it. Wow. You are so strong. My son is Leo, he's nine years old and he's got Down syndrome. You need groups like this that can have children who've got all different abilities but with a disability um, and they can just they can be blossoming that ability then, you know, in that sport. It is respite for myself as well because I can send him here and then he just has fun with, with meeting new friends and building his confidence. Rugby is a game for everybody and it should be a game for everybody um, and I think now the, the Union and the Dragons and, and the other regions are like are really focusing on that inclusion, on, on those inclusion strategies to make sure that everything's accessible no matter what disability you have. So we like to think that these sort of things are the, are the kickstart for those children then to move forward and enjoy rugby.
The new changing facility is fantastic. It brings a real brightness for our, for our walking values. We ask the players just to concentrate on the rugby element side of things and close work and group have worked hard to let the players do that and the changing rooms are certainly one, of the, one part of that. It's part of their toolkit. Well, this changing room, for example, um, the plasterboard was falling off the ceiling. Um, there was a lot of damp and mould in here. We've got under sixes to youth and two senior teams running, so we need all the changing rooms running all the time. So the facility's grand. We wouldn't have been able to do it without the WRU helping us. So it's been a really big help for us. It took between six and seven weeks in total, but we did have a little bit of a break in the middle because we had such hot weather. Um, putting the ventilation system in the attic was a bit of a, an arduous task, so they had to pull off for a week. But yeah, so it was really quick. They were really happy with the work and the, the contractors. It means a lot. As a club and a community, we've been on a journey for about seven, eight years. Uh, really incorporating bleed black and amber as, uh, as a club motto uh, and that does uh, transpire for, from mini and juniors up to seniors and back again. We couldn't have done it without the WRU backing because of the, the cost of the changing rooms to be done. We just wouldn't have been able to with the funds that we've got. We've been happy with the last 125 years and hopefully with the WRU backing we can get through the next 125 years plus. groups like this that can have children who've got all different abilities and they can just blossom in that ability. A lot of kids growing up like me are in the same position as me. My take on rugby because they've seen someone that might look like them or from the same area as them doing that. We can use rugby as a vehicle to empower people to see that they can actually do much more, then, then it, it, it's worth its weight in gold. Pinaich bod chi'n chwarae yng nghysgodion y gair gydarnaf y mid rygbi. Neu mas yng ngwyll cefn gwlad Cymru. Thomas Williams will score for Wales. Rhi chi'n rhan o'n tîm ni, eich tîm chi. the corner of the cup through Snowsell and Jasmine Joyce gets there. My Ceidwad y Chris Hwn yn cynrychioli pawb arall sy'n ei wisgo. Anelad yn erthu fy nhyfi. Gwn a chyrraedd, un hyrddiad arall a dyna'r fi ddigoliaeth. Ah, Josh Abrams yn ei dalu! Ah, yn ei sgori! O gymoedd godidog y de i fynyddoedd mawreddog y gogledd. Mae Cais sy'n cael ei sgorio fan hyn wedi dechrau'r holl ffordd yn ôl fan yna. Hannah Jones seals this victory for Wales! Gan bod taith pob chwaraeor yn dechrau mewn clwb rygbi yn rhywlech. Dusty hit. To put the seal on the win, to put the cream on the man slams cake. Ich Chris chi, ur Chris ama. Ich game chi, ur game ama.
Dyma blair yn i gyd trwy'r ychydig a ddewiswyd yn dod yn un. Ymlaen Cymru. Pwys yn ôl ato ni i Stadium y Principality, Ivan Henning Hardy. The welcome back to the Principality Stadium here in Cardiff, where we're uh, moving up a step here now in the DC Thomas uh, League, if you like. It's the uh, plate final that will be contested between Bridgend schools and Cardiff schools. Old adversaries, but this is the first time ever that they've met in the plate competition itself. And if this game lives up to its billing, and uh, bearing in mind what we've seen in the bowl final earlier on between Neath and Pembrokeshire, Neath taking the spoils right at the death, then we are in for a cracking match. And joining me for this one again is my co-commentator Owen Gwyneth and Mike Landers, who uh, really thoroughly enjoyed that uh, opening encounter between Neath uh, and uh, Pembrokeshire. How about this one, Mike? This one could be... Uh, slightly closer i think this could be slightly closer you've got two very strong sides uh when i say closer it was a good game wasn't it the last one couldn't have been closer than the try in the last <laughs> minute but i think this would be closer so you're calling a draw i'd lo i love draws because it means everybody gets a fair crack well that's the trophy and one of the teams or maybe both if it is a, a draw in the end let's have a look at the the team lineups the cardiff side alfie davis solly place harry morgan Lise Howard, Donny Walton, Riley O'Neill, Harry Rees. Captain is Jack Witchell, Ashton Roberts and Finlay Malpas. Through the whole squad, Lyle Lewis, Diwex Archie, Shackle, Finlay French, John T. Callaghan and Elliston Chekai. That should ring a few bells, I should think. Rod Griff Jones, Devon Edwards, Dion Williams, Jacob Dicomedes, another familiar surname, certainly Oscar Davis, Dicomedes is the captain of this Bridge End school side, Anaya Curry, Oliver Thomas, Harry Williams, Harris Jones, and Callum Brown, Lewis Watkins, Ollie Bayliss, Max Fuller, Charlie Tune, Niall Hayes, and Frankie Llewellyn. Complete the lineup for Bridge End. Trophy for the winners, the DC Thomas. Uh, tournament it used to be uh, the curtain raiser for the Schweppes uh, Cup final way way back and uh, the uh, schoolboys would have the opportunity of playing in front of what some 40,000 people in the crowd uh, those days uh, one or two less uh, uh, in uh, 2023 I would venture but both these teams uh, have uh, vocal support I think uh, uh, in the stand on the uh, the far side there it's uh, uh, a, a mild day, we should say. Perhaps it's a little bit colder, perhaps here in the commentary uh, position than it is on the far side. But a goodly number have turned out this morning to support the sides, and they deserve uh, all the support they can get. And uh, that'll encourage them to play some attractive rugby, I should think, Owen. Well, in comparison with the first game in the bowl final, it was an open, expansive, fast paced game. Uh, and we're expecting this one to be uh, go up a notch again. Maybe. If there's an area of improvement compared to the first game, which I thoroughly enjoyed, and if I have a replica of that game, I'll be more than happy. Just a bit more control, maybe, around that breakdown. Doesn't have to be 100 miles an hour, 100% of the time. So if players can just control the breakdown, slow it down, it needs to be, and then put the pace on the ball at the opportune opportunity, then, yeah, that'll be an upturn in performance but uh, the the entertainment value well we, we've been blessed already yeah we need to remind ourselves that we are talking about boys here and girls as well at under 11s and the standard of the handling in that uh, opening match was something uh, to behold and you know we looking over this road to principality we're here for what about 10 days 800 players battling it out over those 10 days for 28 titles and today as i've already mentioned it's the turn of the junior school and intermediate group contesting the bowl plates and cup competitions for the DC Thomas Trophy and the historic Dewar Shield later on today. And any name you can think of who's represented Wales, uh, Mike, on the international stage, probably cut his teeth, uh, not necessarily literally, uh, in the DC <laughs> Thomas uh, yes. competition. Well, all, all districts are invited to take part, so if they played in primary school rugby, and they were in the district, they would have taken part in the DC Thomas. 
A lot of our players never went to the top 5% of the international honours, but they played for their county sides in the old days of the counties. Clubs, a lot of club men played for rugby at under 11s. Yeah, we talk about representative rugby. That's always the step forward you want to do, isn't it? You want to represent your school or, or your local club, then you want to step over to represent your district. It's a natural progression and it's a pride of representing your local people at a, at a higher stage. Yes. And it's great to see once again when we alluded to a few of the school names. I'm looking at the Cardiff team, Ascola Wern, Melin Griffith, Birchko, Penapeel, Llandar City Primary, Christ the King, Ascola Gymraeg, Penagroes, all there representing Cardiff with Coty Primary, Peel Primary, Old Castle, Menid Config, Bro Ogur, Penavai, Bryn Kethin, to name a few on, on the bridge end as well. The Cardiff schools in their traditional uh, blue and black. And Bridgend naturally in the uh, all blue colours, playing from left to right in this uh, first half. Checking the watch. And preparing to get this game underway. 50 years of DC Thomas rugby being celebrated this year at the Principality Stadium. So Bridgend then will get to kick off. Through there, number 10, Callum Brown from Trelalis, primary Lalliston on the outskirts of Bridgend. Referee, referee Phil Friend, Phil Friend. Phil Friend blows the whistle, and we're underway with the plate final in, I went blank. <laughs> in the DC Thomas competition. So the first thrust then from uh, the Cardiff schools, a little fumble, knocked forward. It's a scrum, the opening scrum. First scrum of the game. In old money, it would be the Cardiff 22. Yep, 12 uh, players each side, of course, and playing between the two 22-meter uh, lines. Oh, break straight down the middle. Could this be the opening score for the Bridge End Schools? <laughs> That's the center. Max Fuller almost to the Cardiff try line. Great individual effort from the uh, Bridge End center. And a good early start. Yeah, always want a good early start, don't you, in a cup final? Yes. <laughs> to correct myself, a plate final, to be technically correct. Yeah, to the... Uh, it's, a, it's a final. It's, it's a final, <laughs> it is. A final, it's a final, and it'll be a scrap. <laughs> I hasten to say to the death, but <laughs> yes. it'll probably be fighting well, for their lives to win this. Yeah, these players would have been the cup... Uh, semi-finalists wouldn't they they lost out in the yes, semi-final yeah. so they find themselves no, in the plate no. competition no. You look again at that uh, determined effort from max fuller from the penavai primary so devon edwards well, perhaps not wearing number two, he's at the back of this line out. Bridge end lining very deep here. <laughs> Always yes. over their dead ball line. But here they come like a steam train. They're attacking from deep. Good hands. Oh, beautiful handling. Good outside break. Oh, oh a bit too an attempt at the uh, the offload, not quite coming off this time. A bit too pretty, wasn't it? Yeah, lovely passing again. Swift, slick, effortless. Maybe in the end there. Lewis Watzke just drifting across field a little bit too much. If he kept his channel, with the, the pass maybe it would have been easier to give. Riley O'Neill, one of two players from the St. Melons Church in Wales at school, feeding into uh, the scrum, wearing 26 on his back. Yeah, steady scrum. And nudged back there by his uh, colleague, 
Donny Walton wearing eight for the Cardiff schools. See what Cardiff can do with ball in hand for the first time. The pass a little Ooh. wild, perhaps snapped up by Bridge End, and uh, the forwards are there in numbers. It's on its way. Again, pegging the Cardiff players back towards that uh, 10 meter line. Good run. Hitch kick there. Ooh. Flying into the, yes. the ruck. Yes. He's back, yeah. Devin Edwards. But again, it does feel like this has gone up a, a level already. Yes, yes. Just touch forward. Nerves. That's a bullocking run. That's Dion Williams from the old Castle Primary. Devon Edwards. Shown them presenting the ball on Lovely. the plate for yes. the scrum yes. half. Good recycling. Oh, nice little show and go. This time, perhaps, for Regend. Denied a few minutes ago. Ooh. Ooh. Not quite able to complete the movement, but it deserved better, didn't it? Brilliant play. Charge down. Not for the first time. The show and go. I think I bought the dummy from up here. Running across the pump. Oof. And he's gone. Callum Brown, lovely, the lovely. Bridge End Schools outside half. And certainly got some strike runners behind, haven't they, at the Bridge End Schools? Yes, yes. What I like about the Bridge End performance so far is the rucking. I know it's a simple thing, but the support players have arrived so quickly uh, to, to secure the ball. It allows the continuity in play. So almost on their own try line, the Cardiff Schools look to get it away through their outside half. Well covered by the Bridgen 15, Niall Hayes, and Good sets run. off. A lovely run. A weaving, mazy run from the fullback, and again the ball is presented to the uh, scrum half, Harris Jones from Bro Ogur. Oh. Yes, no, no. Fuller just standing up the Cardiff defence. That's Good a tackle. strong tackle by, I believe, Finley Malpas, dislodging the ball in contact. Lovely, this is. Good level of skills, individual brilliance being displayed. And Cardiff at the moment clinging on in this plate final, scrambling that defence back. Nice opening up a gap, perhaps. A little looped pass. Oh, the good. ball sticking this time as a Cardiff. Up to that uh, 10 meter line. Step from the scrum half. Back to strength. Yeah, Oli Place, I think, who just knocked that one on. Spotted the gap on the fringes of the ruck. But there was a high tackle. It's been penalized by Mr. Phil Friend and just explaining to the Bridge End schools exactly what the penalty is for. I always like to see that win. The referee explaining. They're all learning the craft, aren't they? Yes. Oh, they the oh nice. This is good. Destruction at times. Yeah, the missed tackle. Oh, good rucking by Cardiff. Back on the narrow side of the direct route on that occasion from the outside half. Isolated. Short on numbers this side. So the Bridgend defence holding firm, forcing the error. Yeah, great play by both teams. Just not be able to execute that final pass, which would maybe see them cross the line for the first score. Some good skills on show. With those coloured boots worn by the Bridge End outside half, I'm reminded of Gavin Henson, of course, <laughs> who, who played for Bridge End. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> there he is. He's got a useful boot on him as well. Yes. Yeah. Well covered, well it's taken by uh, Lyle Lewis from a score pen appeal. Gone right across, unfortunately. And he's looking to release uh, the pace man on the wide outside. He can recycle it quickly here. But Regend, their defence is well organised as uh, Riley O'Neill has a quick look and see what's, what's on. There he is. Whipping the pass out. Looking for the strong men. Strong carriers. Got forward. 
There's a battle on the floor. Advantage. Bridge end. Little poke through from Callum Brown. And caught. Yeah, well covered. Yeah, not shy of the hard work. Callum Brown getting his head stuck in. A step back inside from uh, Donnie Walton, I think it was, for Cardiff. Dug out and sent on its way quickly. The pass back inside from Lyle Lewis. Yeah, good option. Drifting across field slightly, Cardiff. O'Neill into the hands of uh, Harry Rees of uh, Melling Griffith. And that's a good jackal. It was. Straight in on the ball, uh, Jacob Dicamidis. Do you, do, do you sense that there's a slowness at the moment in the game? We're waiting for a, an injection of pace from somebody who's going to set this game alive. Uh, they're cancelling each other out at the moment. Yes. Just testing each other. Yes. Now oh, there's a pre prepared move here. Looking for the strong man, Dicamidis, from the Manif Config primary. Taking it up the middle, out to Callum oh, Brown. They have nice the numbers hand. here now, Good then the pass really up. has to come, or does it? Just short. Bridge end. Here, yeah, Ollie Bayliss, five metres short. Tikamidis on the charge. Can he yeah. get oh. there? He's over the try line, but the ball was lost forward. <laughs> yeah, maybe it bounced out his grasp as he grounded it. There's the referee's decision. Play goes on. I wonder if Father Chris is in the stands today. Yeah, he'd have had a good look at that. Brown again, shoveling it out. Fuller evades the tackle. It's the first touch for the uh, flyer on nice. the, this side. That's Charlie Tune yeah, on does, song. Does well to shrug off the first tackle. And Bridge End, if they go to the left, if <laughs> they, they miss the Comedis out, or yes, he uses his hands. Well it's, played. It's Lovely six on pass. one, isn't it? Six Has on to one. come surely up from fullback. That's Neil Hayes. Cuts back inside, the support is there, the referee's arm is outstretched. Bridgend will have the penalty if there's no distinct advantage here. Nothing accruing, but great attacking play again from uh, Bridgend. Six on one. Six and one was it overlap. And Cardiff are definitely under the pump, aren't they? Yes. They're living. Yes. This is how close Dicomedes came. Oh. Austin inches from the try line. Yeah, just short, wasn't he? Maybe the ball slid just outside of his hand. Bridgend again lining up deep. Dicomedes has another go, takes it back into contact. The Cardiff player just about managed to get a hand on it. That was Donnie Walton. The, uh, the headgear, the blue headgear, that is. Just a mess there. Bridgend are desperate to score now, aren't they? Yeah, we, we spoke yesterday in, in some of the... The girls' finals of the 18s are turning pressure into points. You sense this is Bridge End's timing. Yes. This plays final. Cardiff living off scraps. You go close to the scrum here, yeah, you're in. <laughs> this time, perhaps, Brown. Oh. Can't quite get the ball away cleanly. No, no. Delayed the pass, perhaps. But Bridgen still have possession. It's a great steal by Cardiff. Can they turn this into a counter-attack? Oh, he came inside. Oh, too much rugby, maybe too close to their own try line. Bridgen come again. Yeah, Cardiff playing high-risk rugby there. This is uh, Oscar Davis from the uh, Penavai primary, wearing five for Bridgen. Again, the passing is brilliant. The ball sticking oh, to the hand. Has to come, has to come left. And the crowd are going ballistic in the stands. It's difficult to say from here where, which part of that stand is supporting which team because they're all wearing some shade of blue. <laughs> So fresh legs. Anaya Curry comes on for Bridgen, wearing six. And takes her place at uh, tight head forward. No shoving of the scrums at uh, this age. 
Callum Brown. Lovely Long ball. Pass Lovely this ball. To Good the uh, fullback, Neil Hayes. No, no. The ball is there somewhere to be claimed. Brown. Twinkle goes. Dragged down, isn't he? Great steal on Cardiff. We applaud the attacking play by Brady Anton. Beautiful passing off left and right. Skills are out of the top draw, but Cardiff have to commend their defending capabilities. They have to soak up so much pressure. <coughs> And it's still nil-nil, they'll be happy. They're still camped in yes. their own half, though. There's been uh, pressure time and time again on that uh, Cardiff try line. And uh, another penalty goes the way of Bridgend. Uh, Bridgend. Having been able to convert an opportunity, a pre-planned move here. Yeah, they go through the playbook, aren't they, Bridgend? Let's see whether they can break that stubborn Thanks defense off. of Cardiff. Oh. Oh, push off the ball. Bridgend offending unnecessarily. Yeah, clear communication from the, the referee. Now then, in go Cardiff. Into midfield. Can they work the uh, fleet footed wing three quarter? No, they can't. And Bridgend have another penalty. Yeah, knock on and a tackle off the ball. Compounding errors. Cardiff just haven't got any momentum going forward, any real injection of, of strength and pace yet to get over that gain line. And, and Bridge End are just one attack what? after another. And same start to move again. Harris Jones from Bro Ogur is the uh, Bridge End scrum half. The pass to nowhere really. Fuller did well. No, what have we got? No, what do we got? Once more, Hayes up from fullback this time. Surely, or should the... oh. <laughs> Lewis Watkin trying to bash the defender out of the way. And the touchdown goes is five meters in from touch on the uh, on the sidelines. Brown, Fuller, surely it has to come. The Orkney score must be good try. Very Charlie Tune opens the scoring then for Bridgend in this DC Thomas Plate final. It had to come. Wave after wave of attacks from the Bridgend uh, squad. Any number of penalties. And finally, they get the reward. And great to see Tune hitting the right notes. To get into the right hand corner. It was inevitable. We said it. Pressure piling on, and the Cardiff defence had to crack. They, they could be kicking themselves because they could have scored two or three in the five minutes earlier. Yeah. If they take the, if they pass at that right moment. But what do we know about it? Don't we? Oh, nothing. Nothing <laughs> at all. <laughs> But we've been really impressed with Bridge and their handling skills been in the yes. top draw. Yes. And those big fours they have as well. They have been shy and carrying and then passing. Bit of deception in their play. Not one up runners relying on their size and strength. The physical physical mismatch they've they're showing lovely handling skills, instinctive play. So it's the try scoring team that gets to restart at uh, this level. Nile Lewis, going 21, oh. the bounce, it's a wicked bounce, snapped up though by uh, Max Fuller, with the white headgear, Bridgend on the attack, once more, the ball carrier bundled over, nice. out Lovely of the pass. defensive line, Lovely Cardiff, pass. and they left the door open, it's going to be a second try, <laughs> surely for Tune, oh, oh, great, brilliant tackle from, Oli, from Alfie Davis. Super play by Alfie Davies. He just saved his team from concern, uh, conceding a second consecutive try within minutes of each other. What I really liked about that was that the pass was a yard in front, so he was able to move on to it. Bridge and are really giving us a, a lesson in attacking rugby. Defensive line out close to their own try line. Where's that going to drop? Straight into the hands of Hayes, or not, perhaps. He's recovered well, and uh, pressure in the tackle. Good chase by the defence. Ollie Place, I think. Lovely player. hands, should have gone. Fuller, just standing up the Cardiff defence for an instant there. Dick Amidis, so, this yes. is Devon Edwards. Cardiff has spotted the, the loose ball, now then who's going to claim it? <laughs> Yes. Brown, this time perhaps, 
Bayliss and Fuller combining. Penalty advantage for a high tackle. At the moment, Cardiff haven't got the answers. This bridge end wave after wave of attacks. The defence is standing well, though. It's standing well, but you feel there's tightness yeah, creeping yes. in. Yes. It's impossible, isn't it, to, to hold stern for so long. I like the way that uh, Harris Jones at Scrum Half is commanding uh, operations for Bridge End, just lifting up one finger. Guys, you should know what this means, what the ploy is, what the play is. Some good passing by Cardiff, but under pressure. Yes. Bridge End, yeah. up in numbers, organised. No advantage. So they'll go back all the way across field for the uh, nudge forward from a Bridge End player. It'll be a, a Cardiff put in. Interesting how they all followed the ball. Give or take one or two on the left wing. Dickamidis, unfortunately, just fumbling, juggling. Some attention required to uh, one of the uh, Cardiff players. I'm trying to remember if uh, Father Chris would have been wearing the number four himself for Pontypri for many years. Four or five, anyway, wasn't he? We know that. Yes. Yeah. Bridge end well worthy of their lead. Maybe a slim lead at the moment. Cardiff nil, Bridge end mm. five. But a great try. There could have been two or three more to add to this one. Chris Dickamidos played in the 60s, in the 96 and 97 DC Thomas finals. Did he really? Yes, when you think of the players that have graced these shirts over the years, and the number yes. of caps that have been accumulated by all those players. It's amazing. So Cardiff. <laughs> to, go, to go back on terms. Yeah. It's only one score game, Cardiff. They don't need to be disillusioned. No. But they need to get out of their half. Yeah, I can't remember the last time they were out their half. No, no, no. here's a break. A step again from the centre. Oli yes. Bayliss has showed up yeah. well in this uh, opening half alongside his uh, colleague, Max Fuller. The comedians again looking to release uh, Lewis Watkins on this occasion. Good steal. Play on, says referee Phil Friend. Going backwards, going backwards. No danger here. In, in goal. In the in goal area. Bridge end. And there is the whistle. Well, that first half has flown oh, by. Bridge end having yes. the lion's share of possession and opportunities as well, but just the one score. And, and, it, and Cardiff it, need be too, needn't be too despondent. But. And it is close. <laughs> As I forecast, it certainly is. <laughs> Cardiff nil, Bridge End five at the break.
So Cardiff prepare to get the second half underway through uh, Jack Witchell, the captain from Ascola Wern. His team trailing Bridgend schools by five points to nil. Bridgend starting the second half as they finished the first. Just the one try. Any number of opportunities came their way. Just couldn't cross the whitewash until Charlie Tune in the end. No penalty Crossed over in the corner. A chance here now then for Cardiff to get organised. Truck it up through the forwards first of all probably. Got some uh, useful units in that forward lineup. No, they leave it uh, for the captain, which will now then where's the support gets the pass out. Did that go forward? No, play on, says referee friend. Oh, oh the interception has he got the legs? Oh, oh good, hand, takes. good hands, good support play. Could be the second try and over in the corner, Lewis Watkins, the 11. For Bridgen, great support play. He came, he came close, didn't he, towards the end of that first half? Did Watkins, and he claims Bridgen's second try. Ten points to nil. Then, just as Cardiff were threatening, you'd have loved to score that try, win. <laughs> uh, certainly would have. But the Comedis with great presence of mind. Yes. Yes. Not to ignore his support runners, bursting a guts to try and get on his shoulder. So Cardiff have it all to do now. Gen defenders coming up in the line as uh, Cardiff come again. Through uh, Jack Witchell, the captain, desperate to lead by example. In the low card, they have conceded the early score in the second half. They are already much better for the money in the second period. Yes, yes. Oh, great Good effort hands. there to get the ball away. And release the ball here. There are numbers. Cardiff with the line at here. their yes. mercy. It's got to be. And finally, Cardiff <laughs> do cross the whitewash in a rare incursion into the bridge end uh, half. And it's a listen. Chekai who gets the score. And that will bring a big smile to the children at Esco Panagrois, of which I am a governor, and they will be delighted with that. Yes. Good handling this time. The ball sticking to the hands, and Chekai spotted the try line, and he was not going to be stopped from some 15, 20 meters. Cardiff reply immediately after that bridge end score back to a five point game. And if somebody thought Cardiff were going to roll over, I think again. <laughs> so Fuller gathers a <laughs> nice step, gets away from the first tackler. Got to admire these skills. We've seen the heroes do it time and time again. I think I'll have yes. a go at that. Brown, lovely passing. Hayes up from full back, safe as houses. Oh, oh wild pass from Dicomedes this time, but Brown recovers well. <coughs> and again, Bridgen have the numbers. Go. Watkins, scorer of the second try, dodging one um, way, then the other. Hand off. Yeah, the hand off coming in there. It's so difficult, imagine, not to yes. use that palm. Yeah, it's a natural instinct. Sometimes you think you'd like to see more of that in, in senior rugby. But yeah. uh, these youngsters, it's instinctive, isn't it? Yes. Good passing by Cardiff, slightly lateral. Cheka needs to step inside, which he does. And has retained possession, or has he? No, Bridgend turn turned it over. Wild, Edwards. Wild passing. Takes. Cardiff are definitely putting more pressure on that bridge end attack yes. in comparison with the first 20 minutes. The bridge end passing is not as assured, is it? No, Brown under pressure for the first time is a good kick. Watkin after it. Oh, it's a wicked ball. Oh! Just nudged it forward. Yes, just a nudge. Dare I say he could have been in. Yeah, it was a difficult one. It's wasn't a lo it, long way from there, mind. The turning yeah. Cardiff defence. 
Yes. All the bubbling everywhere. I think he was Finley Malpass under all sorts of pressure. Yeah. So Cardiff breathe again. Richel. Engrossing game. Certainly is. Yeah, it is close. Finally poised. Just the one score separating the teams. Witchell whips it out. Great stepping. This is Witchell Rather. Check eye. Thought about the run. Saw that his path was blocked. Oof. Yeah. Bit of a tip tackle vantage being played. Yes. The Cardiff player is still down, down injured. He's still a huge down. sigh from the stand on the far side. Look behind Rev. Cardiff player winded. Back on his feet though. Yes. Be careful. He used to be called a Sam Warburton. Huh? <laughs> Nobody ever knew about it until Sam Warburton did it. <laughs> Just a powerful Dicomedes with the tackle. Yes. Ooh, great steal. Cardiff pounds on the loose ball, though. So close to that Regen try line. Cardiff Ooh. penalised for Ten. holding on kick to the ball in the back, back chest. Kick, yeah. And kicking the ball away. Yes. You won't have that, says referee Phil Friend. <laughs> Not under my watch. <laughs> I'm sure there's a joke with friend there somewhere. <laughs> I can't find it. <laughs> the comedians. Wow. He had a good look to see where the gap was, didn't he? Yeah, it's a good kick as well, bouncing. Oh. I knew oh. he had the chasers out wide, but oh. this is Devon Edwards. Steps back inside. The support is there. One more pass might do it. Now Bridgen have the numbers, this Callum Brown, it, it has it. to go through the hands, surely. Oh, oh. He had to pass, he had to pass, white line fever. Oh, the advantage was there. Penalty. Yeah, Bridgen have butchered another chance. They've left half a dozen behind in the first half. <laughs> Straight down the, the middle man, this time. Yes. That's uh, De Dion Williams from the Old Castle Primary. He's off his feet. Dug out for Dicomedes, a change of direction. Brown this time oh, does send it one, one more pass. Uh, not needed. As uh, Oli Bayliss. No. He's not giving. Oh, He's not no. referee. Hand off in there. Oh, referee. If he'd only passed. If he'd only passed. Let's see it again. Brown decided to pass this time. Bayliss. Oh. Yeah, that was just a, a brush of a hand. Yes, a bit harsh. That a bit I harsh, thought. yeah. I disagree with the referee there. Watkins uh, steps late. out of the tackle. Laying the left of the law. Still driving forward. Could he get there? Oh, he dropped it. Dropped it. Knock on advantage. Shot. And Bridgen doing everything not to win this. Any number and of opportunities in the uh, the first half. And uh, yes. yeah. well, they butchered one or two opportunities in this second, which could have secured the game for them. Yeah, assistant referee seen something. No, sticking with the, the knock-on. At the moment, the tide is turning again yeah. towards Bridgen. And the crowd, I think, is starting to taunt the refereeing trio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they made a sterner stuff. Popped out of the tunnel on the near side, so they reset. <coughs> Referee going back to the, the far side to have a better look. Yeah, the Cardiff backs back on their dead ball line. I dare say that yes. the, the assistant yes. referee's positioning is not quite right, but um, that's for another analysis session. <laughs> a clearance kick. <laughs> Fools uh, Watkins for a split second, Aye. just about manages to get the ball away into a uh, midfield, but there could be danger here for Bridge yes, End as yes, uh, Cardiff yes. come again. Yes. 
And Cardiff looking to make Bridgen pay the heaviest of prices for their inaccuracy. Oh, yeah, play on. The turnover is good. And they will be turned over again by Cardiff. No, Penalty. illegally no. done. I am not a fan of this out of the back of the hand. That's the second <laughs> one we've seen that's gone wrong. But when they come off, you know, we saw it in the... Uh, the earlier final, didn't we, in the early yes, plate yes, final, yes. well executed. There's always yeah. nine bad ones to one good one. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Sonny Bill Williams, for that. Yeah. He's a big man. No, so when, they, when they work, they're effective. Good clearance by the Camudis. Nice pass. That's a, that's a spread wide. Spread it. Spread, oh. you're in. You are in. Has to be. And this young man deserves a try. Oh, good tackle. Can he get the great defensive effort again from Penalty. Cardiff? Penalty. High tackle. Super tackle. Is he going to give the penalty try? It's a high tackle. Took him around the shoulders. Not yeah, allowed. that's a high tackle, too high, and a penalty try has been awarded. Oh, oh. Is it the dreaded yellow card? <laughs> that's what I thought for a second. It's all flash of red, Win. Flash of red. That? What's that? What? It's a nice pass. Beautiful. There, there's lovely. That's lovely. That's good. Yeah, this is the tackle. Niall Hayes yes, dashing hey, for the corner. And then... High on the neck. I believe it was Alfie Davis. Not much of an option. He's trying to get any part of the shirt he could <coughs> to make the tackle. Too high, too dangerous. Penalty try. And the restart, too short. <coughs> Cardiff 5, Bridge N15. Bit of daylight now between both sides. Sensing. Cardiff are now slipping away. And Bridge N starting to, to show their class. So the scrum on halfway. Fed by Riley O'Neill. A decent pass again. A good chunk of ground by. Halfbacks combining Cardiff. there. Ball going to no one in particular. Cardiff going backwards now then. Put them on the front foot here. That was uh, Archie Shackle turning, making the ball available. But Gend again applying the pressure as they have done uh, each time Cardiff have possession. Numbers left here for Cardiff, one more pass. Hurried, rushed. Chekai. We have an injury. Time off. Yeah, just a bit of a knock there. Just take a second or so. But this was a good bit of play to stop the pass. Cardiff. Getting through the fringes, but the bridge end defenders come across. Oli Bayless, the try scorer, yes. or near try scorer, I should say, from earlier on. Smack on the nose, I think, is uh, yes. what's happened, and uh, a tear or two rolling down the cheeks, possibly. Yeah, always a stinger, isn't it? There's not much meat around the nose, <laughs> is there? <laughs> <laughs> There's three sides to one in favour of Bridgen and Cardiff. They've been clinging on into this, but this finally maybe starting to lose that grip on this plate. And the magic sponge. Yes. Uh, has it worked its magic. Do they still exist? Uh, you don't see them at the professional level anymore, the magic sponge. No, health and safety no, no. probably. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Accounted for the old magic sponge. <laughs> and they have insurance companies. <laughs> <laughs> and look. We, we mentioned yesterday this arena is being transformed for the, the wheelchair rugby. Some of the workers here enjoying this in the 11th plate final. Yeah, on the gantry that they're building on the far side. Yes. And that'll be a spectacle, won't it, uh, the uh, wheelchair rugby? And this turf will be dug up in the next uh, couple of days. Forward. Ooh, yes. Just tipped yes. forward. Yes. It looked Can't like it was, believe it. it was carried forward in the breeze. It's becoming a, a science, though, the forward pass, isn't it? It's no longer where the ball goes, it's where the hands it's go. It's the laws yeah. of physics, isn't it? I don't 100% agree with it, but... <coughs> no, uh, fortunately that was a certain forward back. <laughs> yeah. 
We all agreed. The bridge end. I'm sure they'd like one more score just to put this game to bed. Yes. Again, yeah. lining deep. Oliver Thomas at scrum half. Nice pass to uh, Callum Brown. Fuller. That little hit. Lovely. Kick. Lovely Hayes. one, too. Up from fullback. This is Bayless. Cutting across. Twinkle toed. There's, here we are, three or four on one. Here's that. Change of direction, Brown. The final pass to Watkins. Yes. Good try. That's the way Good to try. do it. Yes. That's his second. Lewis Watkins and a great try from one touchline to another and back again. Stretching Cardiff left and right, inside out. No answers by that blue and black defence. And the Bridgehead team with a crushing score. And the hand. Enjoy the hand. Yeah, I think it was Harry Williams with his twinkle toed run. Again, Brown in amongst it. A lovely pass fired out off the right hand side to Watkins. Yeah, Brown's a nice passer of the yes, ball, isn't he? Yes, he is. Yeah, he's impressed me today. And following the long line of. Uh, Luminaries have worn that uh, blue shirt of Bridgen schools. Now there's a little way back for Cardiff in the time that remains. Four tries to one, 20 points to five. Stranger things have happened. Although I, 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 I'm not convinced that no, we'll see him I, I, today. No, I need a mic, if I'm honest. <laughs> it seems that it's game over already. <laughs> Captain. By Good example. Job. By example. Oh, great. Good work. Taking play up yes, to yes. halfway. Good cover. Who's he covering there? Oh, it's Watkins again. What a tackle. A Lovely. beast in attack yeah. and defence. Yeah, good yeah. pace being shown by Lyle Lewis, the yes. Cardiff player, but well covered, well marshalled. That's good play by Cardiff, the, the stop and go, That's releasing good, yes. the ball. Slightly across field, baby. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, good. Well, Watkins. Wonderful time. Tracking back, covering. So Cardiff will replace the scrum half. Riley O'Neill is off. Harry Morgan is on from the Brinderi Primary, wearing 14. This is Devon Edwards from Peel Primary. Uh, walking wounded. That's number 25 uh, for Cardiff. He's Howard. The change for Cardiff, the field, Riley O'Neill, and he's replaced by Harry Morgan. He's in some difficulty, isn't he? On the ball, he'll have to wait for some attention, and no sooner has he gone off the park than uh, Riley O'Neill is back on. Yeah, just a, a knock here. Hopefully, he not wants, too bad. Uh, he wants to play on, doesn't he? <laughs> okay, I'm I not jumping back the other way. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> this is the replacement, Harry Morgan from Brinderi Primary. Cardiff looking to get back in the hunt here. Morgan. Yeah, they need three quick scores, they need to strike with immediate seam. Nice pickup around his bootstraps. Called for early by the captain, Witchell, round the corner. Can he get it all the way? Well covered again. Devon Edwards and Watkins between them make the tackle. Yeah, the doors close on this left flank of Bridge End. A couple of times Cardiff have had to dart down that Watkin wing. To defeat this bridge end line out. That's uh, Frankie Llewellyn on from the Penavai primary to Dicomedes. That's the easiest catch for him today. Brown sends it downtown. Was that nudge forward? Yes, it was. 
much to the uh, disappointment of the Cardiff player. Bridgen looking to crown this splendid performance with another score. Watkin on a hat trick turned over. Yeah, that was well read by the Cardiff player. Please, Howard, sh uh, shaking off that injury. And Cardiff will have to go end to end here, and time is against them. The clock is their enemy at the moment. Four tries to one. The captain fans flying up. Which will outside half and outside half. It was Brown with the tackle. Dug out there by John T. Callahan. And when you're four tries to one up, you always have an extra spring in your foot, don't you? Yeah, and unfortunately that kick landing in the vicinity of his own players, meaning they were all offside, not back. And bridge end. They're gonna spark the celebration with a score, I'm sure. Thomas Edwards taking the hit <coughs> plenty of numbers has to be another one fuller yes leaves it for the man on the far side now that seals it for Bridgend surely Gary Williams from the Bro Ogur school and all the substitutes are on Knowing that the plate is on its way back to uh, Bridgend uh, down the M4 as the referee blows the final whistle. Congratulations then to Bridgend schools. They uh, had the power, they had the strength, they had the guile as well to score five tries to Cardiff's one and it's finished. Cardiff five, Bridgend 25. Fantastic game. Hands against skills. And I made the wrong forecast, didn't I? I said it'd be a close one. <laughs> no, unfortunately, from a Cardiff perspective, it was slightly one-sided, wasn't it? Yes. Bridgen probably could have scored three or four more tries. It could have been a, a landslide win, but Cardiff were tenacious in defence for long periods of that first half and probably just sucked the energy out of those legs in the opening 20. And although they did come out in the second half with a bang, they got a score in the reply to that early second half score by Dicomedis. Or was it Lewis Watkins? Lewis Watkins. Oh, was penalty, yeah, maybe a penalty try. It was, a, it was an early score anyway for Bridgen and, yes. and kind of showed some character for the quality, the class of Bridgen. But just too much and too strong for the boys from the capital city. And they had any number of uh, ploys, didn't they? When uh, they were awarded penalties, Bridgen, you knew that. Uh, you know, they were going through their playbook. They had the repertoire, didn't they? The repertoire to carry it. So the presentation party is getting ready. The famous face uh, walking down the uh, the tunnel. You'll uh, recognise him immediately once he uh, makes his entry onto the field. But let's uh, congratulate the Cardiff uh, side on uh, what turned out to be uh, a hard, defeat for them. Hard day at the office. Right? Hard day at the office, certainly. But they'll come again. All adversaries, Bridgend and uh, Cardiff. But it's uh, Bridgend who have the Indian signed uh, over the. Uh, Capital City Schools played in uh, marvellous spirit. Yeah, we've spotted the, the Bridge End fan club in the stands. Yes. <laughs> At the front there. Yes. The flags waving proudly. Yeah, the numbers have increased in the uh, in the stands on the far side. In the east stand, and that's where the sun is usually. Yeah, they're returning to school as heroes, won't they? Yeah, Joe Cordina. And super featherweight world champion. He claimed uh, that title last weekend, having forfeited it uh, not so long ago because of injury. But he's proved to be the champion that he is. 
looking forward hopefully to his next contest which might well be held here in Cardiff at the Cardiff City Stadium possibly or at Cardiff Castle yeah Bridgen enjoying the time in front of the the crowd a healthy crowd here and there's and the man there himself is. on the left of course not the right <laughs> Not necessarily a super, two super featherweights. <laughs> Joe Codina, let's congratulate him, yes. Cardiff yeah. boy. Complete with belt, complete with belt. Yeah. He looks to be overawed by the occasion. Yeah, well, he's <laughs> regained that world championship for a second time, or won it for a second time, undefeated. Of course, he he broke his hand, I think, um, which would made him unavailable, unable to defend his championship. So he had to relinquish, relinquish the title, but won it back in style on a split decision, points decision, if I recall correctly. Right. So Dan Fish, Dan a member Fish, of yeah. the uh, Cardiff School setup. Idris Power, the chairman of Well Schools. Yeah, Dan Fish, uh, a cup winner with Cardiff here on Sunday. Veteran of many a Cardiff Blues campaign. Yeah, announced he'll be retiring from rugby at the end of the season <coughs> at only 32. But he retired from playing for it's Cardiff uh, rugby a couple of years ago and he was back the following week. Yeah. <laughs> Answered the call. <laughs> Dan Fish, loyal servant of uh, Cardiff rugby. Indeed. indeed. So here come the Cardiff schools then to claim their runners up medals. Jack Witchell, the captain. Outplayed a bit today. Yeah, outplayed. but he uh, showed up well, did uh, Jack yes. Witchell. Yes. Tried his level yes. best, didn't he, to uh, release the uh, the flyers? Yes. Bridgen got off to a very good start, if I remember. And an early start, too. Yeah, Cardiff couldn't really get into the game. They were camped yes. virtually on their try line for the greater part of that uh, opening period. It's been the day that uh, these youngsters will remember whatever their future holds in the game. One for the grandchildren, I think, is the phrase. And years to come, who cares who won? <laughs> Plus, <laughs> half identical medals. Twiley O'Neill there, check eye amongst the try scorers. Well, today. Fish and will present uh, the medals alongside it is power the pretend the victorious team winners all yes Lewis Watkins two try scorer supporters have just seen themselves on the uh, on the big screen yes yes Anaya Curry Came on and played her part. Some solid carriers of the ball in that set the gen lineup. Devon Edwards here wearing two on his back. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Bridgen. Just to reiterate what we said earlier, well deserved winners. Everyone who wear that medal with pride. Going back to their respective primary schools, especially this young man. Yeah, the last man to receive his medal is the uh, school's captain, Jacob Dicomedis. Can I take it now? <laughs> yeah, is it mine? I want it. I'm having it. <laughs> is it mine? I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lovely. lovely. And Dan Fish, probably ask him, how's your old man? <laughs> yeah, nearly, nearly taller than Dan Fish already. I tackled him once. <laughs> <laughs> Been fancy tackling him again. Wonderful. It's good to see the succession, isn't it? Uh, Alistair Chekai and uh, Jacob Dicomedis. So here we go then. Congratulations to the Bridgend schools. They are the winners of the uh, junior 
plate section of the DC Thomas uh, Championship. Cheers all round. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you very much for joining us here at the group of Dan Inar Deegoid and Sir Leith DC Thomas. 50 years of DC Thomas uh, rugby celebrated here this year at the Principality Stadium and worthy winners of the under lens section of the plate, the Bridgen schools. And, uh, this will be a photograph to cherish. One big hitter with another yes. 15 to yeah. 16 or so big yeah. hitters. Who would win, Joe Cordina or them? <laughs> 35. <laughs> And the cost of health, the IBF super featherweight. Oh, that's good. That's nice. Right then, I don't think Joe Cadena is going to get the belts back. <laughs> so let's have a look at the highlights. Congratulations to the Bridgend schools and join us again if you can, one o'clock. That's when Pondefried schools and Eslund schools will uh, take up the challenge for the DC Thomas Cup.
Whether you're playing in the shadows of rugby's greatest fortress or in Wales' wild interior. Thomas Williams will score for Wales. You're part of our team. Your team. the corner they come through Snowsell and Jasmine Joyce gets there the custodian of this jersey represents everyone else who wears it from the verdant valleys of the south to the craggy mountains of the north a try scored here began way back there. Hannah Jones seals this victory for Wales. Because every player's journey starts at a rugby club somewhere. Without you, we would never get to witness this. This jersey is your jersey. This game is your game. It's where we all, through the chosen few, become one. Umline Cymru. been an initiative fit bed fund run by the WIU and currently today we're working uh, here within the Dragons region with all the disability children from around our region it's lovely to see them all the day here I was very excited for today to meet up with uh, the trainers the coaches uh, all my all my friends from normal rugby training just to have a day out as a mother, to see Regan playing with other children today is just a godsend. Like, without the inclusion sport, Regan wouldn't have anything. As where we live, we haven't got any um, football teams, rugby teams that will take on children with additional needs. So this is very, very important. Ready? Come on, sweetheart. Go on, let you go. Oh, 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 that's it. Wow. You are so strong. My son is Leo, he's nine years old and he's got Down syndrome. You need groups like this that can have children who've got all different abilities but with a disability um, and they can just they can be blossoming that ability then, you know, in that sport. It is respite for myself as well because I can send him here and then he just has fun with, with meeting new friends and building his confidence. Rugby is a game for everybody and it should be a game for everybody um, and I think now the, the Union and the Dragons and, and the other regions are like are really focusing on that inclusion, on, on those inclusion strategies to make sure that everything's accessible no matter what disability you have. So we like to think that these sort of things are the, are the kickstart for those children then to move forward and enjoy rugby.
The new changing facilities are fantastic. Brings a real brightness for our, for our walking values. We ask the players just to concentrate on the rugby element side of things and close working group have worked hard to let the players do that and the changing rooms are certainly one, of the, one part of that is part of their toolkit. Well this changing room for example, um, the plasterboard was falling off the ceiling, um, there was a lot of damp and mould in here. We've got under sixes, the youth and two senior teams running so we need all the changing rooms running all the time. So the facilities grant, we wouldn't have been able to do it without the WRU helping us so it's been a really big help for us. It took between six and seven weeks in total, but we did have a little bit of a break in the middle because we had such hot weather and um, putting the ventilation system in the attic was a bit of a, an arduous task, so they had to pull off for a week. But yeah, so it was really quick, yeah, really happy with the work and the, the contractors. It means a lot. As a club and a community, we've been on a journey for about seven, eight years, uh, really incorporating Bleed Black and Amber as, uh, as a club motto, uh, and that does uh, transpire for, from million juniors up to seniors and back again. We couldn't have done it without the WRU backing because of the, the cost of the changing rooms to be done. We just wouldn't have been able to with the funds that we've got. We've been happy with the last 125 years and hopefully with the WRU backing we can get through the next 125 years plus. groups like this that can have children who've got all different abilities and they can just blossom in that ability. A lot of kids growing up like me are in the same position as me. My take on rugby because they've seen someone that might look like them or from the same area as them doing that. We can use rugby as a vehicle to empower people to see that they can actually do much more, then, then it, it, it's worth its weight in gold. Pinaich bod chi'n chwarae yng nghysgodion y gair gydarnaf y mid rygbi. Neu mas yng ngwyll cefn gwlad Cymru. Togos Williams will score for Wales. Rwy chi'n rhan o'n tîm ni, eich tîm chi. the corner of the come through Snowsell and Jasmine Joyce gets there. My Cadewad a Chris Hun and Kenrichioli Pau Barat in a whisker. O gymoedd godidog y de i fynyddoedd mawreddog y gogledd, mae cais sy'n cael ei sgorio fan hyn wedi dechrau'r holl ffordd yn ôl fan yn. Hannah Jones seals this victory for Wales! Gan bod taith pob chwaraeor yn dechrau mewn clwb rygbi yn rhywleth. Eich gêm chi yw'r gêm yma.
Dyma bler yn i gyd trwy'r ychydig a ddewiswyd yn dod yn un. Ymlaen Cymru. Hello. Chris y Cynnes nôl i'r Stadiwm Principality. Is mae... Dyna tro cyntaf i chi ymuno ni heddi ma. Wel, Chris o at ddiwrnod llawn dop o rygbi. Welcome back to the Principality Stadium. A nice shot there of the trophy with a, a stray hand from the cameraman wanting to touch a trophy that he's not allowed to keep away. That is for the DC Thomas Cup final winners, which will be between Pontypridd and Isluin. And uh, Mike, once again, joining myself and my co-commentator, Wayne Griffith, for this one. And uh, Mike Landers, it's been a brilliant finals morning well into the afternoon now we've uh, had two very good entertaining games it's lovely to see these skills that these youngsters are progressing at the age of 11 and half of me wonders what happens when they leave us at 11 because sometimes 14 15 year old skills are not the same you mentioned the dc thomas cup can i tell you that that is more expensive than many cups when the heineken cup was here 10 years ago for the, right you put them both side by side. You could tell which was tin and which was silver. That's silver. That's why the cameraman was trying to get his <laughs> paws on it. Um, but it's final in the DC. Thomas Cup will be contested between Pontypridd and Isluin schools. And Pontypridd, as you've seen, the flags waving proudly in the Principality sky. Yeah, Pontypridd schools flying high at the moment, aren't they? The Pontypridd primary won here the other day, and uh, if Pontypridd can win this one, well, Pontypridd schools are in the dual shield as well. It could be, you know, it, all Pontypridd uh, this the week, tab, couldn't yeah. it? But Islin will have their say. They were joint winners of the plate last year, and they'll want to go one better this year. Yeah, let's have a look at the Pontypridd lineup then. Tay Onyeka, Liam Jones, Ellis Roberts, Lucas Waters, Sunny Wheeler, Hudson Bowen. Emmy George, Archie Thicker, Taylor Thicker, and Reeve Tucker, the captain. Callum Wingfield, Charlie Norcup, Alfie Chad, Harry Matthews, Ruan Dyer, and Max Thomas. For those of you who joined us at the beginning of the week, some familiar names there represented Pontaclean winners. Pontaclean earlier on Monday. Isluin Schools, Gracie Coles, Mason Lloyd, the captain, Corey Dobbins, Mason Bolton, Yuan Stonelake, Harry Miles, Danny Pritchard, William Orford, Rocky Morgan, and Alfie Jones. Tyler George Dobbins, Noah Parsons, Theo Williams, Aston Cousins, George Watkins, and Casey Fox, part of the Isluin team. Referee Gareth Oldham, I believe. Yeah, referee Gareth Oldham taking part this morning in the centre for this one. We had the three, same three referees rotate through the same, uh, through the finals. The bowl winners earlier on today were Neath. Neath. I'm not writing the score down. 20 points to 15, a close one, he's scoring late in the day to win it, and Bridge End, then the plate winners. But this is the top prize in the competition, the cup. Pontypridd will be wearing the traditional of black and white, with this win in blue, yellow and white, if I'm correct in thinking. Yes, yeah, yeah. And again, some further pupils have arrived to support it. Friends, yep, and he is Max, Max Thomas, and wearing 15 for Pontypridd from the Mysa Bryn Primary. Yeah, the school's being represented by Pontypridd, Thomas Giborai, Pontyclean Dolai, Ascol Gunnad, Pontshawn Norton, Mysa Bryn, Gwain Kellin, Garth Olog. And for Isloin, we have Libanus, Sufrid, Riuser David, Eskolkum Derwen, Eskolkum Guidon, 
but in the primary Tina with primary a skull come there when I mentioned him already Pontan Freyth so fair you just mentioned there Husser David being represented by three players here and they or four players they actually won the uh, under 10s uh, tournament 12 months ago so it's a step up for some of these players back for the second time at uh, the Principality Stadium when you've got a good memory or you keep very thorough notes <laughs> he's got a good prompt <laughs> I wish I had the same prompt then it was <laughs> David from the Carfilly area Here they come. Yeah, now is the time for these players to showcase their abilities and to express themselves on the greatest stage of them all here at the Principality Stadium. Isloin in the yellow and the blue strips and Pontefried, as you'd imagine, in the traditional Ponty colours, the black and white. Tremendous moment for these young players and of course their parents and families in the stand who've it given is. a lot the last 12 months, three years. It is indeed nurturing the next generation of rugby players here in Wales. <laughs> 50th ever DC Thomas Cup final. Switch and play to start off. Doesn't go 10. Islun decides to play the ball anyway. Yeah, with Islun with early possession, but isolated on the ground. Mason Lloyd, the captain. Oh, sorry, the other way. Yes. Pontepri, according to referees, pointing the other way. Jet lag. Can he just landed back from New York? <laughs> Not sure which way is east or west. <laughs> oh, it is Pontefried ball in here. Come the boys up from the A470. Good offloading. And of course, we're expecting the standards to be cranked up a notch once again. Running across field, the drag, twisted, thrown to the ground. Penalty. Yeah, two penalties already in favour of Pontepreed, and the, there's no mistaking those shirts, is there? Yeah, no, he needs to tackle lower down the way, so I think that's the call by the referee, and the bullocking run by number three, Ellis Roberts. Ooh, oh, one. nudge forward. Yeah, the intent is there from the outsets from uh, both these teams. Yes, yes. And what I've admired so far today is the ambition of uh, all the players that have represented their respective sides, and we can expect more of the same here in this uh, final cup final itself. We expect nothing less from a, a cup final and a full tilted ding dong battle. This <laughs> Lunar there, first real possession of the ball. <laughs> A good carry, not accepting the tackle <coughs> by, I think, George Watkins. They're taking the game to Ponty, aren't they? Yeah. Using the hands, Alfie Jones in there. Trying to loop round on the run around, but that's great strength. Turned over, Turn Ponty numbers left. Players waiting, pace injected to the ball. Amazing run, swallowing up the field. Cutting back inside, Liam Jones. A punt to clean, Hooker, Reeve Tucker, the captain popping it off back again to Roberts. A frantic start, a good tackle, and possession lost as Ponty hit the deck. An exciting passage of play there, and uh, on the attack immediately, Ponte Preeth uh, looking to take advantage of the numbers, couldn't quite take it to the try line. And considering Ponte Clean were in the final on Monday, and uh, by far the stronger team, and we mentioned Tucker, Fika, uh, Wheeler, some, some recognisable names. This will be a test for them, there'll be a, another level they have to raise to, and... Isloin, 
can't do that. Oh. Incorrect penalty take. Got to take it from Mark. Yeah, we've on seen, the floor. seen that penalised a few times uh, on the floor this week. That's Mason Bolton. And solid tackle by Lucas Waters. Well, this goes left. Pontepi could be in trouble. Penalty pending. Well, the show the go twisting, putting himself in knots. You're back for the original penalty. All right, let's have a word. High tackle, yeah. And this is Corey Dobbins using the shoulder to good effect. Yeah, of course, as we've learned this morning, could be also careful with that handoff. Yes. Making sure at the same time that uh, possession is retained. Possession is key. Yeah, possession is king. Well, scrum is king according to many, but possession, I think, is uh, even more valuable. We've seen Love Ellis Roberts in his early stages as a carrier now, and there's a makeshift scrum half. No, to be coming. Great pace injected onto the ball there's, by there's your, there's your overlap. Matthews cutting back inside. No. Thika. No, it's an overlap. Tucker. Chad. Not the ball doing all the hard graft. Liam Jones. Roberts there. A willing workhorse. Pontefree's pressing a try line in sight. You need to keep the ball alive, not get too close to that touch line. Well, he had to commend the defence of Islo in there, but yes, it looked yeah. to all intents and purposes as if Pontefree were going to score. And we've seen the threat in uh, midfield, the Pontefree primary players yes. showing uh, good uh, communication skills. Just couldn't quite get that ball out to, to the winger on the far side. So it's still nil-nil. Who can't push? Uh, you're not allowed to hook <laughs> against the head, even though how tempting it may be. Pontefree, the wasting little time. They want to be ahead on the scoreboard. A cut back inside yeah, by yes. Max yeah. Thomas. Good try, good try. I think a bit of hesitancy in the tackle by one or two. Well, those cards in the stand are being shown. Max Thomas is their favourite player. The number 15 from the Mysabrin primary. Have a look at this. Alfie Chard initially. Yes. Good, yes. crisp passing. Look at that step. And again, in, out and over. Yeah, in, out, shake it all about. End of. And no stopping. Max Thomas from 10 metres out. But a lot of good work prior to that by Pontypridd. A lot of phase play, offloading, resetting. Must be getting warm down there, they've got the water bottles on. <laughs> we need the hot water bottles up here. <laughs> and Pontefree restarting ahead of the kicker. Ah, costly mistake. Islin again. Wanting it quickly, don't they? Yeah, trying to inject some energy and... Yes. Impetus into their attack. Yes. Good hands, all oh. just tipped forward by Noah Parsons. Good advantage being played here by the referee. And Pontefi looking to go wide again. A couple more passes, and Islund could be in trouble. But weaving, bobbing, running. That was Harry Matthews wearing 13. Alfie Chard at 12. Good handling into play in close quarters. Not pushing the pass unnecessarily. Great drive right. there by Thomas. Yeah, good rucking by Aston Cousins, I think, who got his hands on the ball. A little bit of a kick back 10. Pontefiz fighting for the ball on the floor. This is a Coles. captain, Mason Lloyd. Gracie thing, oh, Gracie Coles. Hey, Gracie Coles through the hole. Daughter of the Islin coach, Robert John Coles. And a great turnover. It was a good pound. No way. Just when you thought Ponty Prees were giving silly penalties away, Islin come back with one. Yeah, it'll be a seesaw contest, I'm sure. Yes, yes. For the next half an hour or more. 
Aston Cousins did well there on his own. Ah, the, maybe the push in the pass. Rocky Morgan firing it out. Putting the spin on the ball, maybe just a little softer pass was needed. But he just mentioned uh, Robert John Coles, the father of Islam's number one, Gracie Coles, coaching the Wales women's deaf team who came back from Argentina a couple of weeks ago as world champions, world deaf seven aside champions, and men also successful over there. And a special program will be on S4C this Sunday, coming at nine o'clock. A documentary following both teams out to Argentina. The men are now double world champions, retaining their title from four years ago. Over in Australia. Pontefried weaving the patterns, hitting the ball at pace. Oh, That's a great busting run. A Callum Wingfield. Oh, he's going to go all the way. What a try. Wonderful try. Unbelievable yeah. run. Yes. Worthy of those pink boots. It's a game changer, isn't it? That run. Uh, that's a strike threat yes. from deep. Yeah, the Dolai primary representative worth having a look at that one again. Yeah, Wingfield by name, winger by nature. Uh -huh. Where go. did he come from? Over from the left wing, broke the first tackle, had the pace to outstrip the Islo in defence. He was not going to be caught. Wonderful run. It's great pace, great strength, just a shrug off that tackler coming across. Not an easy skill to complete. It's Lune. And the work cut out. It's now Pont to breathe. 10. It's Lune, nil. <laughs> Pont to breathe, have another penalty. Yes. The experience yes. of these Pont to clean guys, I'm sure. Influencing matters down on the pitch. Good tackle. Going low. Dan Lydiat esque. <laughs> and again, there's space on the right hand side. Max Thomas, who's already on the score sheet. Lovely presentation. Sniffing a second. Lovely presentation of the ball then. Uh, crossing, but the uh, referee's assistant on the far side has called the attention of the referee to another offence from the Eastland players. This lad takes some stopping. He does, doesn't he? Look at him. Yeah, he's a big carrier, powerful carrier. Doing well. Reminds me of, uh, because the one on his back, of, of a Leon Brown as a, a bullocking runner. Leon Brown, ex Newport Schools. Yeah. Prone to injury at the moment. Yeah, he struggled with his injuries, hasn't he, yes. over recent yeah. years? Yeah. I remember refereeing him back when he was 16, playing for cross keys. I think it was 16 or 17, a, a pup yeah. back in those days. Oh, yes. And he was still massive. And he's still taking the ball into contact, but it's been uh, turned over by Pontepreed here. He's coming back towards... Oh, he's through the gap. Reeve Tucker, the captain. Can he support? support. Cross for the third. Yes. Lovely hand. Yes. It's yes. Inevitable. Yes. inevitable. Good try. It's a third. It's Liam Jones. That's, and that, of course, is Liam Jones, the Pontaclean hooker, who scored three on Monday. So he's adding to his tally. Yeah, he's playing a year above uh, his grade, year five uh, in the primary school, and he scored a hat trick, as you say. He's a valuable player for this uh, yes, Pontaclean yes. outfit. Look at yeah. the speed of the passing. Yeah, after the tackle, shifting the point of the attack. And uh, maybe not the. Physically the largest of players on the field, Liam Jones, but he's definitely throwing his weight about. He knows where he wants to be. And Pontepreed come again, looking ominous for Isloin. Yes, yes. It's 15 0 in favour of Ponte, and it's a, a wave. Wonderful hands. Of attacks coming away of the Isloin defence, gone. and here Should've it comes on Yeka. Oh, did you see that step? Yes. Brilliant. Just checked the uh, Eastland defence for a split second, and that gave him the chance to press on the gas and take the uh, try on the outside. Look at this, watch a step. There it is. Oof. And the power and the strength and the pace of Onyeka took him away from the Eastland defenders. And for a big man, good pace as well. 
And the worry for Islain was that he had four men outside him and he didn't need to use them. <laughs> Maybe if you look back at the tape, the, the coach would say, let the ball do the hard graft and the hard work. <laughs> yes. Bate on the Eka. Fancy the try. But already Pontepreda running away to a 20 point lead against Isloin. Ominous. Ominous. Yes. Eastland, what do they have in reserve? Well, that's to take nothing away from uh, the Isloin squad. It's the indiscipline, perhaps, that's uh, letting them down at the moment, at the yes. breakdown area yeah. in particular. Yeah. Great turnover by Pontepreda again at the turnover, uh, at the breakdown. They're up, they're up. Yeah, that's a better defence by Isloin reacting, flooding up, taking the space, but again, Pontepri so assured in Ooh. area handling, and the commentators cursed. Yeah, pass a little too hard there from Onyeka. Here we go, here we go. Look how quickly the Pontepri defence are up in the faces of the uh, the Isloin back uh, division. Yeah, Pontepri, a couple of lazy runners trying, trying to get back on side. He's slowing hard, a penalty advantage. Yeah, referee maybe blown too early. Could have let that go a phase further. But he's slowing hard, the penalty. At 20 nil, you're more as willing them to score, aren't you? Yeah, they need a score to come back yes. into the game, and there's an opportunity on the far side. On the cap. Being a pest in there, slowing the ball yes, down. Yes. Yeah, Pondepri is so hungry at that breakdown. Penalty coming. He's still showing some character. Good phase play. Building an attack. Testing. Oh, oh no. it's intercepted by the referee. Yes. <laughs> he was playing advantage. Brings him back. Andy Matthews. Yes. Now you're the prize there. And the sun coming out here at the Principality. Crowd changing more or less for every game, of course. Parents, friends, yes, family, yes. pupils coming here to support their team. And then obviously the next game comes along and they rotate. Yes. I would imagine a lot of parents have given up a shift to come to date to support their children. Yeah. Maybe the first, maybe the only time we'll see the son or daughter play here at the Principality. Yes. yes but yes. who knows? It could be the first of many occasions that they yes. step up onto this superb arena. It's looking a bit tired now, though, Owen. <laughs> well, it's had a fair old uh, back going <laughs> over, hasn't yes. it, over the last uh, few weeks? Yes. But it's holding up well. Yeah. We'll see some La Ponte scores this. That was just there. The fourth of the lot on Yeka. I don't think it's the last time we've seen this young man. No, I no. don't think so either. Physically impressive. Yes. In the opening sections of the game. We're about 15 minutes into this opening 20 minute half. Play going off. Yeah, and I think it's number four, Lucas, Lucas Waters. Yeah. May have tweaked the muscle on his leg. Walking gingerly. Yes. Getting some attention from the medical staff. Yeah, no one wants to leave the field, and especially when you're 20 points to the good. But he's played his part. He'll now have to rely on his teammates to seal the deal. Esloin. So what he would like. Good carry. Putting the team on the front foot. Oh, that's the try line. Pontepri. Well, that black and white wall. Don't want to concede. Trying to shift right. That defensive line. 
It's looking so close, a metre or so shy, yes, can they? I think get they the have. ball to ground. A brilliant tackle on Gracie Coles. Try. I'm not a pre release. I think it's a penalty try to Isloin. A good effort there from uh, Gracie Coles. Had she got the ball down, ground the ball, that would have been a popular try for sure, but it's a penalty try nonetheless, and they all count. So Isloin still in the game, still in the hunt. Yeah, we were worried, weren't we? Two points of free to rush out to a 20 point lead, a four try lead. Yes. yes. Isloin have struck back. If they score again, it'll be an interesting second half ahead of us. And the referee explaining his decision to the uh, Pondipreet players. That's a useful that restart. Very, start. very good kick. Brilliant. Hanging in the air. Yes. It's still conceding the penalty from the follow up. Pondipreet, the no nonsense. Hack downfield, well taken by Aston Cousins. And he's going to have to attack from deep. Onyeka, not going for the jackal. A lovely pass, Ooh. drawing the player and giving. The intercept was nearly there. The ball is recycled quickly. Gracie Coles spotting a, a half chance, perhaps. Ooh. Is it a turnover, Pontepreed? I've nicked it. They have nicked it too. I wondered whether he played it on the floor. Yeah, that was Amy George. Ponte. Again, a lovely kick towards the corner. Touch it down. Yes, too much on it. Callum Wingfield. And he skates on. Back all the way out in the full. Over the dead ball line. We're back for a scrum. Just inside the Ponte Preed half. A lot of talking amongst the ranks of the Isloon players. Mm. This is what I want, says uh, Corey Dobbins, the number three. Shielding's instructions and making sure that every player knows exactly what needs to be done here. Oh, here you go. Yeah, just an one of the Isloon players. A little bit of cherry aid, perhaps. <coughs> oh, that'd be nice now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you on can't see Claret at this age, can you? <laughs> on the rocks. <laughs> yeah, so a lull in play. Yes, Lynn. Yes. Maybe happy with this uh, pause in action just to calm things down, take the sting out of everything. They probably. This is the DC Thomas end of the junior group, but on the 20th of May, we've got the Sevens tournament in Llandeveri, which is always, weather permitting, a wonderful thrill. And the same teams competing? Yep, the same districts. Well, recovered by George Watkins. Yes. Number 15, out it goes from uh, Rocky oh, lovely, Morgan. Lovely. Ball 10. I enjoyed that. A good hand, Eastern, or oh, a great shove from Mason Lloyd, Lloyd, the captain. Yeah, showing the way forward to the rest of his teammates. Continuity towards that left hand side, Casey Fox. Pontepri again, stolen it. stolen it, and this is a barnstorming run. It's an, always an arm wrestle for the ball on the ground, isn't it, in that breakdown area? And good passing by Pontepri. Quickly as a oh flash, nice. yeah. reach the left flank, slightly isolated he's, over here. He's committed for Callum players, Wingfield yeah. does well to wait for support. And if this has been right again, Isloin could be in trouble. On Yeka, the big yes. man, yes, good spot. Owen, good spot. Great play here by Pontefreed. And they found some space. One more, Isloin covering over well. A high tackle. Well, that hasn't found favour in the stands. No. That decision. And he's away. And he's away. Oh, that's yeah. a good show. Didn't start too far ahead of the supporting runners either. And knocked on in the tackle, I believe, by Eastland. Referee hasn't picked it up. Play goes on. Jones 
Oh, yeah. A lovely step. The space is ahead of him. No one's going to lay a hand on Liam Jones. I wonder whether he's going to emulate uh, his performance in the uh, primary school section on Monday. Three tries to his name on that day. That's a double for Liam Jones right at the stroke of half time. Look at this. Yes. Yes, yes. Krevi, lovely stepping. He deserves 12 in his back more than two for, as a hooker. Well balanced. All the skills. All the skills, hasn't he? A boy all the with, skills a boy and the thrills. With, a boy with potential. That's it. Right then, it's half time here at the Principality in the DC Thomas Cup final. Five tries to one, Pontepri 25, Islu in five. A swift half-time team talk. Pontepri and Isloin rearing to go. With Isloin in, blue and yellow, playing from right to left. Need an early score to put some pressure back on Pontepri. They're 25 points to five up at the change of ends. We had the benefit of watching the highlights from a few moments ago and the handling for Ponte when they scored their tries was quite sublime. Yeah, even though they're under pressure now, Ponte please, great handling outside of the contact. Hi. That was Harry Matthews taking it into contact, but the first instinct Ooh, to, is to send the ball wide. Islin offside. Pontepri not going to rest in their laurels here. They want to play again. What a lovely and take. Misdirection kick, but well taken by George Watkins. He showed up well for Islin, hasn't he, the, uh, the fullback? Ponte have stolen it on the floor. As has missed. This man has shown a lot of promise. Ellis Roberts. Yeah, good angle from Ellis Roberts. And again, discipline. The mistakes. Letting Islin down. You just can't get their hands on the ball. You think Ellis Roberts with a kick there? Outside the 22. Really. Sliced it. <laughs> now, Islund have field position. 
they caused some problems in the Ponte de Pri defence when they've been down in these neck of the woods. Yeah, now the shot, the Islund backs are lying deep. And here they come thundering forward. Setting up another phase of play where Thika was in there, got his hands on the ball, the scrum half, read it well. And Thika just wants to play. So does Pace this on guy. The ball. Oh, look, good look, show. Look, turns back inside, twists, turns. Look. On Yeka. Oh, these uh, Ponty players have all wide. bases covered, don't quite they? Quite wide, quite oh, wide. Numbers. Ellis Roberts needs to look for support. Dump to the ground. Eastland scrambling across to that far side. For Ponte Pri, have him stretched. And if this again flips back the other way, Eastland could be short of numbers on their left flank. Look for a second as if the hat-trick was on for <coughs> Liam Jones. If I thought that as well. <laughs> Probing the wide open spaces. George penalised there. It's the captain oh. once again, Mason Lloyd. The captain leading by example, and he needs to do so. He's quite a handful, isn't he? He needs his teammates to well, step up to the plate as well. Offside. Now a score. This is an opportunity they can't pass up on. A metre too short, bundled backwards, and then the nine. William Orford having to cut inside. They need a try. Tracy Tracy Coles. Coles. Yes. She's there. Well, that's going to be a popular try. I had a say in two tries, isn't she, really? Oh, she's been in the thick of it, hasn't she? Yes. yes. For Isloin. Certainly played her part, came close in that first half. The penalty try awarded. Let's have a look at her effort here. Bursting through the tackle. Yeah, just rides that Harry Matthews tackle. <laughs> she could have easily gone to ground. A great balance, great strength to stay on her feet. Gracie Coles, as you mentioned, win could easily have two names, uh, two tries to her name. And she'll be chasing a hat trick with Liam Jones. That's a well placed restart. Yeah, gone 10, knocked forward. Isloin. Ponte Pri 25, it's doing 10. It's Can they cut the scoreline to 10? Hitting a purple patch here by the looks they of are. it. Yes. Yeah, five yeah. tries to two. Different ball game with it's five tries to three. Big carry by Cody Dobbins. Back for that original <clears throat> infringement. Scrum. Yeah, just a scrum. I was a show for a time that, that uh, a full penalty advantage was being played. So again, this one line up deep. They push their winger out far, don't they? They certainly have, don't they? Yes. He's on yes. the 15-metre line and a huge space between him and his nearest colleague, that outside centre. If Dan Bigger was on, he'd kick it there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Isla, though, trying to create. Yes, he's keeping him out, keeping that winger out, see, isn't he? Yeah, Watkins, it was losing possession and oh. Ponty have it and you know exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, Isla, will be disappointed with that attack. The referee blows call. his whistle Ooh. sharply. It Look. was a knock-on by Isloin. So they come back for the scrum. And Ponte Pri, they've gone off the boil slightly. Yes. In these early yes. stages of this. Well, it was an energetic first half from Ponte Pri, the schools, wasn't it? Uh, so you can't blame them for taking a breather if that's what they are doing. And uh, I don't think for one minute that's uh, the intent. Yeah, they've got to be wary yes. of having to think that they've already won this cup final. Oh, dropped it. Good take, did he? No, he nudged it on. Yes, little incidences like that. Yes, yes. yes. It can give the opposition some hope. Yeah, just Spurs, Isloon on. They have the comfort of knowing Isloon got to score four tries. So. <laughs> Still a tough task. <laughs> but they do it one at a time. Yes. Break it down to smaller bite-sized chunks. Next, yeah. next try will be important for Isloon. Yeah, he's slowly have uh, split the back division three and three on either side of the scrum. So let's see which way William Orford will go from here. Goes right, using 
Alfie Jones as the first willing runner. Again, Pontefrey winning the battle at the breakdown. Ooh, that's okay. Slightly unsure, hesitancy, the skew kick. Uh, this could this go anywhere. Will, yeah, this oh. will be a penalty. All within time of the ball landing. That's so difficult eh, for all the other players when the yes. ball is yep. skied yep. like that, not to try and chase after it. And at this age, it's even more difficult. Yeah, yeah. the pros wouldn't retreat there either. No. <laughs> A stern word of warning there in the direction of Callum Wingfield, one of the scorers in the opening half upon a breathe. Tactics, messages being passed between the players. Yeah, the captain on tippy toes. Oh, meter meter short. Pontepreed need to roll away. Be careful not playing them nine without the ball being out. Penalty again being played. Corey Dobbins driven backwards. Coles for a second who's going to go herself she's she having a bite of the cherry looking for the hat trick she's nearly there driven back Isluin needs to score oh. Alfie Jones needs to short his stretches loses the Third ball over. on that second attempt Oof. a double movement the Pontefri the first defenders a difficult nope. number of penalties going against Pontefri yeah. at the moment they're under pressure for the first time yes Again, attacking. That's short side. They're going to carry the same way, but oh, Pontefree stole have stolen oh. on the floor. Yeah, illegally done again. Amy yeah. George. <sighs> the referee going to have a word. Yes. Yeah, too many penalties now from the, uh, we the Ponte lineup. We discourage cards at this level. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, we've not seen too many cards. We saw three in one match yesterday. Step back inside by Mason, no by Harry Miles. Looking Good at counter Orford wrecking was, Roberts. Orford is wide awake there. Dobbins. It's part of pre defence. It's a very three. stern defence. <coughs> and they come out on top. Yes. And a clearance kick. Yeah, get downfield. We don't want to play here for too long. We've been captain. Our own five meter line for way too long. I think he kicked too early then, didn't he? Yeah, under pressure, the panicked a bit. Yeah. And it's out on the head. Yeah. And Pontepri take a deep breath. They've they weathered that storm, haven't yeah. they? Have yes. uh, Pontepri? Yes. yes, and you can't help thinking that they might score now. That'll be a hand blow to Islin's hopes if they've failed to score yeah. with a considerable oh, amount of possession and territory. And yes, yes. Thrown the kitchen sink at this Ponty defence. Pontypreed have been clinical in attack. The lineup is superb, isn't it? That's textbook lineup, right? And here they come, Ponty using the dummy runners. Accuracy for once in passing isn't there. They have to regroup to re-establish themselves. Isloon, good tackling, Great good clearing. Clear. Yes. Brilliant play all round. And it's Harry Matthews with the clearance, the number 13. And Isloon this time winning the race to the ball. And they go, trying to catch Pontepri asleep, and they have worked an overlap. The dummy, maybe the pass needed to go. Not forcing. The pop-up from the deck goes backwards, according to the referee. Play goes on. Time it. Right. And an advantage once again being played. Give it to Gracie. <laughs> we'll meet again. Oh, good pass. Good tackle. Yes. Yes. Lots to be admired in this match. Never mind yeah. about the uh, little indiscretions. Ooh. Yes. Yes. Yeah, attack and defence of the highest order. Potipri not having it their own way at the moment, are no, they? And it looks not... like it's going to be a landslide score yeah. after 10 minutes. And they're not happy, I don't think. 
want to feed have been shaken rattled yes, a bit yes yes Lund, not giving well. up in this cup final but ponty as they get <laughs> criticized they come yes. up with the answers yes finding space using the kick effectively putting pressure on george watkins turns beats two ponty players good running across field running out of space needs oh. some help from his teammates I like the looks of this lad someone to straighten it up you need it and then Eastern can go again. Cole does well again. She's so hard to bring down. Rides the first, the second tackle. Somebody's lost the boot. Pontepi again in there. Trying to get their hands on the ball. Now that's good play. Just behind the back. But it's open up. The intercept was nearly on. Pontepi off their feet. They still have numbers on the right. Oh. Can they go through the middle or referee? He spotted something. Huge sign in the stand and huge sign in the commentary box as well. <laughs> oh, and Pontepri going to take full advantage. It's knocked on deliberately. This would be a penalty. Ooh. Maybe the player did go for the ball with both hands pointing upwards. So often we see penalty given in those situations was in a realistic opportunity to catch the ball Side. I'd say probably a not today yeah not today not today no. you have to say the referee has a feel for for this match Ball's popped out of the tunnel I notice in the way that the Pontypris backs are in position, ready to go. And some changes made for Pontypris. You see Eli Schroppers jocking off. He's had a, an admirable performance. Yes. Here they come again. A couple of Danny Rimmers oh. in the midfield. Fires a pass out just too high. Isley looking to pounce on the ball. The oh. defenders coming up. It's been knocked on, and this is Eastland's opportunity. Yes. Turnover ball, five meters short. Can they score? This will change the reflection all the game. Bolton pass needs to go. Good counter ducking by oh. Pontepi. They've stolen it on the floor. Well, Wingfield is away. It's a long way to go, but he could make oh, it. He's on the uh, loose. Superb pace from the left winger. And who's there? On Yeka, the big. Ball carrier, bursting one, two. Great offload. Oh, touch. Another referee's assistant on the far side. Just like a tic tac man, arms and yeah. hands everywhere. Just showing uh, why he uh, he spotted that intervention to the uh, Head, supporters it? on the far side. Yeah. Head injury as well here. Yeah. Two little Tippy toe in touch and a head injury. Yeah. Bringing play to an end. But fair play to Eslin. They could have given up on this yes. final a long time ago, but still competing, contesting for absolutely everything else on the park. You see the replay. Just too much pace on that left hand side with Wingfield flying down. But that was the, the flank. Yeah, that was the foot on accidental foot on the head. Yeah, yeah that's the uh, assistant referee signalling to the ref that is a, a head injury. Yeah. Hopefully not too severe at all, and it's just a knock. Oh, come on. Come on in, this has been quite an interesting game. Not as perhaps as exciting as the two earlier ones. But not, not as frantic as the first one. No, no. But... And of course the meat was taken out of the game by Ponty going ahead so quickly. So far. Yeah, they stole a march early on, didn't they, to get those early scores. Yeah. And uh, it's been an uphill yeah. battle for Isloin to try and catch up. That Gracie calls there, parking the orders. <laughs> and some sides, when, when some sides, when they give away an interception, try mine, their heads drop. But, but this one hasn't. 
Oh, Pontefried coming across field, oh, looking for the gaps. Eastloon defence staying organised, keeping those gaps short. <sighs> Fighting for the ball, and they've won it. Ooh, got to be careful, Pontefried. Harry Miles in with the jackal. And their space in the backfield spotted. The bounce is kind for Ponty. Good tackle. Good tackle. Bodies flying in. Big hits. Oh. No, give it. Parsons give it. looking for the intercept. And Onyeka has the pace. And what a try. That, superb. That by is. Te Onyeka. He wanted that one. You're not going to stop this lad in full flight, that's no, for sure. No, no. A second try for Onyeka from a long way out. He's probably kick-started Liam Jones now. No, he made it the first tackle, he had the pace, didn't he? The Lovely sprint run. around the outside. Yes, yes. Yeah, he looks like an athlete. He's a, got a lovely running style to go with that big physique of his. And you'd be surprised to see him progressing through the ranks as he matures. Theo Williams. Yeah, you sense that Islund's comeback has been cut short. Pontepri 30, Islund 10. Yeah, Islund haven't had that cutting edge that Pontepri uh, have shown. No, only Archie Fika no, on for no. Pontepri, that uh, scrum half. Only a few minutes remaining in this BC Thomas Cup final. I think the Welsh schools is very pleased that the Welsh Rugby Union has let this game be played here today. It shows the skills on a, on a big stage. Yeah, these are the future players of the national game. It's a rock break. Offside the Ponty winger. Oh, well picked up there. Go on, go on, son. He's slowing, charging forward. Noah Parsons to Alfie Jones. Yes. He's in. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah, yeah, back to the halfway line, boys. We've got to go again. Yeah, good effort there from Islwin. They never know when they're beaten, are they? Step inside and the offload. Good step by Alfie Jones and nobody home. Yeah, linking up with Noah Parsons with the initial thrust. And that's a lovely kick, kick dropping on the 10, knocked on by Pontepreeth. Could have easily been a penalty for the turnover. It's more even contest in the second half. Yes, and what looked like a whitewash in the first half is going to be a very interesting result. There's 25 <coughs> points to five at the interval. Yes. And yeah. Isloon have won the second half contest. Uh, 10 points to five in favour of Isloon. Interesting. Good pep talk at half time, see. Good coaches. Good coaches. That's what they were. Yes. yes. What a textbook, uh, the line of the Ponty and the line of Isla. That's textbook. All the Ponty back division facing the uh, the scrum yeah. here. Yes. Good coaching. And on tippy toes, look at him go. Straight up on the ball carriers. Yes. And again, Alfie Jones finds half a gap, rides the first tackle. It's true, isn't he? Yeah. He's a good player, Alfie Jones. It's getting that ball away that's been oh, the, uh, the problem for Islund. Marching <laughs> yeah. back the Ponty players, the referee having a, a word here. Jimmy George. You're not happy. It's not good, that. Yeah, she's been very active at the breakdown, hasn't she? Yes. A real telling off, but Islund with numbers on the right hand side. A meter or two short, they could be looking to close the deficit to a 10 point game. Coles, she's on a hat trick, remember. Flashing back, there are numbers, make the ball work, and the try is there. Yes. Brilliant score by Isloin. Rocky Morgan, the number 13. But that is also the That's final it. score and the final act in this DC Thomas Cup final. And even though Rocky Morgan has crossed for the fourth for Isloin, the final score here in the Cup final is Pontepreeth 30, Isloin. 20 and the winners of the DC Thomas Cup.
Ah, Pontefries. Yeah, it's Lupin the penalty for those early indiscretions in the yes. uh, in the opening yeah. half, which allowed Ponte to uh, open uh, a commanding lead. But as for the second half, well, this one won it hands down. And that's not to say that. Uh, Pontefries, well, he did enough to, to hold uh, Isluin at bay and uh, to uh, rest on that uh, cushion that they did have at uh, half time of what was it, 20 points, I think. Yes, yeah, 20, yeah, 20 points. 20 points uh, yes. different, 25 5 yes. on the half. Yes. Finishing 30 points to 20. I'm sure Isluin will be wondering if we'd have performed that, that way in the uh, opening 10 minutes, could this result have been slightly different? Could we have. Yes. Taking that cup home with us. Yes. But I think rugby has won as far as the junior group is concerned today. Rugby's always a winner. That's, I've been to some games online when I think <laughs> perhaps not. <laughs> <laughs> I like the skills, and you've, we've been impressed with the skills that the players have shown today. We've been in, impressed with the gender um, equality that's coming through in the, in the district size. And I think that I've got to thank our referees who put up with a lot of stick, but they come here today voluntarily. And we've got to thank the Welsh School's executive for putting it on. And work for the coaches as well, I think, because you can see that uh, these youngsters are, are well drilled. They've not got into any bad habits as, as yet. Yes, yes, OK, we've seen any number of penalties, but it, it's the enthusiasm of the players, really. They yes. want to get the yes. ball in their hands, and that's good. Yes, yes. So well done all for their efforts this morning and early afternoon in the three DC Thomas finals, the bowl, the plate and the cup. And we're halfway through our match program here today. We've got three more hotly contested games to come. The WSRU Intermediate Group. Lawrence Miller Bowl, Morgan Griffiths Plate, and then the well coveted Dewar Shield final. <coughs> so, Pontypris schools are still on for that uh, hat trick of uh, successes following on from the Pontyclean primary uh, win the other day. Any number of those players just having. Come out for the second time this week in the colours of the Pontypri, the schools. And it's for the uh, senior group to try and emulate their success and make it uh, a hat trick of wins for the uh, Pontypri schools. Yes. Region. Here come. Isline is ready. Yes. Yeah, Isline just getting into position to receive their medals on the right hand side as we. Look at the pictures, and those are the winners and runners-up medals ready to be presented Lovely. to the Cup runners-up Isluin and the Cup winners Pontypridd schools. And once again, super featherweight world boxing champion Joe Cordina will be a part of the presentation team, regaining, as we mentioned earlier, his world title over the weekend and he's ensured that he will get plenty of support when he defends his title in the not too distant future here in cardiff he stood alongside joe cordina yes yeah the officials are going to step up so thank you once again through to the officials Gareth Oldham was the referee for this one but he once again was assisted by Phil Friend and Terry Dixon the three of them have refereed the three finals well and allowed play to flow and rugby to be played as it should it's doing ready to step up Joe Cordina in the tunnel taking his time come on Joe 
Well, we've seen some magnificent talent on display, and the Ponteclean massive, they'll be celebrating this double victory long into the afternoon. Yeah, he's helped out by Lynn Howells. And there's Joe Cordina with his world title. Belt. Featherweight belt. Looks heavy. Yeah. I wonder if somebody was hoping to take that home with him tonight. <laughs> if they do, Joe Cordina will be running after you. In, in a Sainsbury's bag. It's line runners up. Yes, long go to that Maurice Luna me covering the other round of the final. Well done, Isluin, for their contribution in this cup final. They battle hard to get here, and they've made their schools and district proud. And I'm sure they looking ahead already in their young rugby careers to try and get back here to the Principality sometime soon. Yeah, we'll need to hang on to these team sheets, I think, going with for a few years yet. Uh, yes. So we can uh, back reference to the day that uh, they appeared and the Principality Stadium stage. Might have been runners up today, but they could well be winners at some time in the future, and who knows, in the red shirt, perhaps. Disappointment writ large on one or two faces. Came here with ambitions, Gracie Cole, she played a, a full part yes. and enjoyed every second, every minute of it. Yes. This young man, the captain, didn't he play well? And here are the winners. Pontypridd schools. <coughs> Sean Gwerchiadau in the middle of the year. The Escolion. And every one of them played their part. In the background, the rest of their squad, I think. Yeah. Receiving a, a warm round of applause from the other squad members. Hotly contested spots in the squad for this final. Always a tough decision, isn't it, to trim down a team and yes, select your yes. final. What would it be? 15, 20 players. You can see in the background one or two players that appeared here on Monday morning from the Ponteclean primary. Seeing their colleagues uh, take a second medal. Yeah, Ellis Roberts just walking through shot earlier there. He was impressive throughout. As was this guy composed, isn't he? The Ponapri School's captain. Yeah, Reeve Tucker. As a look at the cup, his teammates poised to celebrate. Joe. Give me a hand, Joe. It's a big cup, isn't it, as well? Tim Jones, the president behind him, and one of our sponsors. That's a superb trophy. The it DC is. Thomas Cup, 50 years being celebrated this year. And he holds it aloft, proudly above his head. Lovely moment for him. To the applause of no one less than Joe Cordina. And the DC Top Thomas Cup winners at Pontypridd Schools. Many congratulations, Sean Gurchiada and Vertoli Escolion Pontypridd. Pen Campwyr, Dan Innerdeg, Cupan DC Thomas. Bidigoliais Hadiano Leon, a deserved victory. 
As the, the dancing skills come out. Yes. yes. Wonder if they were rehearsed beforehand. And Isloin joining in the party as well to have their photograph taken in the true sense of rugby. Enjoying each other's company. And it's one big team game, family of rugby in the end. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful days, activities. And a lovely shot and photograph to end the DC Thomas series this morning. Congregada to all the winners. But here's the highlights of this final.
Whether you're playing in the shadows of rugby's greatest fortress or in Wales' wild interior. Thomas Williams will score for Wales. You're part of our team. Your team. the corner they come through Snowsell and Jasmine Joyce gets there the custodian of this jersey represents everyone else who wears it from the verdant valleys of the south to the craggy mountains of the north a try scored here began way back then. Hannah Jones seals this victory for Wales. Because every player's journey starts at a rugby club somewhere. This jersey is your jersey. This game is your game. It's where we all, through the chosen few, become one. Umline Cymru. been an initiative fit bed fund run by the WIU and currently today we're working uh, here within the Dragons region with all the disability children from around our region it's lovely to see them all the day here I was very excited for today to meet up with uh, the trainers the coaches uh, all my all my friends from normal rugby training just to have a day out as a mother, to see Regan playing with other children today is just a godsend. Like, without the inclusion sport, Regan wouldn't have anything. As where we live, we haven't got any um, football teams, rugby teams that will take on children with additional needs. So this is very, very important. Ready? Come on, sweetheart. Go on, let you go. Oh, 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 that's it. Wow. You are so strong. My son is Leo, he's nine years old and he's got Down syndrome. You need groups like this that can have children who've got who have different abilities but with a disability um, and they can just they can be blossom in that ability then, you know, in that sport. It is respite for myself as well because I can send him here and then he just has fun with, with meeting new friends and building his confidence. Rugby is a game for everybody and it should be a game for everybody um, and I think now the, the Union and the Dragons and, and the other regions are like are really focusing on that inclusion on, on those inclusion strategies to make sure that everything's accessible no matter what disability you have so we like to think that these sort of things are the, are the kickstart for those children then to move forward and enjoy rugby.
new changing facilities are fantastic. Brings a real brightness for our, for our walk-in values. We ask the players just to concentrate on the rugby element side of things and close working group have worked hard to let the players do that and the changing rooms are certainly one, of the, one part of that is part of their toolkit. Well, this changing room, for example, um, the plasterboard was falling off the ceiling. Um, there was a lot of damp and mould in here. We've got under sixes to youth and two senior teams running, so we need all the changing rooms running all the time. So the facilities grant, we wouldn't have been able to do it without the WRU helping us. So it's been a really big help for us. It took between six and seven weeks in total, but we did have a little bit of a break in the middle because we had such hot weather. Um, putting the ventilation system in the attic was a bit of a, an arduous task, so they had to pull off for a week. But yeah, so it was really quick, yeah, really happy with the work and the, the contractors. It means a lot. As a club and a community, we've been on a journey for about seven, eight years. Uh, really incorporating bleed black and amber as, uh, as a club motto uh, and that does uh, transpire for, from mini and juniors up to seniors and back again. We couldn't have done it without the WRU backing because of the, the cost of the changing rooms to be done. We just wouldn't have been able to with the funds that we've got. We've been happy with the last 125 years and hopefully with the WRU backing we can get through the next 125 years plus. groups like this that can have children who have all different abilities and they can just blossom in that ability. A lot of kids growing up like me are in the same position as me. My take on rugby because they've seen someone that might look like them or from the same area as them doing that. rugby as a vehicle to empower people to see that they can actually do much more, then, then it, it, it's worth its weight in gold. Pinaich bod chi'n chwarae yng nghysgodion y gair gydarnaf y mid rygbi. Neu mas yng well cefn gwlad Cymru. Togos Williams will score for Wales. Rydych chi'n rhan o'n tîm ni, eich tîm chi. the corner they come through snow so and jasmine joyce gets there my cage was a crease hun and can really pow bar at in a whisker O gymoedd godidog y de i fynyddoedd mawreddog y gogledd, mae cais sy'n cael ei sgorio fan hyn wedi dechrau'r holl ffordd yn ôl fan yn. Hannah Jones seals this victory for Wales! Gan bod taith pob chwaraeor yn dechrau mewn clwb rygbi yn rhywleth. Eich game chi yw'r game yma.
Dyma bler yn i gyd trwy'r ychydig a ddewiswyd yn dod yn un. Ymlaen Cymru. Things are hotting up here at the Principality Stadium here in Cardiff. That's the dual shield indicative of the fact that we are stepping up a league now to the intermediate uh, schools groups, and that is the shield that is being contested uh, here at the Cathedral of Welsh Rugby. This competition, though, is the bowl competition for the quarter-finalists uh, uh, between Pembrokeshire uh, schools and Isluin schools, and Johnny Mean commentary is... Owen Gwynedd, we've seen the DC Thomas contested and it was hotly contested uh, in the end. Pontypri, the schools uh, coming out on top and they feature again later on uh, today in the final of the Dewar Shield and they could make it a hat-trick of wins over the, the last few days. No less than some 800 players featuring here over 10 days and we've seen some uh, classic tries scored by the youngsters. It's the intermediate under-15s group that we now look uh, ahead uh, to contest the, this bowl final. on the wrong mic. <laughs> it's in the final in the previous competition with Pont of Freed, um, and they'll be hoping to go a, a step further as it was, even maybe in a, in a lower tier competition in this older age grade of under 15, but they'll be hoping to take some silverware or cut glassware home with them. Yeah, Pembrokeshire schools are represented, Milford Haven, Bro Proselli, Haverford West, uh, Bro Gwine, Greenhill in Temby. So here is the Pembrokeshire lineup. Then behind the scrum, Leo Power starts at fullback, Ivan Wynne Jones and Kian Ladd on the wings, Delmia Lane, Liam Hughes at centre. Pulling the strings is Maddock Evans outside Alfie Luga. So up front, we have Cruz Finley, Harry Evans and Ollie Tucker in the front row. Harvey Thomas and Lewis Dennison are the uh, lock forwards with Lewis Rossiter, Jaden Allen and Corey Royley completing the lineup on the bench. Eager to come on, Reese Phelps, Braden Jones, Kyo Jones, Owen Grieve, Callum White, Alfie Thomas, Dylan Maguire, Diane James, and Alfie Pryor, along with Ryan Burton. So East plays West, and this is the team representing Isloin from the East. At fullback is Riley Gummer. On either side of him, Liam White and Evan Davis, Charlie Gregory and Teguin Marnie. At centre, Felix Priest Jones and Kai Kinsey, the halfbacks. The piano shifters, Josh Davis, Tian Hall and Keegan Connick, Colby Evans and Kerrick Smith. Uh, packing down behind them will be Tom Murphy, Connor McIlwee and Jake Shepard locking out the scrum. The replacements, Connor Boyland and Aaron Morgan, Jack Owen, Dan Roberts, Luca Manning, Harrison Miles, Morgan, Marozzelli, Ollie Hiscott. Full squad from Isloin, completed by uh, Isaac Blacker and Logan Garrett. Overcast here in Cardiff today. A little chilly in the uh, commentary position, but uh, I can imagine that uh, this game again will be hotly contested as every match to date has been uh, over the last uh, few days. Pembrokeshire against Islo in the, in the bowl uh, final, leading up, of course, to the main event here this afternoon, which will be the Dewar Shield final itself. So teams in the tunnel, and here they come. Yep. Pembrokeshire, I think, will be on the right in the dark blue shirts with Islo in the lighter blue, playing from left to right, looking though they'll be kicking off. Yeah, similar colours to both teams. Paul Tidaldi takes charge of this one. And he's aided by Nigel Gray and uh, Geraint Morgan. Geraint Morgan on the far side, if I uh, recognize the face. 
So Pembrokeshire will kick off from right to left in this uh, first half. And preparing to take the kick is Maddock Evans. From Ascol Bro Prasali in Kremich. Good chasing. Super start for Pembrokeshire. Just what they wanted. Alfie Luger at the base, uh, shoveling it out to Oli Tucker. Taking the ball up almost to the 22. Full size pitch here for this match, and like the previous DC Thomas matches where the pitch was curtailed. Yes, and no holds barred. Contest this one, be full throttle. On the charge there was uh, Liam Hughes at centre. Looking towards the blind side, that Luger, the number eight, Corey Riley had called for it early. Make number eight. Luger looking for his outside half, arms out from Maddock Evans to receive the ball. Good play by Harvey Thomas, the second row, as a pivot, but Pembrokeshire getting isolated early on. Yeah, we've seen the referees clamp down on uh, any uh, split second, holding on to the ball a little too long for the uh, referees uh, liking on that occasion, Tadaldi and Isloin. Clear the ball downfield midway between the 10 metre line and the 22 of Pembrokeshire. A good tackle on the uh, Pembrokeshire centre. Hands immediately on the ball. That was uh, Kerrig Smith. The lock forward of Isloin. <laughs> Pembrokeshire getting a hand to it, but it was nudged forward, albeit uh, snapped up by uh, a Pembrokeshire colleague. Yeah, opportunity for Isloin deep now then inside the Pembrokeshire half. So get some territory to settle in. Superstar by Pembrokeshire from that kickoff. Winning the ball in the air. And now Isloin, first scrum. I always love first scrums. It's, an, it's an, indicator, an indicator, an it indicator, is. isn't it? And I remember when I was coached as a referee, you're trying to have a even keel on the game throughout however it does put doubt in your mind if somebody has a superiority from early on it sets the trend for the rest of the game it's there at the feet of uh, felix priest jones the nudge through from kai kinsey half knocked down on yeah. the charge that's uh, tom murphy for islin the number six plenty of men to lefty a couple of long passes could find islin in space good work there by teguin marnie at centre, could be a man over here. The fullback is up. That's Riley Gummer all the way to the corner. Yeah, it's the bounce pass in midfield. They had numbers out wide, expecting a couple of longer passes just to get the ball out into that wide channel on the left. But it's the, the bounce pass which always unlocks a defence. You just follow the ball, you miss where the runners are. But in the end, lovely ball, a swerve of the hips, and nothing Leo Power could do to stop Riley Gummer. So, solid start then from the Isloin schools. A conversion from the far touchline. The wind is in our faces here in the commentary box, so if there is a breeze down on the field, well, it'll be a swirling breeze. He'll be aiming for the far post. Got the distance. Not the accuracy, perhaps, but he's got the measure of it. First blood, then, goes to uh, Isloin, leading Pembrokeshire. Five points to nil, east against west. Where are you going? Yeah, they just need one. Oh, no, two, actually. So Pembrokeshire gave good chase to the uh, kickoff. Well, and see whether they can replicate that as Maddock Evans restarts, sends it high, just drops it beyond the 10 metre line. Again, a lovely restart twice now by Pembrokeshire. Yeah, the chasing from Harvey Thomas. Yeah, the kick, good kick is always only as good as a good chase. <laughs> have a session <laughs> I started talking to my cup of coffee 
Did it answer back? <laughs> Two handed catch by Tom Murphy. It's a speculative kick downfield, well covered by uh, Leo Power. And then away he goes over halfway. Well. The a. Milford Haven representative keeps the ball in play. Uh, will it uh, go over the try line? Carried over by Super the kick. Isloin fullback. Great play by Leo Power. Unable to stop his opposite number, Gummer, getting over in the left hand corner. It was Kai Kinsey who was covering there, the uh, outside half of uh, Isloin. They have a power here. Doing ever so well, gets outside his man. And this is great skill under pressure. The chip, how often do you see those little kicks get hooked into touch and perfectly measured and weighted? Scrum five, Pembroke. So he she was at scrum time early on here. Yeah. I think that loud blast of the whistle nearly perforated the eardrum of Alfie Luger. A tight head for Isloin. That's uh, Keegan Kunick. Cruz Findlay is the loose head for Pembrokeshire. And getting underneath his man. Good work by Pembrokeshire initially, but better work though by uh, Isloin and their scrum half, uh, Felix Jones. High yeah. tackle being penalised here. Sloppy play, play on the base, at the base, by Corey Riley, the Pembrokeshire number eight. The ball was there on the plates. He uh, was thinking of the run and the charge forward before picking the ball up. So they're still clear their lines. In this match so far, not as frantic as the, uh, the DC Thomas uh, finals we saw earlier. More measured approach. Amongst the intermediate group. It was 100 miles an hour, wasn't it? Offloading. Sunny Bills from 1 to 12. Chian Hall from the Risker High School. Finding Colby Evans from the Newbridge School. Luger nearly intercepting. Clear run of the sticks. If that pass would have stuck. A calf charge down, picked up by Riley. And sending it out to his uh, centre. That's uh, Liam Hughes with the blue uh, helmet. Harvey Thomas showed good pace to claim the kickoff and the restart. All whipped out on the narrow side. Yeah, needed to go wide there. Luger again. Chance. Nice little fame there. Into the 22. Good handoff. Good fend. Therefore, Luger under pressure. The Pembrokeshire will be sensing that was a missed opportunity, an overlap. Refused twice, essentially. Yeah, keep the tackles down. Here's the order of the day from the referee Tidaldi. A good clearance kick. A lengthy clearance kick downfield. Kenneth Morgan, the assistant referee, marching. Pembrokeshire back into their own half, midway between halfway and the 10 metre line. Valued treasurer of Tregaron RFC commanding the far touch line. Yes, Lou. Smoke the ball back. Oh, that's Keegan Koenig. Didn't go far. He has to be stopped before he gets into full flight. Yeah, good steal by Pembrokeshire on the floor. You can hear the cheers of the support. And apart from that, Eastland try. It has been it. Even Stevens, the opening 10 minutes. Yeah, Harvey Thomas it was, I think, it got his hands on the ball. In he goes, number four. Yeah, straight in there. Maybe slightly fortunate to get that decision. Didn't have both hands on, on the ball, had one grip. Difficult under pressure to, to scoop a ball up with one hand. I'd say he's, he's fortunate to get that penalty on, on second look. Well, looked a bit crooked. 
from here. But the Pembrokeshire lads have got away with it. Luger sends it out to Thomas again. Well, this could be a steal. Fair jackal, it's popped out, play goes on. Yeah, again, not supporting the body weight, going to the elbows. Mm, I'd like to have a look at that again. I'm not sure if the referee's got that one right. And Pembroke's are realising the value of uh, taking a three points on offer when they're within sight of the opposition posts. And this is the... Well, I think it's maybe the run of the, of the hooker that was deceptive and... Maybe exaggerated that fact that it was uh, straight or not. And it's here. I'd say, I'd say he was on his feet. I'd, I'd be disappointed if I was an Islam player. We did see in the 18s girls finals yesterday the value of going for the three points turned down on several occasions by the Llandovery girls. Maddox Evans to, to open Pembrokeshire's account. Straight and true, in you know, Pembrokeshire. And on to the score sheet. Pembrokeshire three is slowing five. Well struck by the Bro Proselli representative, wearing ten for the county. Start again, well contested and well met. Yeah. Harvey Thomas very busy in the opening minutes. He's like committing numbers into that breakdown, not getting reward for their efforts. Corey Riley setting it up outside his own 22. Luger sends it high, sends it long, well covered by the try scorer for Islin. That's Riley Gummer from the Blackwood School. Clear indication from Liam Hughes that he uh, was going for the jackal. Hands in the air just to show the referee that he knew what he was about. Gummer steps back inside, can't evade the clutches of Hughes though. Kick behind the defence, so power can't oh, well gather. Measured. Lucky for him, his colleague Lewis Rossiter was back there. No advantage, so they'll come back. Yeah, Felix Priest-Jones running down a dark alley. Not many options available to him, so he decides to prod that ball on the deck along the floor. And it's a well-measured kick again. Doing exactly what he wants, is staying in field, forcing Pembrokeshire to play the ball and inevitably forcing a mistake. Yeah, the AR on this nearer side having a word with the, the loose head prop. Cruz Findlay keeping his bind up. Referee coming across as well to have a closer look himself. Early engagement. And driving in, I think, is the uh, decision from the referee. It's slowed, wasting no time whatsoever. A man over again. Oh, Liam White. Oh, he could see the try line. And took his eye off the ball, perhaps. Yeah, and that's the trial. That's gone begging. It should have been a hundred percenter. The pass wasn't too bad. That one handed offload, a long pass. It was in the basket. Should have caught it. Uh, should have caught it and should have scored. Maybe there was a cover tackle coming across. Difficult to say from the replay. I think the referee's asking for stability between the front six. And happy with Cruz Findlay. Yeah, needing a solid platform here. Just about managing to hold things up as Corey Riley looks to evade the clutches of uh, Felix Jones. Oh, it's a charge down. It's Lloyd. That's Jake Shepard, the uh, pink helmet, the screaming for the ball out wide, didn't go far, knocked forward, 
by the Islo in the second row forward, Colby Evans. He's disappointed with himself, should have held on to that one, is what he's saying to himself, probably. Forget all that. Let's get down to the scrum and start again. Yeah, Pembrokeshire under pressure at the base of the ruck. They could have taken a bit more time to get some more bodies around the ball to shield uh, the kick, Alfie Luger, who's turning into traffic. Felix Jones having a quick look about him and see where his uh, colleagues are just in case that Pembrokeshire failed to clear. Evans straight into the waiting arms of Riley Gummer. He's got support on his right shoulder from Evan Davis, a change of direction. Good work by uh, Jaden Allen, the open side flank forward for Pembrokeshire. Is lining Islund. up. The kick for the, uh, the far touchline. Was the mark called for? Yeah, referee says no play goes on. Islund seems to have turned the ball over. They've committed numbers. Yes, they have stolen it as well. And the referee's arm is outstretched, playing advantage for Islund here. The lock forward in the thick of things. That's Kerrig Smith. Jones just about manages to get the ball back as far as his outside half. The mark was clear there, but the advantage not accruing to Islund. So the referee, Mr. Tidaldi, calls them back for the original offence. Yes, some effective kicking going on by Islund at the moment. Using the crossfield kick, the chips through, variety in their play. And very wisely kicks for the corner, where the uh, Islund forwards might well have the edge. Looking for the hooker, Tian Hall. That's usually what happens in these circumstances. The ball won, probably in the middle of the line-out. And they'll all gather around the beehive. That's the first element done well by Colby Evans from Peel. Ball's recycled and it's driven over, popped over quickly. And it was the hooker, not shielding the ball on that occasion, but pouncing over the try line. That's Tian Hall over for Islund's second try in this opening half. And at the moment, Pembrokeshire finding it hard to keep up with Islund. And he's just quick-minded players here, identifying space. A lovely wrap around Jake Shepard, busting a hole. And as his ball pops out, Pembrokeshire unable to align their defence on the try line. Well taken. Well, we know that uh, Kai Kinsey has the distance from virtually the same spot as he attempted his first attempt. And just pushing that one a little wide of the far upright. And he'll probably get another chance. He'd prefer one nearer the posts. So he's slewing, taking uh, control over this match. Ten points to three, two scores, two tries rather, against the penalty. Yeah, Pembroke should take their time to get back to the halfway line. Some shell shock, maybe, without Isluna come flying out of the box. Two early scores. 18 minutes gone in this 30 minute half. And Pembrokeshire would like to get the next score. Obviously, only seven points the difference. Could easily be even Stevens if they can string a good attack together. Evans kicks long this time. Islund can't gather initially. Harvey Thomas was giving chase. That's a good work by the left winger, Liam White. Taking uh, the ball over the 22-metre uh, line. Power chasing back. Good nudge downfield again. Well directed. No angle for power to work with. Good distance on the kick. Gummer leaves it for his outside half, Kinsey. All on from that touch in the air. Should be Pembrokeshire ball. Luger to his number eight, Corey Riley. A little bit laboured at the moment, isn't it? Liam Hughes 
driven back in the to tackle. Be careful. We've already seen uh, this week that if you pick the player up, you're risking a penalty. Riley again taking it into contact. Evans, well collared. Hands on the floor. That's better by Pembrokeshire, just keeping the ball going through a few phases. Trying to work that fringe defence of Isloin. And drawing the penalty as a result. Safely into touch. And this line out will form on the Isloin 10 metre line. Whether Pemnich can string a, a passage of play together. Fair distance between the two centres, Delmi Lane and uh, Liam Hughes. It could be that Liam Power is up in the line, and uh, the uh, right wing, Ivan Wynne Jones, is also covering the outside half position. A good formation to this driving wall, but somehow. Isloon have slid it through to hold the man up. And that's going to be turnover ball. Yeah, they've done enough. Some big units in that uh, Isloon forward eight. Not least of them is Kerrig Smith at uh, lock forward and Colby Evans. Yeah, just identifying the man who was in trouble. They surround him, hold him up. The good old choke tackle, Jake Shepard in there. I hope a wayward kick doesn't find its way to the Dewa Shield there. <laughs> only been restored only uh, at the beginning of the year. That's right, it's the Lawrence Miller Bowl that uh, these two teams are competing for. And in full flight, it's Riley Gummer with one try to his name already. Find support from uh, scrum half Jones. Tian Hall, the second try scorer, unlucky there. But the intent was there, the ambition was there. Yeah, Execution good, not so good. Good enterprise by Islo. I think the offload, some confusion of who was going to go for the ball, but Islo showing that they've got some attacking threats in their back line and cutting back inside. Riley Gummer is really catching the attention. Good support play by Felix Priest Jones, the scrum half, and that's where it just got a little bit muddled. And a good strip by Harvey Thomas just to bring everything to a stop. And Pembrokeshire are probably creaking slightly. Yeah, scrum not their strongest element, but they've held their own on this occasion. Fullback up in the line. That was power. Yeah, not a bad nudge of field, I suppose. Gets his side into the half of the opponents but he would have liked a, another 5 10 50 meters on it when you do surrender possession you do want to gain a good chunk of territory as a result but unfortunately they've handed the ball back to Esloin who'll be happy enough I imagine to throw this ball about from the halfway line they've been playing with some freedom the shackles are off Monica Evans the Pembrokeshire outside half receiving uh, attention to uh, what appears to be an injury to the right knee. Goodly number of supporters in the East Stand. And show their support for both these district schools. A strong coaching lineup. Uh, in the Pembrokeshire ranks, Solid Walters, Tom Reddith, Finley Jones, Mike Jones, Reese Fawcett, a familiar name, a prop with uh, the Scarlets, and Ryan Fool and uh, Gethin Vobe, who's the uh, P master at the Skullbro Preselli. <laughs> so let's have a look at the uh, Isloin tries once again. Talk us through them, Owen. Yeah, great start for, for Isloin. And it's all come through Riley Gummer. <laughs> Great pace, a lovely step and a fend, pushing fellow fullback Leo Power out of the way. And the forward wanting to get on the scoreboard. The ball pops up and quick thinking by Tian Hall. 
And Islin in control of the contest. By 10 points to three. Get the drive on, ball well shielded. Felix Jones has his hands on the ball. Been stopped once, says referee Tidaldi, and out it goes, albeit a little bit wild to uh, Charlie Gregory, the centre. Guy Kinsey, the steady things for Isloin. Straight down the throat of uh, Leo Power. He'll have a run. Yeah, two and one. Piece to first. But the second man is there to cover. It. Needs, needs him out. Yeah, needs help here. Yeah, it does well. Ivan Wynne Jones to anchor himself onto Leo Power. Corey Riley sets off. Ah, that'll be a tough one to watch. Just a nudge on the floor. Yeah, I think it's a little cold, perhaps. Yeah, you don't feel like Pembrokeshire have, have really got our gear one yet. They're not really hitting the straps. The last man down the sling, shotting himself in. Or which you're not supposed to these days, if indeed, I indeed. remember. Yeah. And the referee once again comes round to the near side where Cruz Finlay is having to uh, think hard about he, how he's going to cope again with uh, Keegan Kunick. Yeah, plenty of weight in that Islo in front row. Pembroke are holding their own. Oh, the no-look pass by Tegwin Mahoney. Yeah, Kai Kinsey, the outside half, uh, looping around his centres, and there he is back in defence, hoisting the high one. Where is that going to drop? In touch, yes. So they'll come all the way back. Yeah, strange to see Sloon with a mistake and an error. First real... Misplacement by Isluin. That's a good scrum by Pembrokeshire. If something, I think they won that scrum. Maybe not getting a nudge on in terms of driving Isluin back, but they, they looked the rock solid. So it all starts here with Harry Evans, the Pembrokeshire hooker. Looking to find the tall timber in the lineout. Almost stolen, may well have been stolen by Isluin. It has. It is Carrick Smith again. With the, uh, That's a good tackle on Tien Hall. Stole it under the nose of Lewis Dennison, but Pembrokeshire get the advantage. That's great technique, going low, taking Tien Hall's feet from him. And it opens up a chance for the Jacklers to get on the ball and they lick their lips and steal. So this is the turnover. Good tackle, Lewis, number three, Ollie Tucker. Yeah, Lewis Dennison it was. From the uh, Harry Tudor School. That's a better line out, finding Lewis Dennison in the middle. Is the room around the narrow side? That's the question that's being uh, asked by the tight head prop, Ollie Tucker. He's slowly to get out of there. The penalty. Goes the way of the West Wallians, wasting no time whatsoever. That's uh, Alfie Luger. Yeah, Luger's a live wire. He's been the uh, only spark, really, of note by Pembrokeshire. And he's slowly not back the 10 metres. Yeah, I think Luger spotted that they weren't back 10 and almost bought the penalty in the extra 10 metres. And you can't touch the player if you are within 10. That's uh, a penalty now then. Let's see what uh, Pembrokeshire can do from this line out. Yeah. Not too far out, but yet again, not too close either to the... No. Uh, or not close enough, perhaps. No. To give it a swing. 6 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, you'd, you'd have liked uh, another couple of metres onto that one, closer to the five-metre line. The angle wasn't great for the right-footed kicker. So right at the back for Pembrokeshire, that's Oli Tucker. Dennison. Yeah, a bit of deception in the movement in the line. 
Hooker. Harry Evans holds on for grim death. That's Pemrishia. Going the hands looking for their opening try. Could welcome here. There are players out wide. Might not be needed though as Liam Hughes looks for the try line. Almost there. Rossiter. In close contact and number six. Inches short. Played. Got a free play. They can swing this out right. Plenty of players in midfield. Chaka has another go. But it was a delay pass in midfield that opened the door. It seemed almost it was so delayed that it was going to be carried into contact, but it was snuck out just at the final second. A pick and go from Tucker, not uh, trusting the Pembroke scrum perhaps to do the business. Oh, Rossiter hurled back in the tackle. Pembroke retained possession through uh, Harvey Thomas, the lock forward. Yeah, Ball on the plate. Pembroke carrying as individuals there. Well played by Alfie Luger. Saw that maybe Jaden Allen overrun the ball. Allen holding on for grim death, driving forward. Pushing the Islin players back towards their own try line. Riley. Evans, the outside half. Dennison has a go. Ball lost forward. But still, it's going to be advantage, Pembrokeshire. Yeah, Pembrokeshire needs to put a bit more weight to this. At the moment, they're running off nine and they're too close to the fringes and allowing Islund to defend it narrow and win that contact. If they start running off ten, there are larger gaps between the defenders. A word with the Islund captain, Kerry Smith, the lock forward. How to be on their best behaviour here. So what will be the decision? The flying wedge. Yeah, Tucker again. Driving hard and low. Has to be careful here not to hold on to the ball for too long. Rossiter. Can he get there? Not this time. Jaden Allen. Still no way through. Ball spits out. Rossiter checks. Goes again. Luger stolen. That's Chian Hall, the hooker. He has a mismatch in that defence. Jake Shepard crushing tackle on Alfie Luger. Yeah, that was the time to score. Certainly, right on the stroke of half time, and Felix Jones knew exactly that the whistle was about to be blown and hacks it into touch. So an entertaining first half, but two tries sees Isloin go in at the break with a lead of ten points to three over Pembrokeshire in this Lawrence Miller Bowl final.
to go for the second half. That's just about to say to make some noise for both teams. Pembrokeshire and it's Lowy. It's a one-score game as we get the uh, second half underway in this Lawrence Miller Bowl final between Pembroke Schools and Islin. Two tries to nil, ten points to three. That's the advantage on the East Wellians. Islin, the better side in the first half. I still think there's more in the tank for Pembrokeshire. They haven't really come alive in that opening half an hour. A physical Islin pack. Winning superiority in the collision, but not holding their feet once again. For the first time, the big boys have fallen to the floor. Well, Harvey Thomas is down on one knee, injured, and the uh, little respite here for some attention. He took a heavy knock against his uh, opposite number. Dylan Maguire is on, uh, I think, probably for Maddock Evans, who took a bang in that uh, first half. The Pembrokeshire. Number 10. Yeah, that was a, a winding tackle, wasn't it? Being dumped to the floor. And Pembrokeshire, you know, they two tries to nil down, but it's only seven points at one converted try. And the score could see them back on even terms on the scoreboard. And this is the hit. Great technique. Number five, Kerrick Smith, rock hard. And ably assisted with, was it Colby Evans beside him? In beside you, there's Di Williams there, who's joined us again today. Good evening, Di. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. <laughs> it's a long day, but uh, some good rugby to still to come. It certainly is. Pacing yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, Javi Thomas still down. It was a bone-crushing tackle, wasn't it? Very well, it banged his head. Yeah. It's a tough one to take, but all credit is slowing. If you look at the, at the pack, already some impressive performances by the second rows, Colby Evans and Kerrick Smith. Jake Shepard has been strong in at eight. Alfie Luger is probably the spark that Pembrokeshire are, are turning to. He's a live wire around that base. Just needs a bit more in terms of a platform off his pack to spread out to Leo Power at fullback, who's a a good runner with the ball, but the rest of the guys haven't probably had enough space and time to attack. Yeah, Braden Jones is on, wearing 17 for Pembrokeshire. Callum White wearing number 20. Yeah, hopefully, uh, it's learning to get back into this game. I was talking to Sean Pugh before the, uh, the game started. He, they were quietly confident. Uh, they've got a lot of experience here. They're boys who were here last year. And uh, they've been with us right now for two years. A lot of experience there. And yeah, that's where it hurts, says Harvey Thomas. I'll try and run it off. Yeah, probably a, a bruiser. Yeah, it's not a confident walk, is it, back to the ranks? No. no. Just stretching himself. Nevertheless, it's a penalty to Pembrokeshire. They'll be aiming to put this into the Isloon half. That's a good third of a ball. Yeah, finds touch immediately below us here in the west stand. A completely new front row for Pembrokeshire. Rhys Phelps wears 16 from the Hub of West High School. So slowly into the line out, David Dennison. Into the hands of Luger, long spun out pass into midfield. And this is the fresh legs of uh, Callum White, and that's exactly what Pembrokeshire needed. Oh, he's like a bull, wasn't he? It's only one way he was going through that brick wall. Well picked up there by the prop forward. Uh, Oli Tucker showed up well in the first half. Pembrokeshire on song here through Liam Hughes up to the Islo in 22. Looking for quick recycled ball, but it's tied up there for a, an instant. The charge again from Tucker. 
This is definitely the best passage of play by the West Wallians. Penalty being played back to the big carry, Callum White, but yes, pass was forward. Callum White from the Kyrellian School in uh, Whitland, the Welsh language comprehensive. Callum White seems like a, a difficult player to stop. He's got that stocky build, which is difficult to, difficult to get your arms around. A low centre of gravity. Now Pembroke's have the confidence to go for the corner. And let's see, can they emulate uh, Isloon's effort in the first half? And here's the charge. One, two, three, four, five. Attempted tackles before one sticks. Now that's the front football you need to create for your scrum half. Yeah. Oh, a misfire in the line out. Closing the gap. Free kick anyway. So a let off there for Isloin. Pembroke's are not quite getting their act together. Here's another chance. Power bringing it up from full back. Good run. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely Demi. Tell me Elaine. Oh, and again, maybe, maybe that's not what was intended, but uh, got away with it. But the second time when Pembrokeshire has some, some promise, the line out goes awry, then the ball's placed back and miscommunication uh, on the floor. Oh, did well not to throw the pass, didn't he? And squeezed out the tackle. An excellent offside by Liam Hughes. Their first scrum then for Rhys Phelps at Hooker and Braden Jones for Pembrokeshire. Looking for parities in the scrums. And Tucker would appear to have gone from tight head to loose head. But it's an Isloin put in. Uh, Pembroke are getting the nudge on. Those substitutions already making their mark. Oh, super kick. Is that? No, on the line. It lands on the line. I'd love to see that again. The crowd really unhappy with that decision. Yeah, and Nigel Gray, the uh, referee's assistant on the far side, getting the bird. Possible to say properly from here, but we'll go with the assistant referee's decision. But the pack things have really swung in favour of Pembrokeshire in, in the scrum. The changes in the forwards that we made by the coaches at half time have really fired the West Wallians. Yeah, Tucker going over to have a word with Rhys Phelps. This is where it's meant to go. Make no mistake, this time over the top, okay. finding uh, Callum White, the replacement. But it's slowing now there in numbers. But just somehow, a knock on. Yeah, Pembrokeshire will have the put in and they won't mind that. Yeah, fair contest on the floor for the Jackal. Jess couldn't pick it up. Tian Hall. The Pembrokeshire at the moment, they're letting themselves down. Own silly errors. Two line outs missed. A couple of knock ons on the floor. Ivan Wynne Jones has crept in from the right wing to uh, shadow. Outside half, Dylan Maguire. Yeah, numbers advantage on this right-hand side. Of course, Islo have to keep a, a blindside winger just for Simia Lane again on the uh, direct route. Good counter looking by Islo. He targeted that one. Pembrokeshire now with numbers in the breakdown. Uh, Braden Jones did well there to retain possession uh, for Pembrokeshire. Tucker holding up the ball. So far. Better contest at the top of the second half here. Yeah, good carry, was it by Lewis Rossiter? Yeah, another penalty. Pressure telling on Islund. Luger, away oh. he goes. And again, Islund not back the 10 metres. Not for the first time they penalised. Yeah, it could be a warning here. Two similar offences now, not back 10. The third one will be a yellow. And I'm really surprised if Alfie Luger will be smart enough to be targeting another third quick penalty to try to draw a yellow card. And this needs to be directed as near to that corner flag as possible to give the forwards a chance, perhaps, of driving over. Accuracy. Maguire, that's a fair old hit. 
Yeah, you take that with you. <laughs> I think the referee's assistant perhaps is trying to make amends. A bit harsh. Yeah. But you, you take that on the whole with that penalty kick. They're 10 metres away from the line. They've had a couple of practice throws. Maybe simplify things here. Overcomplicated the throw, gone to the tail. Yeah, trying to win the race at the front, they do so. Yeah, through Dennison this time. Looking to get the uh, the nudge on. An accidental offside. Yeah, it looks like it. That's the signal. Crossing. Yeah, getting himself caught in front of the ball carrier. Yeah, the lifting pod. Just twisting the support lift. They're just twisting to block the oncoming tacklers. I'm not sure the Pembrokeshire coaches would be very frustrated. They've controlled this second half. It's Lund, the stronger team the first half, and they seem a shadow of the team they were at the moment. They haven't come out of the blocks at half-time. They really need to uh, get back into the uh, Pembrokeshire half. they just not being able to get a toehold. Nearing. Oh, Jack Owen is on wearing 17, I believe, for Islin. First touch then for the replacement from the Riska High School. That's uh, Jack Owen. Oh, poor pass. Putting Looks pressure on his teammates. Was passing midfield, the kick uh, charged down Maguire. Great footballing skills. The outside half looking for the ball to bounce back into his arms. This is the best position for Pembrokeshire. A metre short. Balls there. Oh, the knock on. And they're coming in from the assistant referee on this near side. Eagle eyed Geraint Morgan. And at the moment, Pembrokeshire are doing everything apart from score. It's just a one-score game. The scrum's been going well by Pembrokeshire since the turn of ends, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's been an eight-man shove to try and get the ball back from Ishloon, and if they do get it, well, Callum White will be sensing an opportunity to crash over from the base of this number eight position. Issues again between the two front rows, replacement front rowers on. Yes, Lloyd Pack hold firm. And Kinsey gets it away. Good clearance kick, quickly taken by Pembrokeshire. Leo Power sets off. Good kick over the top of the Islund defence, giving chase on the far side. That's uh, Ivan Wynne Jones. It's uh, good work initially by Evan Davis to secure possession for Islund. And the right wing three quarters has done well under pressure. That's Kinsey getting the ball away. Safely into touch this time. Yeah, Pembrokeshire win that contest. At the time, I thought probably wasn't the wisest decision by Leo Power. He was running across field, running away from his support players. Plus the kick through, I'm not a fan of attacking, ki attacking kicks. Sometimes they can be wasteful, but on this occasion, measured well. Kayo Jones is on, wearing 18 for Pembrokeshire. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of coming and going. Toing and froing in that uh, Pembrokeshire line out. In goes the replacement hooker, Reese Phelps. Got a firm uh, hold on the ball. Luger waiting to take possession. Rossiter. A few Ooh. darts in that first half, didn't he? Good clearing out there by Pembrokeshire again. It's on here for Ivan Wynne Jones. Out to Maguire, the replacement picked up there by uh, Kian Ladd. On backwards, play goes on. Well, anything could happen here now, couldn't it? Dennison. Some big tackles coming in by Yeslow. Needs to be careful with picking players up in the air. Maguire again leaves it for Tucker. Where's the support? There's Kaya Jones on his shoulder. Yeslow needs a fold round. Quick recycling. Well Replacement played. prop onto a, a lane. For the corner, and over they go. 
Dalmi Elaine, the centre, rounding off that score for Premiership. And he is absolutely thrilled with that effort. And uh, all the Premiership lads can take uh, a claim for a share of that uh, five pointer. A super score, well deserved. And I think it's. Yeah, the replace with Braden Jones. It's his delay pass. He takes the ball to the line as a big ball carrier. The Eastland defence thinks he's going to just truck it up, but he delays the pass, gives it away, and that opens the space and holds the defence honest. And yes, Atlas Pembrokeshire get the try that they've been searching for. I've seen Kai can see the Eastland outside half uh, attempt two conversions from almost the same spot as uh, Dylan Maguire has placed this conversion attempt on the tee. Needs a little bit longer run up, I think. And I tell you what, it's uphill from the uh, far touchline there because the, uh, the sideline just drops off. Right-footed kicker. It's a good effort. It's a valiant effort. They're not quite good enough, but Pembrokeshire have their first try of the match, and they trail by two, by ten to eight. Yeah, game on. Eastland surely had been thinking at half-time this was their game to take. But Pembrokeshire have different ideas. So Kinsey sends it long, picking up the legs. That's uh, Callum White. He's really made a difference since coming on. He certainly has. Tucker, nice little offload. Placement hooker, Reese Phelps, almost up to his own 10 meter line. Maguire sends it high and long to the waiting arms of uh, Kinsey. Leaves it for his uh, fullback, Riley Gummer. Well played. That's a useful looking kick. It's a very good kick for blue shirts rushing up as well. Power has to backtrack and he spotted the gap. He spotted that there were two lock forwards there as well, giving chase. That's uh, Power chasing his own kick. Good offload as he hits the deck. Kerrick Smith. Conor McKilvey with the red headgear. Ian White coming into play at scrum half. Replacement. Jack Owen, tight head. Pembrokeshire up very quickly. It's a good tackle. Man tackle. and ball. Tucker's shown up well, hasn't he? The tight head prop forward. He's everywhere. There he is again. He's tested in the loose and he comes up with the answers. Nearly a half break. He does well there. Oli Tucker, a big tackle, he's back on his feet, thinking he'd have half a second to regroup and regather himself. And he's found at a mismatch again. That's the first hit on Kian Kinsey. He's back up on his feet, looking around, trying to get into that defensive line. And Teguin Mahoney has a dart. And Tucker backs down. On the loose head, the young lad from Greenhill School in Tembe. Yeah, back to his day job now. <laughs> Very much so. Callum White holding up, assuring up the uh, Pembroke's scrum. That's a difficult ball to take. No problem, though, for Riley Gummer. Maguire. It's a second uh, stab at it. Pembroke's are holding off. It's Tucker who's being penalised for not... Rolling away. So they'll come back for the full penalty just inside the Sloan half. Yeah, Tucker tried to roll away but got caught under a pile of bodies. Kinsey finds good position just on the Pembrokeshire 22. It's the closest they've been to the uh, Pembrokeshire try line in this uh, second period. 
Yeah, they seem a shadow of the team from the first half. The same fighting spirit seems to have dwindled away. They may be pacing themselves. The placements have been used early by Pembrokeshire. They're slowly slightly more conservative with their use of the bench. Luca Manning it was who won the ball at the line-out. On the charge, Morgan Marcelli. That's dragged forward by Tegwin Mahoney. And if you were an Eastern coach, you've been hoping your team could have just kept possession for a little while down this 22 area, just run the clock down, make Pembrokeshire work hard for possession. Maybe try and buy an easy penalty. And it was just a pass behind the back, wasn't it? 90% of passes probably drop because of the, the pass you receive more than your handling ability. Nestling getting the shove on, making things difficult for Luger. And they may well have stolen it. Shepard around the narrow side. He's got support from the left winger. That's uh, Liam White. Well played, Luger. Or I should say, Shepard. The number 18, the pink head guard. He could have easily just taken the contact here, but tried to draw two of the defenders to create the space on the left wing. Shoves off his back row. Just a couple of pumps, shifting the ball out to Liam White. Uh, Owen Grieve with the tackle for Pembrokeshire Schools. Accuracy is what's needed here. Some six, seven metres out from the Pembrokeshire try line. Shepard. What's the decision? He was straight through, wasn't he? Let's go! What happened there, Nikaki? Penalty one way, then reverse the other. Yeah, it's going to be a, a penalty to Isloid. Well, they want to run it. Yep, from fullback comes Riley Gummer if he is needed. Twisting, turning, is thrown over the try line. It's Kerrick Smith who's trying to claim that. Uh, the captain try. held up over the try line. <laughs> Kerrick has a word, then apologizes immediately. So a let off for Pembrokeshire. Yeah, you can take this drop goal from beneath the post, remember, he doesn't have to take it at the mark. Maguire thinking it through, sends it long. Gummer sets off. Little hitch kick. Doesn't fool Kyle Jones. But Eslo now on the front foot. Captain Smith as well. This time, perhaps, no. Liam White can't gather. Again, it was behind his back, I think, that pass. Oh, well played. Is it 23 in his back day and Joe James? Shoveling it out. Again, Jake Shepard is showing up well in an Islund shirt. He's carried hard, he's defended. Tough. Almost the perfect kick. Gummer looking to offload, but he's well held. Back into the box. Powers going to chase across for this one. Now that's a good kick, return kick under pressure by Powers. Kinsey recovers and knowing that uh, power is up with play. Alfie Thomas back there to cover. He on his weaker foot, it looks like. Kerrick Smith. I don't think we'll see a kick from him, will we? <laughs> I hope not, anyway. A wise decision by Yesloin. 
and ahead keep... on the scoreboard. Only a couple of points, but with a little over five minutes remaining in this intermediate Lawrence Miller Bowl. It's controlling the clock as much as controlling territory as well. Yeah. Good, sensible play there by Tegwin Marnie. And, and this could be the difference now for Islin. Replacements coming on the field, fresh legs. Pembrokeshire have rolled the dice earlier on in the half to try and get themselves back in the game, which they have. But the West Wales are still behind the scoreboard. Dennison. Maguire, the dependable Callum White. Yeah, Shepard marking him closely. Ivan Wynne Jones floating the pass out to power. This is Diane James looking for space. Can't get away. The ball still in the field of play. In the end, Conor McHugh bundled over. Yeah, the referee waiting for advantage uh, to be uh, accrued, I think, but it's going to be a line out rather than scrum. I thought the ball had been uh, knocked forward out of Day and James's hand. There's a Pembrokes line out. Tucker makes his mark. Yeah, numbers here, one too many by Esloin. It could be a free kick. Referee hasn't spotted. And yeah, that's a good contest now between the, the number eight, Jake Shepard uh, and White. Yeah, he's the main ball carrier for Pembrokeshire, is uh, Callum White. Looking to break out of their own 22, Esloin grappling for possession, turning into an arm wrestle in the uh, dying moments of this uh, Lawrence Miller bowl final. Thanks very much, says Kinsey. I'll have it, says uh, Riley Gummer, very prominent in the uh, opening quarter. Marnie breaks the first tackle. Carrick Smith, good work. Good pass. Safely into the hands of Liam Hoyt this time. An unexpected pass as well. He's expecting a, a second row just to trundle upfield and Where's try and gonna? take the ball into contact. And Pembrokeshire playing themselves into a, a blind alley there. Well, they're still in one bind one bit because they're in that part of the field where they want to be. Yeah, and this is Ishloon's opportunity with three or four minutes remaining. One score here, be a three, be a five. I'd imagine this will be the game in the bag. Yeah, four Ishloon players over on this side of the scrum. I wonder if they've bought four on the left just to open the right for eight, nine. Well, it's, there, it's there, definitely there for them if they want to go right. Ah, yeah, and it was as well, oh. Shepard. Yeah, it was poised, wasn't he? So, this game could go anyway. Istoin could have put it to bed. Uh, uh, Pembrokeshire. Yeah, Pembrokeshire will have to go the distance here. The speculative kick over the top. Now then, it's turned into a foot race. Back there's Kinsey, has to make sure of the possession. So that may have been uh, Luca Manning, actually, the 20. A little over-exuberance from the Pembrokeshire players. And this Lewin will be in no hurry whatsoever to take this penalty. Kinsey to make sure that it goes into the uh, back row, perhaps, of the uh, the lower tier. The three to Daldi is a quick look at his watch. The line-out will take place on halfway. Well, if it's going to happen for Pembrokeshire, it's got to happen now. Two points the difference, one score will do it. The famous Pembrokeshire player in the background, that's uh, Geraint John. Taking more than a passing interest in uh, proceedings, I would suggest. And stolen at the front of the line. Shepard with a hit on the scrum half, but Pembrokeshire, here they come. Ball has to go through the hands, nice step back inside from Dayan James. But he's well marshalled, well collared. Pembrokeshire needs to keep their width on their left hand side to try and attack again. It had to be, didn't it? Callum White and uh, Jake Shepard knew exactly where the threat was going to come from. Yeah, they've been headlong into each other, Shepard and White. 
throughout this second half, and that's the penalty. <laughs> He's probably just out of range. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> a very confident Reese Phelps, the replacement hooker, was immediately pointed to the post. A few of the boys are as well, White. Uh, hang on, he oh, says, They're going here. for it. They're going oh, for it. Well, do or die for Pembrokeshire. Oh, pressure. Who what has? pressure. The responsibility, it's going to be Lee Power. It's going to be Dylan Maguire, I think, who's going over to fetch the tee. And he's in the biggest of, uh, of, of physiques. But we saw that penalty, that conversion attempt from the touchline. He had the distance. It's all about technique off the tee. Yeah, you could over... Overkick it. It's got to strike it right. 42 meters out. Well, it's high enough. Oh, it's close. Oh, it's dying oh, off oh, against the, the post. Shepard kicks it into the stands. Well, a valiant effort from Pembrokeshire. Unbelievable it, finish. Uh, it was the uh, thickness of a coat of paint in the end, wasn't it? But it was an intriguing contest. Nonetheless, those uh, two tries in the uh, first half for Isloin have seen them home to clinch the Lawrence Miller Bowl. Pembroke did everything in the second half, timely substitutions at the break, and you thought at that time, the first 10 minutes or so of the second half, that they might well do it, and the try scored by uh, Delmi Alain gave them confidence, gave them hope, but it was not to be in the end. So the Lawrence Miller Bowl goes uh, eastwards, and to the Isloin schools. Yeah, it goes to Isloin for the, for the sake of a coat of paint. Yeah, great effort, wasn't it? From 45 metres or so. I really doubt it if he did have that distant distance, but a great strike. And uh, an emotional signs on the pitch afterwards uh, as well. And, well, what a finish. That's the closest finish that we've had throughout this road to Principality Series. Yeah, two or three of uh, Maguire's colleagues had the confidence in him, pointing immediately to the post, knowing that there were just a few seconds left, and had they kicked for the corner, they might have had a line-out, and who knows. But, uh, you feel for Dylan Maguire, certainly, that you've got to take your chances in this game. They came so close, didn't they? It could have been a historic win for Pembrokeshire, but not this year. So they'll have to do it all again next year, if they are to uh, progress in this intermediate uh, group in the competition for the Dewar Shield. But this has been the Lawrence Miller Bowl final for the quarter finalists. Well, after Isloon lost the DC Thomas Cup final, they've regained some, well, we'll say respectability, but they've been able to win one of the finals they've played in today in the Lawrence Miller Bowl. Although by the thinnest of margins. But I'm really pleased to see some of the performances on the field there. Jake Shepard really was a standout at eight for Isloin, as was White, who came, Callum White, who came off the bench at 8 for Pembrokeshire. Yeah, if he was on early, and maybe the result again could have been different. He carried hard, he carried well, he gave momentum and impetus and front football for Pembrokeshire. Yeah. Jake Shepard came into his own in the second half, and he relished the uh, the challenge and the, uh, the battle with uh, Callum White. And it was as much down to uh, Shepard himself that uh, maybe Isloin have. Uh, Held on to their slender lead as the uh, officials come to uh, collect their awards. They've been here before, Paul Tidaldi, Nigel Gray and uh, Geraint Morgan. Nigel Gray. Geraint Morgan, an avid walker, he knows every byway and highway all across Wales, does Geraint? 
So appreciation being shown to uh, the victorious uh, Isloin schools group uh, from amongst their supporters in the stand and Pembroke should also have their solid support although it was not to be on this occasion and they'll come uh, first to collect their runner-up medals Nick Murphy, we saw him, I think, on Monday, dishing out the uh, the medals to Will Davis, handing the medals out to the Pembroke side. Uh, Ollie Tucker, certainly my man of the uh, the Pembroke schools, in the thick of everything today. Uh, they can't be despondent. They've uh, played with credit. Yeah, good effort by Pembrokeshire. For the first 10, 15 minutes, it seemed that Islund were going to be just too strong, too powerful, too quick. And they fall back with great endeavour, great belief. And the end, Islund were. Yeah, Chian Hall there, the uh, scorer of the second try. Islund were probably the, the better team over the 60 minutes. White had a few opportunities. Jack Shepherd, we'll hear more of him, that's for sure. Front row contingent. The last man through will be uh, Carrick Smith. Led by example, didn't he, the uh, lock forward? He played well, he wasn't used to edit it because second row just trying to carry hard and hit rucks. He showed some lovely ball handling ability. He fed the ball a couple of times out to the left winger, Liam White, into space. And he couldn't just have those opportunities cross the line, but there was always a threat down that left flank. Kenneth Smith, one of six representatives from the Newbridge School in this Isloin lineup. Blackwood School, uh, Isloin High represented, along with Riska High School. So here's the moment. Winners of the Lawrence Winner Miller Bowl. Ten points to eight, the final scoreline, and up goes the Lawrence Miller Bowl in the hands of Kerrick Smith, the captain of the Isluin Schools. They are the winners of the Welsh Schools Rugby Union Intermediate Group, and uh, all congratulations to them for their efforts. Reservations to uh, Pembrokeshire on uh, this occasion. So plenty to reflect upon for both teams. Two games to come on this uh, Wednesday, the plate final to be contested between uh, Carmarthen schools and the Swansea Valley schools and the final itself of course later on for the the main prize and it's going to be the uh, Pontypridd schools against uh, Swansea. So for now, let's congratulate Islund Schools on the job well done in taking out the Lawrence Miller Bowl. Let's uh, reflect on that game and have a look at the highlights.
the shadows of rugby's greatest fortress. Or in Wales's wild interior. Thomas Williams will score for Wales. You're part of our team. Your team. the corner they come through snow so and jasmine choice gets there the custodian of this jersey represents everyone else who wears it from the verdant valleys of the south to the craggy mountains of the north a try scored here began way back there. Hannah Jones seals this victory for Wales. Because every player's journey starts at a rugby club somewhere. Without you, we would never get to witness this. This jersey is your jersey. This game is your game. It's where we all, through the chosen few, become one. Umlein Cymru. It's been an initiative, FitBed, fund run by the WIU, and currently today we're working uh, here within the Dragons region with all the disability children from around our region. It's lovely to see them all today here. I was very excited for today to meet up with the, the trainers, the coaches, uh, all, my, all my friends from normal rugby training just to have a day out. As a mother, to see Regan playing with other children today is just a godsend. Like, without the inclusion sport, Regan wouldn't have anything. As where we live, we haven't got any um, football teams, rugby teams that will take on children with additional needs. So this is very, very important. Come on, sweetheart. Go on, let you go. Oh, 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 that's it. Wow. You are so strong. My son is Leo, he's nine years old and he's got Down syndrome. You need groups like this that can have children who've got all different abilities but with a disability um, and they can just they can be blossoming that ability then, you know, in that sport. It is respite for myself as well because I can send him here and then he just has fun with, with meeting new friends and building his confidence. Rugby is a game for everybody and it should be a game for everybody um, and I think now the, the Union and the Dragons and, and the other regions alike are really focusing on that inclusion, on, on those inclusion strategies to make sure that everything's accessible no matter what disability you have. So we like to think that these sort of things are the, are the kickstart for those children then to move forward and enjoy the rugby.
The new changing facilities are fantastic. Brings a real brightness for our, for our walking values. We ask the players just to concentrate on the rugby element side of things and close work and group have worked hard to let the players do that and the change rooms are certainly one, of the, one part of that is part of their toolkit. Well this changing room for example, um, the plasterboard was falling off the ceiling, um, there was a lot of damp and mould in here. We've got under sixes, the youth and two senior teams running so we need all the changing rooms running all the time. So the facilities grant, we wouldn't have been able to do it without the WRU helping us so it's been a really big help for us. It took between six and seven weeks in total, but we did have a little bit of a break in the middle because we had such hot weather and um, putting the ventilation system in the attic was a bit of a, an arduous task, so they had to pull off for a week. But yeah, so it was really quick, yeah, really happy with the work and uh, the contractors. It means a lot. As a club and a community, we've been on a journey for about seven, eight years, uh, really incorporating Bleed Black and Amber as, uh, as a club motto, uh, and that does uh, transpire for, from million juniors up to seniors and back again. We couldn't have done it without the WRU backing because of the, the cost of the changing rooms to be done. We just wouldn't have been able to with the funds that we've got. We've been happy with the last 125 years and hopefully with the WRU backing we can get through the next 125 years plus. that can have children who have all different abilities and they can just blossom in that ability. A lot of kids growing up like me are in the same position as me. My take on rugby because they've seen someone that might look like them or from the same area as them doing that. rugby as a vehicle to empower people to see that they can actually do much more, then, then it, it, it's worth its weight in gold. Pinaich bod chi'n chwarae yng nghasgodion y gair gydarnaf y mid rygbi. Neu mas yng ngwyll cefn gwlad Cymru. Thomas Williams will score for Wales! Rhi chi'n rhan o'n tîm ni, eich tîm chi. the corner of the come through snow so and Jasmine Joyce gets there my cage was a crease hole and can really pow bar at in a whisker O gymoedd godidog y de i fynyddoedd mawreddog y gogledd. Mae Cais sy'n cael ei sgorio fan hyn wedi dechrau'r holl ffordd yn ôl fan yna. Hannah Jones seals this victory for Wales! Gan bod taith pob chwaraeon yn dechrau mewn clwb rygbi yn rhywlef. Eich gêm chi yw'r gêm yma.
dyma ble yn i gyd trwy'r ychydig a ddewiswyd yn dod yn un. Ymlaen Cymru. Hello, Achris Akenes, your stadium principality. Hello, and a warm welcome to the principality stadium. We are ready for the Wales Schools Rugby Intermediate Group final. Morgan Griffiths, a plate. And there's the plate or bowl they'll be playing for with a giant steel shield beside it. I think it's a silver plate. I think that's yeah. what they're trying to say. <laughs> yeah, it's a lovely trophy award awaiting the winners of this plate final between Carmarthen and Swansea Valley. This is the second final in this age category. Under 15s rugby being played at its best. We have had one final, the bowl final, a few minutes earlier on, with Isluin taking the spoils by 10 points to eight. And a warm welcome to the commentary box. Di Williams beside me, getting his headset on, ready to go. And Wynne Griffith, my co-commentator for the whole week. Uh, and and Wynne, we still enjoyed that competitive first game in uh, the bowl. And hopefully the plate, as always, we expect is going to be uh, an extra level, an extra, extra tier of competitiveness and standard to it. Yeah, we're looking to the players to literally step up to the plate uh, Refereeing is pretty uh, pretty tight, isn't it, in these uh, contests? And uh, we've seen that already today. And uh, I'm not sure that the the coaches will have noted as well. And they'll have uh, issued a little reminder to their charges. Well, be very careful, be disciplined, because it's only by being disciplined uh, that you will win through in the end. We've seen some tight uh, matches, haven't we? 10-8, the uh, previous match for the Lawrence Miller Bowl, Pembrokeshire and Isluin taking out the uh, the bowl in the end. Right then, this is the Kamaran team heading out for this one. The back line, start with the halfbacks, 9 and 10. Logan McDermott and Carwin Legat jones The centre partnership in midfield, 12, Connor Murphy-Healy. And 13, Gethin Davis. And the back line, 11, Ellis Jones. 15, Rhys Jones. And 14, Will Evans. And the pack, number one, Iago Ap David, two, Thomas Axford, three, Will Ford, four, Oscar Howells, five, Callum Goman. That's the boiler room, rocking down the front five. Flank forwards, Thomas Paddy at six, and Owen Edwards, seven, with eight, Charlie Cullen Thomas. And the placements for Kamaran, Will Jones, Thomas Jones, Lloyd Wilkins Jones, Sid Castry. Charlie Reynolds, Johan Thomas, Freddie Davis, and Hridian John. Morgan Bethel, Daniel Coker, Glenn Bevan, Garen Phillips, Gethin Morgan, and Oscar Roberts. And the Swansea Valleys team. Captain Nicholas Frisk Jones starts at nine, with Griff Peters outside at 10. Justin Lecher, 12, Oliver Morgan, 13. Ashton Crook, 15, the fullback, with Alfie Selby and Isaac Davis, the speedsters on the wing. And the eight, trying to provide the platform for those back line. Brody Davis, Evan Davis, Zach Llewell in the front row. Jack Harris, Barfoot, and Owen Evans Taylor. The double battle in the second row. And Jack. O'Malley Jones, Jaden Knight, six and seven, and Freddie Millward, eight. The replacements, Clandon James, Morgan Davis, Kian Chesby, Darius James, Theo Richards, Alad Evans, Morgan Penhale, Kobe Scott. Alad Jones, Guion Everly. They're the replacements for Swansea Valley.
at. And here the teams come out. The Greens of Carmarthen. A brisk shot out to the Principality Stadium. And Swansea Valley in the yellow, the bright yellow and bright green strip and black shorts. And again, we've got another decent crowd in for this one. The revolving door at the Principality working hard to get the new sets of fans in for this intermediate WSIU Morgan Griffiths plate final. And the referee for this one is Kai Lewis. Fresh-faced Kai Lewis, I must say. And it's Swansea Valley to kick off. Playing from left to right. And a good hanging ball for Jaden Knight to chase down. And uh, an early opportunity for Kamarden to settle down to this one. Use the forwards just to take it up front. But that's been spilt, fumbled by the outside centre, Oliver Morgan. Gone backwards, says the referee. Kamarden, yeah, sensibly sending this one back downfield. Had a probe down the right. Fullback Chris Jones stepping one way, twisting the other. Offloads well. Yeah, the early promise from both sides. Looking to get a foothold in the opposition half. That's a good carry. Bit of physicality, change of direction, looking towards that narrow 15-metre channel. The defence is solid by Kamarden. Swansea Valley hooker, Thomas Axford, chopping his way. And Nicholas Frisk-Jones. Lifts the kick up high. That's well taken by Carwin Jones, the Carmarthen outside half from the Queen Elizabeth High School in Carmarthen. Carmarthen School is represented by players from Bromerthen and uh, De Frintav in Whitland. And how good is it to see a young referee? No, that's no uh, slant on the uh, referees we've seen so far during the week, but uh, Kyle Lewis must be the youngest referee we've seen. And it's a breeding ground uh, and a chance for referees to develop their skills as well as the more hardened veterans, so to speak. Yeah, it seems to be a tradition for, for referees. They t pick up the whistle once they retire from playing rugby. But now there's a serious progression pathway for referees to be full-time in the sport. We've seen the likes of Ben Breakspear, who picked up the whistle when still in secondary school and now on the World Sevens circuit. Kick just fades away past the face of the post. And lucky for Swansea Valley, unable to open the scoring. Yeah, good effort there from uh, Nicholas Frisk Jones, left footed kicker. Well, that's a good punt up field from the restart by Kamarden, allowing Swansea to attack from deep. Through Yestin Lacher. Good defence, the green shirts. Organised to begin with, slow ball. Using Freddie Millerwood and number eight, Swansea Valley. And we cast an eye quickly on the team sheet. The majority of the Swansea Valley team come from Oskolka in Estalavera. And that's good tackle. Good chasing, and it's. Somehow popped back on the Swansea Valley side, but illegally so. Yeah, flopping off the feet. That's what's been penalised by referee Kai Lewis. And a chance for Carwin Jones to lift the pressure. Ashton Crook couldn't quite gather. No, but he fancies a run from here. Beats the first man with ease. Finds some support 
in strength of his numbers. A little dummy by Jones, the captain. Needs to manufacture some space to box this downfield or leave it to Griff Peters, the fly half. And Kamarthen making a nuisance on themselves. They've won it. There's an opportunity. A couple of passes here. Could see Kamarthen in at the right hand side. The fullback, Reese Jones. That's a lovely try. A beautiful try from the fullback, Reese Jones, from Eskol Bromerdin. And Kamarthen strike first. Yeah, the gap opened up in the wide outside, didn't it? And well spotted by the uh, Kamarthen backs as we look again. Loose pass. A long pass, though, the long floated pass uh, from uh, Carwin Leggett Jones, finding Will Evans and uh, rounding it off for Kamal then. Reese Jones in at the corner, up from fullback. And with five minutes gone here at the Principality Stadium, a perfect start for Kamal then. Five points on the board. And Reese Jones is one of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, Bromerdin boys in the squad of 23. Yeah, proud record uh, of uh, representatives from Bromerdin over the years, starting with Emir Lewis, I suppose, way back when. Priest Priestland, Ken Ste Owens. Well, Stephen Jones, Ken Owens. And that's a super conversion to add the extras. And Kamarthen. Quickly take over to seven points to nil against Swansea. I did mention Estelavera. They've also got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen or fourteen players in a squad of twenty-three. Come on, then again with possession. Yeah, go up, David. Loose head for Brummer, then taking it up. Neat oh. little chip. Yeah, hack on. Not the best execution by the fly half, Carwin Jones, but he's showing his footballing skills now, hacking the ball downfield. Swansea have to be alert. Again. Nicholas Jones, the captain, has to dummy to look for space. He's smothered. Yeah, the Camarthen players hounding the Sonsi Valley defence. This time a bit more time for Nicholas Fisk Jones, but it's a wayward kick in the field to the try scorer, Fisk Jones. He's again eyeing that right hand wing, Will Evans. He's got a fair bit of pace as the Camarthen fullback, Rhys Jones. And the intent clear for all to see. Camarthen want to uh, spread the ball, they've got the pace on the flanks. This one's you'll be happy with the result of that box kick wasn't. In terms of accuracy, the best kick probably would have wanted to aim for this 15 metre channel, slightly too far infield, allowing an opportunity for Reese Jones to counter attack. But Kamarden not able to string a, a sequence of passes together to create a, a real threat. Swansea with the scrum stable enough to launch a midfield attack. A kick. Long downfield turning for this Jones. Has to let it bounce. Looks for the safety of touch. No messing by the fullback. A good covering work there by Reese Jones. A uh, the testing kick. Under pressure again, getting that ball away. Early thoughts, Di, what you made of the contest? A very interesting contest. Both of them uh, had good wins in the semi-final, or at least uh, Carmarthen beat Cunham Valley 19-12, and Swansea Valley beat Merthyr 27-12. An interesting comment you made about the referee as well. It wasn't so long ago that Nigel Owens was cutting his teeth on uh, Dewar Shield Rugby. Well, that's a long time ago now. <laughs> it only seems yesterday <laughs> to somebody of my age. How and, time uh, flies. And he... Started off as a young referee and he continued to uh, be involved with Jewish Shield Rugby all through his career. And Swansea Valley on the halfway line looking to free hands is Yestin Lacher. Swallowed up in attack. This is Owen Evans Taylor, the second row. 
Everything slightly slower than one by Swansea. Individual runners. They need a bit more pace off the deck. Again, the fly air scrum half. Jones taking a bit too much time to release. Again, they were benched. They were benched up on the right. And here's the danger man. The full-back Jones. This Jones, that is. Already a try scorer. Lovely offload inside. Back towards the green shirts. Come flooding forward. Owen Edwards offloads. Good jackal by Yestin Lucha. Has he won it? Yeah, I needed somebody closer, didn't he? But what a pace again from uh, the cover then, the Kamada and fullback uh, Reese Jones down that uh, right wing. Again, just picks up his head up, has a look, scanning left. Knows he's running out of space on the right. A great offload into Cadwin Jones, the fly half. And the unfortunately for the Greens of Kamada and Iago up David isolated. Uh, Yestin Lecher winning the turn over for the uh, Swansea Valley Schools and the resultant penalty taking play well, up to uh, within the 10 meter line of uh, Kamaran. Evenly matched in the scrums. Swansea Valley got a big gap between inside centre and outside centre. Yes. Probably too big a back to uh, pass. Pass to throw off the left hand side. Well, oh, that's a clever chip through for Alfie Selby to chase. And he oh. bounces into the winger's hand. And Selby is in. And what an apply by Swansea. A try from nothing. A speculative has prod through. Well, it was, wasn't it? Under pressure, there wasn't much that the Swansea Valley uh, player could do. You spotted that there was uh, a gap in midfield. It was filled. Here we are, that's the kick. The bouncing ball, a wicked bouncing ball. Well snapped up though by Alfie Selby. Yeah, I think Griff Peters, the fly half. Twisting, just drops the ball in his right peg. And a lovely, lovely bounce of a rugby ball. Top of a tail. And it sets up perfectly for Alfie Selby. Slides off to the left. The Kamadan have their score reduced to a two-point deficit. Kamadan seven, Swansea five as Nicholas Frisk Jones fails with the conversion attempt. And we're here now next door when the roars of the Welsh varsity <laughs> taking place, the women's. Cardiff against Swansea taking place. We'll come back to that in a moment because this could be trouble. Yeah, yeah falling he was taken in the air there. Falling heavily. That's the Swansea Valley number six, Jack O'Malley Jones from Mysa Derwent. I wouldn't be surprised if this was a, a ultimate Clark card and if the referee Kai Lewis had a word with his assistant referee. Yeah, I think we had the, uh, the benefits. Yeah, took the legs from under him. If you had the benefit of a television match official, I'm sure this would be would be yellow. He lands flat on his back. So it's not a red. From a refereeing perspective, you always start from the red card and look at mitigating circumstances yep. where the body falls. He doesn't land on his shoulder or his neck, so it's not really a red card. But because it's still dangerous, probably a yellow card would be a, a fair result. Yeah, the referee's assistant on the far side hasn't had to intervene or add uh, any comments to what the referee has already seen. Good to see the player back on his feet. Seemingly will be a, a penalty only. Yeah, I think he's a bit lucky to get away with that. Nice little touch finder, Swansea. 
Straight back after a score on the front foot into the command and half. Evan Davis, the hooker, goes to the middle. Fight out towards Yestin Lecher in the black scrum cap. Up against the feisty back row, waiting for him in midfield. And forwards queuing up to take this ball forward for the uh, Swansea Valley schools. Evans Taylor in there again in the flashy scrum cap. The Swansea Valley building through the phases slowly but surely. They are building, but from my perspective, Commander do seem comfortable in defence on the whole. Apart from that try, from that kick, they seem to have coped with the Swansea Valley attack so far. And the way through there for Griff Peters. Again, losing territory, Swansea Valley, they've got to look for the help of their forwards with Lucher cutting back inside, does well eventually. Maybe some space in this shorter channel. The try scorer Alfie Selby trying to dance out of trouble. Scragged by Ellis Jones. He's done well to recover, hasn't he? Good Surprised here. Like Griff Peters, a fly half. Wasn't lucky with the kick. Command and half dropped. A man back to the backfield. Maybe a phase too late by Nicholas Jones. But that's a good tackle by Jaden Knight following up well. Brilliant work again by Rhys Jones, the fullback. Brave enough to uh, go under the high ball and get the ball away as well. And they come again. Oh. oh, beautiful pass over the top, dancing feet, but toenail on the whitewash. Yeah, good decision by the assistant referee in this near side. Ellis Jones unable to balance his way. Come on, that white beam. The Carmarthen uh, defence are doing a sterling job. They're pushing up hard on the outside, forcing Carmarthen back in, uh, Swansea Valley back in. Good competition in the line. Forced to Jaden Knight, the open side flanker. Swansea into the Carmarthen 22. This is a good sustained passage of pressure by the boys from Swansea Valley. And it's a penalty. A kick or go for position. I think this will be a three-pointer. Yeah, get yourselves ahead on the scoreboard. If it was maybe wider towards the 50-metre line, you would have considered chipping towards the five-metre line out. Yeah, Nick Jones at the base of the uh, Swansea Valley scrum and Ruck there passing. His passes are timely. Bringing the forwards onto the ball. Frisk Jones. The captain. And this trusty, trusty left boot. Pokes his side ahead for the first time in this Morgan Griffiths plate final. Carmarthen 7, Swansea Valley 8. Jones is the tactician, isn't he? He's the captain. Dictating terms. Yeah, he's having plenty of touches as well as Nia from that nine position. Point the difference. Jones again lifting the box kick. The yellow wall chasing up. Chris Jones, the danger man, juggling the ball, does well to evade that first tackle and get his arms and shoulders through. No full back at home for this one. It was the kick through. Ellis Jones is isolated. The bounce of the ball again. <laughs> Falls in the way of Alfie Selby. And he's in around the sticks and under the posts. Alfie Selby poaching another try. The bounce was kind, but there wasn't that uh, clever play from uh, Swansea Valley. Stealing the ball and spotting that uh, Rhys Jones was up with play and that there was a uh, space behind. 
wasting no time whatsoever. A good jackal by uh, Swansea Valley. The yeah. two possession over. It was Justin Lucker with a jackal and a kick. And a kick, yeah. Bounce evading Ellis Jones. And thank you very much, says Alfie Selby. I'm away at the races over for a second try. If he was of legal age, I hope he's bought a lottery ticket. <laughs> The luck is literally bouncing in his direction. Easy enough for the captain, Nicholas Jones. And within a couple of minutes, Swansea Valley have stolen a march on the scoreboard. Kamarden 7, Swansea 15. Yes, slowly but surely, Swansea Valley building up a score. Taking full advantage uh, of uh, errors from the Carmarthen side. Carmarthen, we were looking for their leaders to regalvanize the team. Jones yeah, extending the left foot again and firing a shot down for measured you. kick on the money. And Lucha with a second kick. Where's this going to bounce? Selby's after it. Oh, oh he's going to be for his third. Never in a month of Sundays. Oh, Alfie Selby has scored a hat trick. A hat trick in five minutes for the Swansea Flyer. Well, you get your reward. Never give up the chase. And that's a, a hat trick here at the Principality Stadium within 20 minutes for Alfie Selby. And it all came really from that perfect box kick by Nicholas Jones and another probing kick by Yestin Lucher. You see, for love for money, Ellis Jones was going to deal with it. But he had Alfie Selby breathing down his neck. Yeah, the try created and uh, executed in the school governor Stolvera. That's a difficult kick for... Nicholas Jones, but it's the right side of the field for a left for a kicker. Great effort. Just drops short. He had the accuracy, just not the distance. And after 20 minutes here at the Principality Stadium, it's command and seven, Swansea Valley 20. And after that, start by command. Rushing to a seven-point lead. This game has turned on its head. Uh, such a promising start, wasn't it, by uh, Carmarthen. And releasing the flyer up from fullback Rhys Jones, but uh, behind the, the eight ball at the moment. Charge down. Under pressure, Jones. This time, was it a knock-on in there? Yes, just a, a little nudge. And yes. At the moment, everything... Is going Swansea's way. Come on, I'm trying to get the squeeze on. Swansea held it well. Look at. He's using that big right foot again. He has, hasn't he? He's got powerful boot. Yeah, they've got the left booted option of Nicholas Jones from the base of the scrum of the ruck and the right footed option of the inside setter, Lucha. Yeah, it's good to have uh, both options. And Lucha comfortable, isn't he? Putting boot to ball. The force hit the deck. Leave it to Jones to lift the kick again, and that's measured well. And again, the chase is good, piling in. Kamarden unable to deal with this high ball at the moment. They're losing the kicking battle. Carwin Jones, the lengthy kick downfield, but no pressure on the ball. The chase isn't the best. Griff Peters fancies a run. And Kamarden giving away the penalty. 
unnecessarily. Yeah, going off the feet. And perhaps beyond the ball as well. Controlled and measured play from the Swansea Valley schools. And we see the replay. The tackle was good. Owen Edwards going in on the jackal, just going to his hands first before going in the ball. It's difficult when the ball is, is in the motion, the action of being placed back to get your targets and sight in on the ball. And the most ones he probably playing the wiser cup rugby tactics, kicking accurately, chasing well. My slight criticism at the start of the game was that they maybe slightly laboured off the base of that ruck, but they found their momentum and mojo and found a winning combination or a leading combination. Now let's see what Kamada can do with ball in hand. Lovely little run around, creating space on the left flank. Here he is, Ellis Jones. He's got pace. Is he going to get away? Oh, he is he's indeed. In. And he makes amends for his earlier error defensively. And Ellis Jones is in for Kamaden. That's a day for the wing three quarters on the near side, isn't it? Ellis Jones from Bromardin, Alfie Selby from Estlavera. It's a well worked try, wasn't it? The Long pass out to from the outside half, Carwin Jones. Ellis Jones had a lot to do when he received the ball in hand. And the Swansea Valley players perhaps a little guilty of going a, a little too high. But that's to take nothing away from the try scorer. Yeah, he had a lot of work to do. This becomes an important kick. For Carwin Jones, the command and ten will bring the boys in green within. A converted try, squeaks it in. Yeah, gave it an almighty thump, didn't he? Powerful quads. Carwin Legger Jones. And let's see this again. A lovely move from the off, going wide off first phase. And Ashton Crook nearly grabbing a handful of shirt with the pace and the strength of Ellis Jones. Enough to cross for Command and second try. Command and 14, Swansea Valley 20. Chase is good again from the uh, open side wing forward. Jaden Knight. An easy exit for Command. Arwin Jones, what a good touch finder. Yeah, he's got some weight behind the uh, the boot, hasn't he? Carwin Jones. Seen some players finding it difficult to exit to touch, but not Carwin Jones so far. Yeah, one of three players from Queen, El Queen Elizabeth High School in Carmarthen. And that's a probing kick, a lovely kick, forcing the defence to turn. Yeah, always running away from uh, Ashton Crook, wasn't it? And takes play into the uh, Swansea Valley 22. It's already a seesaw encounter, isn't it? Carmarthen drawing first blood, Swansea then with three unanswered scores. And Kamalan finding their feet again. Yeah, contesting the line-outs, not quite. What's the decision okay. here? Not straight. For a split second, I wasn't sure if there's a push in there. And there's going to be a full-arm penalty in the favour of the yellow of Swansea Valley. That's a good platform here for the Kamalan schools. And everyone needs to be on point and just having a, a look around him there was the uh, number nine, Logan McDermott. And Kamada have lined up very deep. Yeah, I'd be surprised if this goes from right to left. 
Straight off first phase. The run around. A deep pass. Trying to work Ellis Jones into space again. Has to cut inside on this occasion. Swansea to roll away. Yeah, there were too many players in front of uh, Ellis Jones on that occasion, but I like the way that uh, Kamar then built up to get the ball away to uh, Ellis Jones. Good placement there by Karen Jones under pressure. Yago Abdavid. Unable to get rid of Nicholas Frisk Jones. And they kind of tackles come thundering in. Slightly too high by Jack Harris Barfoot. But here come oh. Kamarden Jones. Perhaps if he'd given it early. Driving Goldman. hard and low. Goldman loses it. Oh, just tipped on with three or four. A bit adventurous then. You Out didn't left. want a forward there, did you? <laughs> no. You wanted uh, a swift. I thought Kamarden may have had their chance on this left-hand side. It, uh, it, all it needed was uh, a quick pass, and I think they could have been in on the corner. Yeah, but in reply, Swansea could have been away down the layer left as well. If they had a fleet-footed centre waiting for the ball. But it's a, a superb attacking opportunity for Kamarden. Centre of the 22, 8-9. Going down the right-hand side. The pass not on point. We'll have to reset on the 22. Jones in as scrum half. And this is Paddy, the blindside flanker. Somebody's lost a boot in midfield. Advantage being played by the referee, Ap David. Great hands to the danger man, Rhys Jones. Can't yeah. gather from yeah. his ankles. Swansea Valley offside, under the post. The clock has turned red, but it's a penalty. They will have an opportunity to go for the corner or the posts. And do come out and want to gamble and try and take the lead before the break? Or would they be happy just chipping away at that Swansea lead? I think the original message was let's run it, but no. Yeah. I think let's that's be sensible. patient. Yeah, I think that's sensible taking the points. Yeah, just before half time and to uh, bring them closer to the Swansea total. Yeah, this is the offside in midfield. We can see on the left our screens, those yellow shears not retreating far enough. And Iago Abdavid, a good offload, two good passes over the top. But Kamal and couldn't manufacture the chance they were dearly hoping to do before the half time whistle. That said. Karen Jones converts the penalty and reduces that Swansea lead to only four points. It's been a, a thrilling first half. We've seen five tries in all, two to Kamarden, three to Swansea Valley. And the score at the interval is Kamarden 17, Swansea Valley 20.
Kylo is counting the players. Spotted the huddle that there were quite a few uh, over the 15 on the field. Yeah, always worth doing just in case. Second half of this Morgan Griffiths plate final about to begin. Command and 17, Swansea 20. A devastating 10 minute period in the middle of that first half for Swansea. A hat trick to Alfie Selby. Pushing the Swansea boys ahead. The command and have cut that lead to three points. Oh, one early tackle in there. Yeah, well that's spotted. A and the short and a measured kick again from uh, Nicholas Jones well yeah. coached I should think uh, a wine bearing in mind that his dad is uh, Robert Jones the former Wales and uh, British and Irish Lions scrum half and it is that combination that has been working for Swansea a box kick from Nicholas Jones and a good chase and on one or maybe two occasions that box kick has led to a try from the turnover Mistiming on that occasion, allowing Carmarthen to send the ball into the Swansea 22. And how often do we see it? Yeah, promising positions. It all went wrong, didn't it, for Carmarthen schools mm. there? Well, straight scrum down, yellow ball, the referee will be saying. Communication is key. At line out time, sometimes you know, we blame the hooker, and it's not always his fault, if ever. The hooker would say that, remember? <laughs> yeah. Good scrum, Jones. Releases the black, the backs. Lucha cutting back inside, using his strength. More than that, right trusty boot on this occasion. He has a strong boy, isn't he, uh, Lucha? Forwards on the edge at 22. Will they go direct to touch from here? Jones, the captain. And just rolling the ball back. Extends that left foot of his. And gets the ball away. Yeah, that's a good kick again. Slightly too far this time. But it's the... Karen Jones, 10 for command. And lovely back the door offload. Intercepted by Swansea. Lovely dummy as well. And they're away to the races again. Oh. And unfortunately... Isaac Davis. Yeah, good work initially, wasn't it, by the uh, the Kamala notes at half. Carwin Jones looks a threat with ball in hand. On that occasion, the no look pass was it? Yeah, great dummy, wasn't it? Fends the player, well read by Swansea, and Swansea have been dangerous on the break. Yeah, they've had the reward through Alfie Selby, speculative kicks downfield, and uh, that's why they're ahead at the moment by three points. And come on, then have their own ideas. Yeah, weaving patterns in the back line, working out towards Ellis Jones. Oh, losing oh. it, and again, here it comes, Alfie Selby, oh. the bounce. He's under the posts, and that's the fourth. Well, you make your own luck, don't you? A mistake on the wide outside by Kamalin. And the man on the spot. What's it all about, Alfie? And that would probably sum up the contest so far. An error by Kamalin. Capitalised by Alfie Selby. Yeah, Selby just about getting boot to ball. And the bounce kind once again. An easy chip. There can't, there can't be many people who scored four tries on the Principality Stadium. Yeah, on their debut on the stadium. Oh, yeah, that's certain. Yeah. Poor technique by Ellis Jones. And great pace by Alfie Selby. Caro Jones trying the ankle tap. That's open a 10 point lead for Swansea. Command and 17, Swansea 27. Command and have replied already in the first half, and they'll need it to do all, all again in this second. And a loud blast of the whistle, good work of the breakdown. 
and 10 more meters bit of back chat good to see a young referee with the authority and Jones will look to place this one close to the corner flag and this time come on and can he'll afford to mess up the line out everybody needs to know his role as they walk slowly towards the the position of the line out Swansea try and sack the line fail to do so so Charlie Thomas the eight I haven't seen too much of Kamalan's back row yet but here they come Thomas Paddy loses the race on the floor good jackal by his opposite number Freddie Millwood yeah needed somebody to come uh, and help in there Thomas Parry support a bit slow in arriving good clearance kick by Jones a good tackle as well first up it must be said by Jack O'Malley Jones yeah needed some players to latch on immediately Good competition in the front of the line. Ball smuggled back on Swansea's side. Jones raises the kick again. Three yellow shirts up in support. Good steal in the air. Selby again. Winning the ball in the air for his team. Oh, good pressure defence. Oscar Howells flying up out the line. The Swansea do well to recycle. And Lucha turns to that trusted right foot and here he goes again Selby where is this going to bounce safely thankfully for Kamarden Kamarden back on their own try line seconds ago they were down within sight of that uh, Swansea try line which has uh, proven elusive go kick downfield Reaches the halfway line. Swansea look up. Where are the chinks in that defence? They look right, look left. A good crossfield kick by Jones. Slightly too far. But Carwin Jones wants to play his side at 10 points behind. He'll need to up the ante and up the tempo. Edwards allowing fly half. Karen Jones to get back on his feet. Somehow squirms back unexpectedly popped off to the tight head will ford there is space on this right side they've got to be careful keep it alive oh, a nice dummy show and go a kick over the top by his jones he's been quiet since his opening try needs to try and pin ashton crook in his 22. Oh, he's caught him done well where are the sporting green shirts come on then are they in numbers they are there will they go quick well that's better from come on then Reese Jones again showing good form. He's a box of tricks, isn't he? He certainly is. More than just pace to his armory. And Jones still has confidence in his forwards that they can uh, wrestle this ball clear. He didn't have any space at all to work in, but he knew he had forwards in, oppon in opposition. Well, that ball could have gone anywhere from the kick, couldn't it? But he controlled it well, kept it in field. Marden win the ball in the line out. This rolling ball is thundering towards the line. Four meters to go. That's the first stop. Can they continue the pressure, the momentum? They're over. They've scored. That's one for the forward eight. Ball won at the line out by uh, Thomas Parry. Thomas Axford, the scorer, the hooker. Well, there's life in this game yet, isn't there? Just when you think that Kamarthen are dead and buried, they bounce back. It was the line-out that did it for them. Yeah, once you get that front eight moving, it's so difficult to stop a rolling wall. And Axford in the middle there somewhere. Nearly held up. And Parry standing tall there with his back to the uh, opposition, pumping the legs, no doubt, driving backwards. Good work by Kamar then. Very good work by the Green Army. 
And this, again, is an important kick for Carwin Jones. He's looked a competent kicker. He has. But to bring it back within three strikes it well. Beautiful try, uh, conversion attempt of the penalty. It's a three-point game suddenly, not for the first time. It's this Kamarden, 24, Swansea Valley, 27. This could well go down to the wire. And come on, they know that they can't let the ball bounce towards the far side because Alfie Selby, the uh, ever-present poacher. Well played by the fly half. Using his footballing ability to control the ball. Jones. To Jones. This Jones fancies another dart. Well, tackled on this occasion. Yeah, didn't fool anyone there. Ah, turn the fall. Jones put too much on that one. Out on the full. Knocked on at the front of the line by Swansea. A rare mistake by the man in yellow. No messing again by Karen Jones. Sends that one downfield, wanting territory. Bobbling nicely towards that far touchline. Selby does well to keep it in field. Swansea under pressure, deep in their 22. Jones, the scrum half, passes out to Oliver Morgan, and that's a hat kick to absolutely anywhere. And here can Kamarden winning their sail, sensing there's an opportunity. Yeah, Reese Jones up from fullback, kept his eye on the ball. Panic stations for Swansea. A long pass out intercepted. A needed oh, long pass out. So here we go. Lacha. Didn't fancy. Trying to go all the, all the way himself. Yes. No clear release by six. Thomas Paddy. The knees had gone to ground. But that's the first real moment of panic we've seen in the Swansea ranks. Didn't go far, safely into touch. A long speculative pass, forcing play, and there were men in position for Kamar. Then they could have sent it through the hands. Can they go to the front and they make sure they win it this time? Swansea line out over as it's gone into the five meter channel. Kamada and green shirts need to be wary on the side of that rolling wall. They've done well to get out. Lucha on the angle, creating space for Griff Peters in the 12th channel. Yeah, Lucha was a decoy runner, tidying up there for Swansea. Oh, and a cheap penalty to give away Owen Edwards off his feet. And the referee wants a word, captain. I wonder will we going through Nicholas Jones's mind here. Is it too long for his left peg to go for posts? Maybe eyeing the corner. So Thomas Parry be relaying the message from the referee to uh, his colleagues. That's not a bad effort at all, is it? It's a great kick downfield. Exactly what the Swansea pack would have wanted. They'd rather play down here than they're in their own 22. And with a, a decent rolling ball, a line out to go. Could be the same again, but they've shortened the numbers to five. Pot of three in the middle. A loose head prop in the nine position. Yeah, the rolling ball on its way. Yeah, come on, they're not contesting the line out. Rather concentrating their efforts on uh, defence. Lucha does well to avoid the crossing in midfield, cutting back inside Oliver Morgan. Players on the left, if they can come quickly by Jones. Millwood. This is better by Swansea Valley. 
Ball moved quickly off the deck. Hillwood combining with Brody Davis. Yeah, they're calling for the ball out wide here, the Swansea players. But they're going up the guts up the middle. Four meters short. Another try surely will put Swansea in a commanding position. Millward, can he stretch? Not quite. He lays the ball back. The command and defence need to stay on side. They need to be squeaky clean. They're not, so back for the penalty. Yeah, high tackle. And there's an injury in there for a green shirt. Yeah, Selby was in there, lending a hand from right wing, looking for another try. Come on, they're very impressive in defence. They do push up quickly and make it difficult for Swansea Valley. Yeah, good carry by Millward. Bodies in the way, not rolling away. A pick on the far side. Not showing the number exactly there. Could have been number six on his back, Jack O'Malley Jones. Just losing control of the ball as he crosses the line. Yeah, under come, pressure. Come on and play a court under a pile of bodies. You need to make an effort to show to the referee that you are making an effort to move away uh, from the breakdown. Sometimes it's virtually impossible. Yeah, and Lull in play here. That's injury to the Gethin Davis. I'm sure they the team may be considering a change. Uh, time added on. Yes, yeah, seeing something. Somebody being stripped off and warming up. Could be Freddy and John. But this is the try. Has brought Kamal and back into this tie. Into this Morgan no. Griffiths plate final. And it's a great try. Forward the try. Although the hookers get the glory. <laughs> it's the pack there, the seven of the that's gone, gone through the, the hard graft and the shift of work. Are the defensive uh, skills being put to the test here? So let's see whether Swansea Valley can emulate that effort uh, from the valiant effort from Carmarthen earlier on, which has brought them back to within three points. I think it's Freddie Davis on the field for Carmarthen for the injured Gethin Davis. Middle ball. Harris Barfoot claims the ball in the air. <coughs> Commander repelled the first wave, but Swansea splintered off to the short side. A metre short. Here they come again. Commander and do well to hold them up. Great defence. Held up again. Brilliant work by the Commander forwards. They survive. They live to fight for another day. Yeah, the last man up was Lloyd Wilkins-Jones with 18 on his back. Getting his hands under the ball. Yeah, assisted by Owen Edwards. He's lucky. Uses the boots, chips it over. A death bounce. Kick. Where does it go? Well, luckily it's not Selby there in a the commanding sense. No, but he's lurking, don't you worry, on the far side. We're draining the tip on, finding Millward, the battering ram. And Jones caught at the base. Ball's there, slight panic. Tipped oh. on, intercepted. And there's the replacement, Freddie Davis. Gets the offload. That's Charlie Reynolds out towards the winger, Will Evans. He's caught, he's held, he's isolated, does well to keep hold of possession. Now Swansea were an attacker deep in their own defensive line. A uh, crucial few minutes here now. If Kamalin can move it quickly out wide, watch for the intercept. Oh, Selby was there, lurking. And Lacher does well. Wins the ball. And Swansea sigh in relief. They're not safe yet. Kamal and gets you overplaying. Again, should have sent the ball through the hands. Yeah, Swansea, I'm sure. Nicholas Jones will be looking to pump this downfield. Get the snake in place and get.
get the box downfield. Good long kick. Yeah, Reese Jones waits. It is space. Disjointed. Swansea defence fired out into the hands of Charlie Reynolds in the scrum cup. Taken on by Thomas Parry. Swansea Captain. starting to look tired in defence. There's some holes in that yellow line. Johan Thomas can't get the ball away. First time, this time perhaps. Good Owen tackle. Edwards. Lucher in there again using O'Malley Jones as a shield. Oh, the referee's arm is out for advantage, a penalty being played. Yeah, Parry playing a captain's role here. Driven on again, the man with no number. So he surely has the name. The pass out to Will Evans, Evans. Oh, he's nearly there, has he crossed? High tackle back towards the penalty. I wonder if Kamada would rather the penalty in front of the post than the right-hand side. Three points would bring the game level on the scoreboard. Well, they've got every confidence in their forwards. They've uh, rolled the ball over once. Let's have a look at what's happening here. How well, we've got to consider the number of tries scored when, haven't we? If uh, it's level on the scoreboard, 27 all, for instance, they'll go down to try scores. And at the moment, Swansea Valley are ahead on the try count. So you're counting fingers at the moment. Five or six. <laughs> <laughs> what are the possibilities? Yeah, that is a high tackle. I wonder if a TMO was involved again, could that have been more than just a, a penalty? But now then, Kamarden, they've been here before in this half. They'll be looking to replicate that try scored earlier on by Thomas Axford. Well, they executed that line out to a tee, didn't they? Thomas Parry with ball in hand. The captain. Oh, they're going to run it. Parry himself, the captain, taking the responsibility. Meter short. The weight is there. Has the ball been touched down? Has it been grounded? Oh, lost forward. Now then, was that the right decision? Oh, well, in hindsight, it's uh, not. It's I think maybe the, the kick to the corner would have done better. What? They're coming back. Five meter scrum, knocked on. And Boys, come in, boys, come on. Come, come on, then they brought on replacements in that forward eight, Glyn Bevan on the tight head. And they'll try and push and shove Swansea off the ball here. The Swansea pack is creaking, Jones caught at the base. The yellow shirts need to come round quickly to give him some assistance. Parry Swansea fighting in, for their lives yeah. and the penalties come up Kamada's way. It was Parry again, the captain. Get his hands on the ball. Well then, this time, what will he do? Will they go for the line out? Or is it the same pre-planned move? Parry turns. He's shown good strength so far. Oh, and he's again. stripped of the ball short. The support players weren't close enough and a swarm of Yellow and green, Swansea Valley bees were all over him. Well, the opportunities were there for Carmarthen. I think the uh, the lineup would have been a better option there. Well, having scored one uh, try die from a similar position and closer uh, to the line this time, you'd have put money on them going for another line out. Ah, oh, well played, Kamar then. 
with one possession back on the outskirts of the 22. It's a three-point game, five minutes less to go. This is a cup final, or a plate final to be exact. <laughs> Every final is a cup final, isn't it? You don't often get chances to play here on the uh, top stage, the big stage. Who will leave with the bragging rights and the silverware? Kamarden or Swansea, three points the difference. The next score essentially wins. Great one-handed take by Parry. And now they go to the rolling wall. I think 25 metres is a little bit optimistic, but they've swallowed up five. Is it offside in midfield? A great run around, pre-prepared move, but it's dragged forward on the deck. And Kamarden are doing everything right. But the execution is lacking. And the blowing chances left, right and centre here, aren't they? Well, they've had plenty of chances and they just haven't been able to put the ball over the whitewash. And here come the yellow cavalry. Four changes in the pack. So one, two, three and five off uh, for the Swansea Valley. But able deputies have come on for what is going to be a crucial scrum in they've, midfield. They've got three minutes to empty the tank and secure the plate for Swansea Valley. Jones fighting the ball for the base. Was there a slight knock on it in there? Referee doesn't see it. Lucha does well. It looks to steady the ship. Yeah, he's been one of the anchor men for Swansea. Again, the yellow pack of eight around the ball allows Jones to lift the kick. The chase is coming, well taken by Carwin Jones. Good technique in the air. Callan Goman. And I'm sure they'll be shouting Goman as well. And this time the ball has to stick. It has to go out. Jones. That's better handling. Charlie Reynolds with the headgear. The tension is thick in the air here in the Principality. Skies are darkening, as are the command and hopes, unless they... Oh. And they have to go quickly, and they do. You want Thomas. Yeah, runs away from his supporting players. Into the 22, though. Ball comes well held, is it? Yes. Unbelievable hands by Jones. They can't afford the mistake now, Kamarden. Karen Jones sidestepping. The green shirts are all to the right. Gets back inside there as well. How many Karen Jones are there on this field? Keeping up with the Joneses, that is the problem. Swansea holding their defensive shape. They change direction to the left. Oh! Oh, again, okay, the groans around the ground and ourselves. The yeah. replacement prop, I believe, Morgan Bethel. Didn't expect that ball from the switch play. It was a, an indication from Charlie Reynolds, I think. No, no, go the other way. And the replacement, uh, Kamalin forward, not expecting the ball to come his way. Placements for Kamar then. The final roll of the dice. Have they got a trump card in there? We'll be looking to steal this against the head. It's gone down. Still yellow ball. Yeah, it's Sonji Valley in no hurry to go down to this scrum. And the clock is uh, the Kamalan school's worst enemy at the moment. Just the three points. But they've had the chances, they blew those chances. As uh, Di Williams intimated earlier on, should have gone for the corner. Rather than uh, pick and go. He's there, passed is, out towards. He knew exactly what was going to go, what was going to happen with uh, Lecha, with ball in hand. Please, Jones looks left. There is space there. As the yellow shirts rush up, Karen Jones again, weaving his way, creating space, it's gone backwards, play goes on. 
Still an opportunity out on this right flank. Getting back inside, Kamadan. Swansea have to defend for their lives. And they do. They win the ball on the floor in the jackal. Swansea Valley were lucky then. They'd lost their shape completely when Kamadan had the ball. And if it had gone to hand, I think they could have been in a lot of problems. Yeah, if that first pass had gone to hand, then I'm sure a, scry a, a try was screaming aloud. Referee looking at his watch. A lot of changes now in both sides. They they need to keep their sheep their shape though. A minute remaining. Sixty seconds to make yourself a hero. And Kamarden win the tap down, but it comes back on a Swansea side. Are Swansea going to try and play a bit of rugby for 60 seconds, or are they going to well, pump took it this up the downfield? Jumper. Yeah, took it up the jumper for the remaining 40, 45 seconds or so. It was knocked on in the line-out. Fair decision by the referee. Swansea Valley were under a lot of pressure in that last scrum. I think Carmarthen are going to put this pressure on again in this one and well, make it uh, very difficult for Jones. They have to. No alternative now for the Greens of Carmarthen. Swansea be happy that this scrum set is swallowing up a good 30 seconds or so. Could even be last play by the time it comes out to the feet of Freddie Millwood at eight. Millwood to Jones. Has a dart. Oh, is he going to go for a fanciful try to crown a magnificent individual performance? Morgan, it's on it's, if they move it. It's on the way to Selby, the Selby train. Oh, they knew where the danger man was. Now come on and have to win the ball. Jones is off down the dark side. Well, it would Great be pretty good if, if Jones had the final word. It has to be, surely. And it's a try. Swansea Valley has scored in a dying second. Swansea Valley. Superb play by uh, Nick Chris Jones. And a try scorer, Jack O'Malley Jones. And great play. Lovely play by the scrum half. The dummy, the step, the pass. Freeze his back line. And for a second time, Jones in there. Does well to keep the ball alive. Command them for a second, thought they'd repel the attack. And then Jack O'Malley Jones crosses for the winning score. Oh, it's been a keenly fought contest, hasn't it? Three points the difference on two occasions, and Command then will rue those decisions not to go for the corner when they had the opportunity. It's the captain himself. With the final word. Oh, great kick. Great strike. Oh, yes. And it's there. And that's, well, that's the way to nail it. A stunning kick to finish. A fabulous performance by Nicholas Jones. And a final whistle has been blown. And Swansea Valley with a sucker punch score at the end. And the final score in this Morgan Griffiths plate final. Kamarden at 24, Swansea 34. Well, an exciting contest. It could have gone either way, but uh, you've got to give it to the man on the right wing, Alfie Selby. You make your own luck in this game at times. Good chasing by him, four tries to his credit. But it was fitting that it was the captain, Nick Frisk Jones, who had the final word. That Maisie run and he uh, took out four Carmarthen defenders. And what a strike that was uh, to round it off the icing on the cake, that conversion at the death. Yeah, some star performances in that Swansea side. As you mentioned, where Nicholas Frisk Jones, the captain, instrumental with his kicking off the left peg. Yes, in Lucha as well. A spine of that back line, Alfie Selby. A hat trick in 20 minutes, four tries to his name. But what a way to finish. It could have so easily gone to Kamarzin, though. 
But that, that final minute or two with Nick Chris Jones were quite phenomenal. And also, Swansea and Jones could have easily have caught time in a game and just chipped it over to call the end of the contest. But by playing on, showing a bit of adventure, they've scored the best try of the lot, considering four of the tries came from kick chases. <laughs> And this is the icing on the cake. What a conversion. Any international playing on this arena would be proud of that conversion from the right-hand side. Yeah, I'm sure that his dad will be uh, cheering from the grandstand on the far side somewhere. In the middle chair. Played the game played in the fine spirit. Heads bowed perhaps in the Kamarthan ranks, but uh, congratulations all round for the Swansea Valley players, and they will come to collect the uh, the Morgan Griffiths trophy in a few minutes' time after the officials have had their medals and the runners up as well. But it was a a keenly fought contest, wasn't it? Uh, Die. It could have gone either way, chances on both sides, but it was the Swansea Valley schools who, uh, who kept their heads, really. Absolutely win. It, it could have gone either way, and it's such a cliche, but Carmarthen had Swansea Valley under the caution those last five or six minutes. If they'd opted to take the kick to touch, possibly, it could have been a totally different outcome, but to be fair, Swansea Valley, in the closing seconds, that lovely break by Nick Press jones and uh, it, it really was a superb game. Yeah, Kamal had two clear chances, didn't they? To, to go for the corner, they scored a try from uh, a driving ball, brought on the replacement forwards, who did make a difference at scrum time, certainly. And, uh, well... well... Absolutely, when the, the, the uh, Swansea Valley forwards were up against it uh, once the substitutions were made, and uh, a driving, driving line-out could have been the, the finale. Certainly good, and what can you say? What do you say as a coach? Keep your chins up. <laughs> they will have enjoyed themselves anyhow. Uh, it's a rare opportunity, isn't it, uh, for players to grace the uh, Principality Stadium. And up comes uh, Owen Lewis to take uh, his medal from Nick Murphy. Yeah, they would be disappointed back in the change room for uh, half an hour or so, but uh, they look back and think about the time they got onto this fantastic stadium. Yeah, it could be a sleepless night for the uh, Carmarthen players, rowing and uh, thinking on uh, what might have been. But it wasn't to be their day, despite the uh, the early score there from Rhys Jones, the fullback, a well-taken try. But then some uh, deft kicking from uh, Yastin Lucha, the uh, Swansea Valley centre, spotting gaps behind the Carmarthen defence and Alfie Selby on the right wing needed no second invitation. Well, he'll, he'll uh, never forget his uh, debut on the stadium. Well, he'd sleep well tonight. <laughs> well, he might. That's the runners-up medals uh, being uh, awarded by Nick Murphy. Yeah, it's an impressive outside half of uh, Carmarthen, Carwin Legger-Jones, the captain. Thomas Parry. So the Morgan Griffiths Trophy. And uh, it's uh, the chairman of the West Coast Rugby Union, Mr. Gwynvo Davis, presenting the winners' medals. Some solid citizens in that uh, Swansea Valley lineup. I think it was the fleet of foot that carried the day. Schools represented Estalvera, Meister Derwin, Kumtawe. The 
three schools, the West Walians, uh, Dufferin Tarb, Queen Elizabeth High School and uh, Bromerthin. Centres of excellence. And the backbone of the Swansea Valley team coming from Esther Levera. As is their captain, Nicholas Frisk-Jones. Did what needed to be done. Sent the passes out. Nothing flash until that final moment when he split the uh, Carmarthen defences for sending the pass out wide. And sealed so it with that magnificently taken conversion. Can we lip read, die? <laughs> it's... Uh... Nick Chris Jones, who takes the Morgan Griffiths trophy this year. I spoke to the uh, president, uh, Mr. Gwynbo Davis, who's having a word with him, because uh, uh, Gwynbo's from the Swansea Valley himself. So the intermediate uh, group, well Schools Rugby Union, Morgan Griffiths trophy claimed by the Swansea Valley schools. Lifting the trophy high into the sky. Led by Nicholas Frisk Jones. Congratulations to them. Thirty-four points to twenty-four. The final score. Let's reflect on the highlights. And there were quite a few.
once. Congratulations to Ponzi Valley side who've taken out the Morgan Griffiths Trophy in one more game to come. It's the climax then of the uh, Dua Shield competition, which will be uh, fought out between Pontypridd and Swansea, and that comes up at 6:30.
Whether you're playing in the shadows of rugby's greatest fortress or in Wales' wild interior. Thomas Williams will score for Wales. You're part of our team. Your team. the corner they come through snow so the jasmine choice gets there the custodian of this jersey represents everyone else who wears it from the verdant valleys of the south to the craggy mountains of the north a try scored here began way back there. Hannah Jones seals this victory for Wales. Because every player's journey starts at a rugby club somewhere. Without you, we would never get to witness this. This jersey is your jersey. This game is your game. It's where we all, through the chosen few, become one. Umline Cymru. been an initiative fit bed fun run by the WIU and currently today we're working uh, here within the Dragons region with all the disability children from around our region it's lovely to see them all the day here I was very excited for today to meet up with uh, the trainers the coaches uh, all my all my friends from normal rugby training just to have a day out as a mother, to see Regan playing with other children today is just a godsend. Like, without the inclusion sport, Regan wouldn't have anything. As where we live, we haven't got any um, football teams, rugby teams that will take on children with additional needs. So this is very, very important. Ready? Come on, sweetheart. Go on, let you go. Oh, 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 that's it. Wow. You are so strong. My son is Leo, he's nine years old and he's got Down syndrome. You need groups like this that can have children who've got all different abilities but with a disability um, and they can just they can be blossoming that ability then, you know, in that sport. It is respite for myself as well because I can send him here and then he just has fun with, with meeting new friends and building his confidence. Rugby is a game for everybody and it should be a game for everybody um, and I think now the, the Union and the Dragons and, and the other regions alike are really focusing on that inclusion, on, on those inclusion strategies to make sure that everything's accessible no matter what disability you have. So we like to think that these sort of things are the, are the kickstart for those children then to move forward and enjoy rugby.
The new changing facilities are fantastic. Brings a real brightness for our, for our walk-in values. We ask the players just to concentrate on the rugby element side of things and close working group have worked hard to let the players do that and the changing rooms are certainly one, of the, one part of that is part of their toolkit. Well this changing room for example, um, the plasterboard was falling off the ceiling, um, there was a lot of damp and mould in here. We've got under sixes to youth and two senior teams running so we need all the changing rooms running all the time. So the facilities grant, we wouldn't have been able to do it without the WRU helping us so it's been a really big help for us. It took between six and seven weeks in total, but we did have a little bit of a break in the middle because we had such hot weather and um, putting the ventilation system in the attic was a bit of a, an arduous task, so they had to pull off for a week. But yeah, so it was really quick, yeah, really happy with the work and the, the contractors. It means a lot. As a club and a community, we've been on a journey for about seven, eight years, uh, really incorporating bleed black and amber as, uh, as a club motto, uh, and that does uh, transpire for, from many juniors up to seniors and back again. We couldn't have done it without the WRU backing because of the, the cost of the changing rooms to be done. We just wouldn't have been able to with the funds that we've got. We've been happy with the last 125 years and hopefully with the WRU backing we can get through the next 125 years plus. groups like this that can have children who've got all different abilities and they can just blossom in that ability. A lot of kids growing up like me are in the same position as me. My take on rugby because they've seen someone that might look like them or from the same area as them doing that. We can use rugby as a vehicle to empower people to see that they can actually do much more, then, then it, it, it's worth its weight in gold. Pinaich bod chi'n chwarae yng nghysgodion y gair gydarnaf y mid rygbi. Neu mas yng ngwyll cefn gwlad Cymru. Thomas Williams will score for Wales. Rhi chi'n rhan o'n tîm ni, eich tîm chi. the corner they come through Snowsell and Jasmine Joyce gets there. My Ceidwad y Crys hwn yn cynrychioli pawb arall sy'n ei wisgo. Bron a chyrraedd, un hyrddiad arall a dyna'r fydd i goliad. Ah, Josh Abrams yn ei dalu! Ah, yn ei O gymoedd godidog y de i fynyddoedd mawreddog y gogledd. Mae cais sy'n cael ei sgorio fan hyn wedi dechrau'r holl ffordd yn ôl fan yn. Hannah Jones seals this victory for Wales! Gan bod taith pob chwaraeor yn dechrau mewn clwb rygbi yn rhywlech. Dysty hyn. Eich crys chi yw'r crys yma. Eich gêm chi yw'r gêm yma.
Dyma bler yn i gyd trwy'r ychydig a ddewiswyd yn dod yn un. Ymlaen Cymru. Well, welcome back to the Principality Stadium here, and that's a fine shield shown there to you on uh, camera. It's the Dewar Shield, and it looks spunking new, doesn't it? Well, there's a backstory to that, which we'll catch up with uh, uh, before too very long. But all I can say is that uh, it, you may well recall, you may well have seen it uh, feature on the uh, the repair shop uh, not so long ago. Uh, but it's been suitably repaired specifically for this uh, year's tournament and uh, the competition today reaches its climax with the competition for the duo, duo shield between uh, Pontypri the schools and Swansea schools and joining me here is Di Williams. Di, this trophy, this shield, uh, shield of dreams as they call it, uh, <laughs> it goes back a few years and may well be one of the oldest uh, trophies in his in rugby history. Yes, well, no, I, was no, uh, I was informed today, uh, reliably informed, that it's the second oldest, uh, rug uh, third oldest rugby trophy in the world, with only the Curry Cup and the Army and Navy Cup being older. And uh, as you correctly said, it is the oldest schoolboy trophy in the world. And much coveted, really. It's uh, the Dewar Shield competition. Well, it's been the launching pad for many, many a star player in the red shirt. And I'm just wondering uh, who from the present crop of uh, schoolboy players of Pontypridd and Swansea will progress uh, back here to the Principality Stadium in the not too distant future. Let's have a look then at the Pontypridd, the backs lineup first of all. Reese Wyatt uh, is at 15, Harry Kinsey and Sam Price on either side. Owen Lewis and Ewan Leishon in midfield, Gethin Downs and Gethin Jenkins at half back. In the forwards, Wojciech Kudelka, Lewis Ricks, captains from Hooker, Alfie Beezers on the tight head. Luca White and Ryan Jones in the boiler house, Sam Morris and Alfie Pigodic, either side of number eight, Alfie John. That's the starting lineup for Ponty. Dylan Jones, Caleb Mountjoy, Ethan Hardwich, Samson Philpott, George Coombs, Josh Richards, Jason Humphreys, and Isaac Burke will surely be desperate uh, to get onto the field at some stage and may well make an impact. To Swansea then, it's uh, Bailey Porter at fullback, Ethan Balch and uh, Evan Jones on the wings, Jack Wilcox, captains the Swansea side from centre alongside Will Moore, Jake Davis at outside half and a late re uh, replacement in the starting lineup sees Johnny Davis start uh, ahead of Theo Rogers, who's uh, suffered a slight injury in the warm-up. For the forwards, it's Isaac Thomas and Josh Drew by the side of Ocean Oliver, Luke Fender and Owen Martin, the tall timber at lock forward. Noah Williams uh, will lock the scrum and Sam Morgan and Ross Rossi, the flyers on either side. The subs, Sam Corsi, Dylan Allett, Ryan Blythe, Luke McCauley, Josh Gallivan, Theo Rogers, the scrum half, as I've already mentioned, Evan Goodwin and Jake Russell. And completing the lineup, Matthew Davis and Oscar Jones. So the scene is set late in the day here as we reflect again or bask in the glory perhaps of the Dewar Shield uh, presented by Sir Thomas Dewar, philanthropist and uh, MP for Edinburgh back in the day it was presented uh, in 1904 initially and the first winners were the, the Newport schools and what's interesting is that when the, the Dewar Shield was offered to the uh, rugby union as it was then there was a, a huge discussion amongst the uh, representation from uh, Cardiff from Newport from Swansea and Swansea uh, rejected the offer on the basis that it was, uh, it was associated with the Dewar family <laughs> yeah. the Dewar whiskey family right. and that it alcohol should not be associated uh, with the game of rugby just a little bit of history and we can catch up with uh, how the uh, Dewar shield was refurbished Lynn Howell, it was, the uh, uh, Welsh uh, Schools of Union uh, secretary of the intermediate group, who uh, took umbrage, I think, when I said it could do uh, with a facelift uh, this time last year. And he brought it upon himself. He had a, a light bulb moment, I think, and he contacted the repair shop and uh, told them the story. And they said, come on, bring it along. Let's see what we can do. So they stripped, they stripped the Dewar Shield 
the mahogany duo shield back to the, to its base and uh, inserted a little piece of mahogany to uh, replace the crack in the shield so it's it's safe to lift now which it wasn't possibly uh, 12 months ago that's the duo shield and here come the teams want breathe and swansea <laughs> Want to breathe in their black and white strip and Swansea in the familiar white strip. It's been a, a marvellous season for the Swansea schools and they are looking to round it off by clinching the uh, the Dewar Shield here. Pontefreeze, well, they're looking for a treble. The Pontefreeze schools rugby union have had a fantastic tournament here. They won the uh, uh, the 10s tournament, the primary school age group, uh, uh, won by Ponteclean Primary. That was a cracking match. And uh, earlier today, well... Uh, Ponapri schools uh, came back again and uh, clinched a, a trophy earlier on in the uh, DC Thomas uh, Championship. So they're looking, they're on a hat trick here, Dyke. Absolutely, yes. And uh, Swansea, Swansea got here courtesy of uh, winning their uh, semi final in Sardis Road, as it was. Um, uh, they beat Cardiff um, uh, 27 points to 21. And in the other semi final, Ponapri beat Bridgend 19, 12, 19 points to 12. And at the Cardiff Arms Park. Oliver Hughes is cutting the whistle in this match, assisted by Richard Waggett and Colin Price. Ponapri then to kick off for the Dewar Shield, the final match on the Wednesday here at the Principality Stadium. It's overcast above, but I can uh, tell you that we're looking for uh, some shining light appearances uh, from the. Uh, uh, performances rather from the uh, Swansea and Pontefree players. First chance then goes the way of Swansea, lost forward. A very clever little chip kick here in midfield. Nicely gathered, but uh, unfortunately knocked on. So the first scrum of the game. Nice little chip into uh, the space behind the Ponty defence. seen the winning teams today steal a march early on we saw the Sonji Valley uh, school as well scored three tries uh, to their wing three-quarter in uh, 20 minutes and that uh, virtually sealed uh, the match for them although Carmarthen schools came back at them and came within three points at one stage the Swansea on the attack on their own 10 meter line in go the forwards Making sure the ball is available cleanly for Johnny Davis, a, a late starter for Swansea. Theo Rogers may well have tweaked a muscle in the uh, in the warm-up, but he takes his place on the bench. Davis then, nice the high kick, a testing kick, well covered, well taken by Harry Kinsey. Another charge down into touch. Got a point to breathe line out. Some tall timber in this uh, Swansea lineup, and they reduce the numbers to uh, match the numbers in the lineup from Ponty. A little bit of confusion. To the back it goes. The players crowding around the uh, the ball winner, <laughs> dumped unceremoniously on his backside as the Ponty scrum half. The penalty goes against Swansea for not releasing. So for territory, that's a useful kick. Takes play into the Swansea 22 for the first time. Discussion taking place between the forwards on the hoof, so to speak. You can't form a little subcommittee these days. That's considered to be time wasting. Claim to the back of the line out. The forwards crowd around and get that rolling ball going towards the Swansea try line. The referee's arm is outstretched. They're offside. Still, they're making progress towards that uh, Swansea try line. So, in from the side is what is penalised. 
And they go for the three points here, I wonder. And yeah, we've seen uh, plenty of examples this week of players uh, forfeiting the opportunity to go for the three points and paying the penalty. Absolutely. Yeah, does the uh, tight head prop forward of uh, Pondepreeth penalise Alfie Beza? That's Swansea, rather. Josh Drew. Having detached himself and uh, fancying his chances of having another go, but uh, referee Hughes would not, not have any of that. <coughs> so it's down to Gethin Jenkins. Pontypridd outside half to post the first points of this match and take his side into a three point lead early on. Ponte Pree is off to a, a good start, a confident and a, a competent start as well. A high kick, well taken. Scooped up by getting downs the Ponte Pree, the scrum half. They've, they've got numbers here. Oh. They, yeah, they did have. Well, they were well spread out. Luca White scragging his man, but uh, <coughs> yet another penalty against Swansea. Yeah, indiscipline's costing them territory at this moment in time. Jenkins kicks long. Will he find touch? Not quite. Fielded by uh, Jake Davis at outside half. And sends a kick back into... The Ponteprid half. Yeah. Temperatures have dropped somewhat in the last hour or two. Fingers and hands a little bit cold, perhaps. Swansea throwing up a player, but not to be thwarted as Pondepreeth once again get the drive going. Lewis Ricks, the captain, ball tucked under his arm. And as the cavalry arrives, another five metres gained. The ball worked back through the hands, slowly but surely. Ten metres gained and a midfield position. It's a knee pass straightening up the uh, the back line. It's on its way again, a little show. Swansea's defence was a fast thing win. Yeah, Swansea defending a little narrow at the moment, and I think uh, Evan Jones on the wing wearing 11 for Swansea is called for reinforcements, but the ball goes or travels the other way. And the upshot of all that is a, a scrum down, Swansea ball. Isaac Thomas, Ocean Oliver and Josh Drew in the front row for Swansea up against Wojciech Kudelka, Lewis Ricks and Alfie Beza wearing 24 that's uh, the open side flank forward Alfie Pregodic from San Harry oh that was very close to an interception there Win. yeah nudge forward The uh, Pontypridd left wing dropped back then at that scrum, um, offsetting the chance of a kick for Swansea to gain any territory in the uh, Pontypridd half. The shove comes through from the Ponty eight. Ball not going anywhere. Let's have another go. Yeah, 
the earlier games today in the uh, DC Thomas there was no time to draw breath but more measured approach from the uh, the senior players uh, in the Dewar Shield out on the full little put that's little a costly too, mistake yes uh, little too leaden footed on that occasion brings Pondapree the right back just inside the uh, Swansea half Jake Davis, Jake the peg. That's what is meant to go. It's gone to the back a few times uh, so far. They probably look to drive it again because they've had a lot of success from that. They certainly have. And here they go. Five metres and more. Sam Morris at six gets the ball away. Good work, Prigodic. Referees around the corner, oh, lovely play here from Pontepreet, Owen Lewis. Yeah, they're coming back for a penalty. Yeah, the warning. Clear enough to see. Luke Fender, I think, is the man penalised. And another chance then to uh, put the ball into the corner. Swansea know what's coming here, Dai. Absolutely. It's going to be another driving uh, line out, I think. And Swansea going to do well to keep him out, I think. So Pontepreeve in five, six metres, and uh, referee uh, Oliver Hughes has uh, had a quick word, perhaps, and an injury to the uh, Swansea scrum half. Johnny Davis, well, he wasn't meant to start, so there could be problems here for Swansea if. Uh, the injury suffered by Theo Rogers in the warm-up uh, is of such a nature that won't allow him to come on. Oh, it's a little bit of blood. No harm in that. Breathing might be a little difficult. In the meantime, it's uh, Wojciech Kudelka winning one. I mean, a quiet word with his uh, fellow forwards. And there's the captain, Lewis Ricks. The hooker from uh, Bryn Cullenog School. Seen the girls of Bryn Cullenog uh, represented uh, yesterday here at the uh, Principality Stadium and. Uh, Giving a good account of themselves. Conti getting the drive on five meters out, but Swansea have thwarted the initial approach. It's left for Prigodic in midfield. Options left and right here now for Pontepreeth. They come back on the narrow side. The step held up, and the penalty too high for the liking of uh, referee Hughes. Scragged around the neck. Still waiting for advantage. The scrum half wants one or two more bodies, perhaps. Yeah, the high tackle is what's uh, penalised. So will they be tempted to go for the the corner, or will they take a potentially valuable three-pointer? I think they fancy their chances with another driving mall here, Win. Well, it's a good ploy. It's a ploy that's worked for them so far. They've gained valuable territory, which uh, has given them this attacking position. So Jenkins just pokes it into touch. You've got to wonder how long uh, Swansea can absorb all this pressure, Irwin. Yeah, it's been relentless so far, hasn't it? And they're going to answer to the uh, the power of the forward unit of Pontepreeth once they get uh, into that position, driving forward. With a loud blast on the whistle there from referee. And Swansea have got to put in, and uh, I bet they'd be hoping they can clear the line. Let's see. Helm Swansea cope here, it's their ball. Yeah, 
Ponti, they didn't quite get the bodies in the right position. So an opportunity missed, and the score remains at uh, Ponti 3, Swansea 0. Slow ball coming back, but uh, the scrum half as well, as indeed does the outside half clearing his lines, and it's safely into touch midway between the 22 and the 10 metre line. Good exit there from Swansea. Yeah, so you, uh, they get to breathe again. So again, the question is asked by uh, Wojciech Kudelka. What shall I tell my hooker? What shall I tell my captain? To the back. Resisting the temptation to uh, press forward amongst the forwards. Ball, has it been spilt forward, knocked forward? Advantage being played. And a good clearance kick into the wide open spaces. Still rolling away towards the uh, the halfway line. Gethin Jenkins is back there, chased down though by Evan Jones, the Swansea left oh. winger. Oh. Jake if, Davis. If that had gone to hand, uh, they could have counter-attacked from there. They couldn't go. They tried to put foot on ball, football style. Not quite succeeding. Wyatt at full back for a punt to breathe. That's better. Good work there by the uh, the tight head, Josh Drew. One of the few Bishopston uh, players in the Swansea uh, setup. No less than uh, five and four of them in the uh, the forward unit. for the likes of Luke Fender and Wayne Martin it's a Fender taking it up and now it's uh, with Noah Williams quick ball that's what Swansea wanted a kick behind the Ponty defense pegging them back that was an excellent kick and the chase from Ethan Bosch was good and Swansea will get the line out and this is their best attacking position so far weathered the storm uh, down in their own 22 in a succession of pick and drew goes and drives from Pontypris. It looked as if it was going to bounce into touch quite harmlessly, but then sort of bounced back and it could have been anybody's ball. A well-placed kick by uh, Jake Davis, stabbed at it and it just sat up. Oh, here comes deal. the prop forward, here comes Swansea, Josh Drew. Dug out by uh, Johnny Davis and uh, Asking the forwards to take it up again through Owen Martin, this time the number five. Quick look from Ross Rossi. See what was on. It's still there for Drew. Driving hard and low. Good, powerful drive, pumping the legs. There is the Pont de Prix, the try line in the background. The number eight was their crossing. No, says the referee. Play on, almost to the try line. I can see the ball, he says. So we'll go back. So no advantage to Swansea. So they'll get the put in at the scrum. Good defensive effort there from Pontypridd. They did well to hold him up there, win. Clearly, they've been uh, practicing that situation, that defensive position. Yeah, support your bodies, drive straight. Collapses of two front rowers. So 
So for the third time of asking, the forwards go down. Quick ball, that's what Swansea want. Got a great drive here from Bon to breathe. Yeah. Excellent work. Unfortunately, the Swansea uh, scrum broke up a bit. I think Noah Reese was looking for to to pick up and drive uh, the ball towards the uh, Ponty line, but uh, perhaps the the weight wasn't quite there. So a chance for Reese Wyatt to clear his lines. Doesn't quite find touch. Or oh, does he? A foot in touch, perhaps. So look again at that scrum die. Yeah, and Noah goes to look for the ball, but he just eludes him. Yeah, the scrum the forwards are coming back on top of him, and uh, he just released his bind, didn't he? Trying to get his hands on the ball, didn't quite manage it. Oh, unlucky. So just a one score, a three pointer. In what could be a very close match. So Swansea returned the compliment. It's getting that initial nudge on, isn't it? So Lewis Ricks putting the brakes on, foot forward. Early engagement. Penalised on that occasion, a little indiscipline again. So two successive penalties and uh, Ponapreeth have an opportunity to take play back into the Swansea 22. And that's the uh, the Hail Mary as they call it. Who's going to be brave enough? Good chasing by Ponapreeth as a block forward. Luke White. Another penalty goes the way of Ponty. Advantage being played by the referee. And yeah, they'll come back. Three penalties and Ponty have moved from their own try line to within sight of the Swansea try line. I think this is going to go in the corner. That's a good guess, I think. An educated <laughs> guess. An educated <laughs> guess, yes. Uh, it's uh, Yuan Leishon who does the business. And we know what's coming next. Yeah, and Swansea know it too. Excellent chasing by Luca White. Good hands from the lock forward. It really had snow on it, that, that kick. It certainly did. It hung in the air for an inordinate length of time. Well, that's what the Swansea player will tell you. A lot of toing and froing in that uh, Ponty line out. Now then, it's got to stay in the hands. Prigodic turns, lays it back. There's a gap wide out on the right. Oh, quick hands. The wing is completely unmarked. Yeah, the pass needed to come. And an air of inevitability wasn't there. Yeah, all it needed there was uh, quick hands and the winger was in. So another opportunity goes begging. And Swansea breathe again. And clear their lines up to and just beyond their 22. One more pass would have done it. Not straight. Shouts of not straight from the fullback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So it's yet another scrum. And Swansea don't really want too many of those, do they? moving forward taking it upon himself that's uh, Leishon I think it was it's a nice pass a oh, little too hard perhaps the opportunities are there Honda Preeth will be scratching their heads they've uh had loads of possession and loads of position on the field, but they're not turning the, the pressure into points at the moment. Yeah, hard pass and it's difficult to take around your around your year olds. Ball whipped out into the hands of the the outside half and on oh, the nice. angle. Numbers. Oh, this looks promising. Jack Wilcox, the uh, Swansea captain. Takes play into the Ponty half. Now then what's happening here? Where's the support? The forwards arrive in numbers. And Martin just about manages to lay the ball back. Christian Oliver's been a busy bee, hasn't he? The Swansea hooker. Uh, players guilty of crossing. Miscommunication. It was a lovely breakout uh, from the Swansea 22, and you've got to wonder if the ball should have gone out instead of coming back in. Yeah, well worked bringing uh, Jack Wilcox in on the angle. So my mistake, I think, may well have been Evan Jones, actually, the, the wing three quarter. Where did he come from? Comes there in on a lovely angle. If the if they just kept the ball going out. So some three minutes remaining of this uh, first half, which promised uh, so much at the outset, but it's been a catalogue of errors by both sides. Most of the errors have been committed by uh, Swansea. So an opportunity for Leishan again to put this one into the corner, perhaps. No, he leaves it. Let's have a scrum. Interesting decision, that. Well, it ties in the, uh, the Swansea forwards, so there should be uh, some gaps somewhere. Getting Downs has a quick look over his shoulder, his right shoulder, that is. Looming presence of Johnny Davis, the Swansea scrum half. It's interesting to see Sam Price came off his wing. He's gone back now onto the wing. Grigoric. In goes Oliver to try and get his mitts on the ball. Oh. So tight, nerves are getting <laughs> getting the better of them, I think. So much uh, at stake, when, isn't it, Dyke? Yeah. It hasn't been the free-flowing game that the previous two games have been. Well, they've had to wait all day, haven't they, uh, for this opportunity. Late kick-off. Gareth Wyatt in the background there, pontificating. Geraint Lewis in front of him, the former Pontypridd and Wales uh, flank forward. So Owen Lewis, or Rhys Wyatt rather, uh, Gareth Wyatt's son <laughs> at fullback. Where else? Owen Lewis at centre. 
son of Geraint Lewis. Oh, they gave sterling service to Pondipreeth in their time, didn't they? Uh, Gareth Wyatt and uh, Geraint Lewis. It's a wrist injury is being attended to. There'll be some time added on at the end of this uh, first half. Just uh, a solitary score from Gethin Jenkins. The uh, Ponty outside half receiving treatment. What is it? Is it Jenkins? No, Jenkins is on his feet in the background. Johan Leishan was the, uh, the injured party. Good shove again from uh, Ponty. This gap well spotted and uh, Watching Reese Wyatt to come for that one, the tight angle just about manages to get the ball away. Decent footballing skills. From Reese Wyatt, a difficult ball to gather. That could so easily have been uh, knocked forward. So approaching the uh, half time whistle, Oliver. Play on, says the referee. Josh Drew goes in search of a Swansea try, supported by Owen Martin. Cool heads needed here. Referee on the spot, giving a, a watchful eye. Drew again, the tight head prop forward, driving for the Pontypridd try line. Everybody wants to score here. Will the arm be raised? Yes, it will. I think that's against the flow, really. It's uh, Noah Williams, number eight for Swansea, steals a march and on Ponte Breathe and uh, strong inside the lead on the stroke of half time. Yeah, a strong number eight, seized his opportunity well. Keeping their heads here, using the forwards to good effect, and uh, Noah Williams using his weights to good effect. And crossing the whitewash. So the first try of the match goes the way of Swansea, and they soaked up the pressure for the greater part of that first half. Bailey Porter from in front of the posts. This should be the last piece of action of the, the opening half. To convert the well executed try by the Swansea forwards, dotted down by Noah Williams, making no mistake as uh, referee Oliver Hughes uh, blows for half time and Swansea. Uh, into the lead at the break by seven points to three.
Once again, it's uh, West against East in the Dewar Shield the final. One change for Swansea at half time. On comes Ryan Blythe for Josh Drew at tight head. A far more relaxed atmosphere in the Swansea camp at uh, half time. Justin Bunnell, the former Pont de the player and coach, and Cardiff as well, of course, backing the, uh, the orders at half time. What would the instructions have been to Pontypridd because they looked the most threatening in that uh, opening period, Di? Well, I think uh, they would have told them to take to take points when they can. Uh, they've had plenty of opportunities, perhaps, to kick a goal, but have gone for other options. And perhaps if they kept the clock ticking over, the scoreboard ticking over, it could be a, a different position for them. Swansea again probing the narrow side. Isaac Thomas capitalising on the good work done by Hooker Ocean Oliver. This is Ross Rossi, the number six. Out it goes into the hands of the outside half, uh, running from deep. That's Will Moore. We mentioned uh, proud fathers before. Will Moore is the son of a former Wales and Swansea lock forward, Andy Moore. And tall enough, perhaps, to be playing his trade amongst the Swansea forwards. That's an excellent kick. Taking play into the uh, Swansea half. So the forwards, again, having a quick word. And the referee will give them the hurry up here. So the line out as well. I was going to say it's functioned pretty well for Pontypridd, but not on that occasion. Commentators uh, curse, Just I think. Every uh, time, I. There was a time when I was embarrassed by it, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> too long in the tooth by now. So all the Swansea backs the the other side of this scrum. Dug out by Johnny Davis. Pogodic holding on for grim death. As uh, Ethan Botch, stout wing three quarter of Swansea winds his way upfield. Penalty Swansea. Let's see what they can do. Looked like it was going to be a good counter rock uh, there, but uh, giving away a penalty and. Uh, uh, Ponty had a good stab at it. Jack Swans Wilcox, the Swansea coach, up very quickly to uh, say what he he wants. And uh, this is a, a fair old effort if it's going to succeed uh, from uh, Bailey Porter, the Swansea fullback. That's the distance. It's midfield, midway between the 10 metre line and halfway. I was watching him in warm up, uh, and uh, it's right on the edge of his range, as they say. He was, he was getting the odd one. If you're going for distance for the uh, for the corner, it's a well, it's a fairly long way, isn't it? And uh, with the angle, probably uh, uh, further than what uh, Bailey Porter is hoping will happen here. Ball sitting proudly on the tee as Porter takes a deep breath. Right-footed, sends it high. Has it got the legs? Yes, it has. It has, yes. Well, the captain had every confidence in uh, his fullback, and Bailey Porter has repaid that confidence in spades as Swansea take a seven point lead at the top of the second half. It's Ponapri three, Swansea ten. The restart is a high hanging ball. Lost forward by Pontepri, good chasing. It's yet another penalty. Jake Davis makes sure that the ball goes in to touch. Just uh, on halfway. The 
Swansea. Wanting to shorten the line out somewhat here. Right at the back is the replacement. That's Ryan Blythe wearing 18. Can't prevent the ball from coming back on the uh, Ponty side, though. Prigodic. Oh, the oh. interception. And away he goes more, stretching his legs beyond the 22, in under the sticks. Great vision from the Swansea centre. And in the blink of an eye, Swansea have extended the lead. Another five-pointer, Wilmore, is over for Swansea's second try. Ponty three, Swansea 15. A really fine interception win. A timely interception, wasn't it? Ever open to the uh, chance that it might come his way. Stretched out his left arm and uh, it stuck like a Venus fly trap. See you. Put your shirt on this one going over from uh, Bailey Porter. Somewhat nearer to the post this time and sends it high and true. And suddenly there's a 14 point gap separating the teams. More showing good pace, Dai. Just like his father. <laughs> Uh, that should bring the smile in the face of Andy Moore, wherever he is watching. <laughs> so Ponapri have it all to do to get back into this match. There's a, suddenly a greater urgency in the play of the men in black and white. Neat little dab through. Good work out. Well covered by Bailey Porter. Down and up in one movement. Good play. But forced into touch. What a Pontypridd throwing at the line out. Now they must execute here to get back into this match and give themselves some hope. Nice skill there to go down and pick it up. We've seen a couple of mistakes earlier this afternoon where players have tried to pick up short of the line and had one eye on the opposition coming up and knocked on. Yeah, just Harry Kinsey with a little dab through in the chase. Twenty-three on for Swansea. That's uh, Jackson, uh, uh, Jake Russell, rather from Morriston. So Russell taking the place, I think, of Ross Rossi, the number six. Dogic. Almost to the trial, and this time perhaps can he turn? Can he ground the ball? Yellow card on its way here. Well, no sooner than he's come on the pitch that he's off again. <laughs> he is not amused. Head up, go! Head up, go! Get down here! Ah, uh, lifting the legs. Number 20 it was who came on. That's Josh Gallivan. And they'll be discussing that in Brintawi tomorrow. Uh, they will be. So Swansea down to 14 men. And defending a 14-point lead as Ponty come in search of their opening try, their first try. And losing possession again in view of the uh, Swansea try line. That's great yeah. work by the loose head prop for Swansea, Isaac Thomas. The Pontypridd forward tried to smuggle the ball back and the ball was there, but nobody seemed to want to take it off him. Loose ball snapped up by the loose head prop. It's good tidying up by Isaac Thomas then. When. Yeah, lifted the pressure. 
but the pressure's still on. Strong carry from Alfie Prigoric from uh, San Harry. Pontepreet have the numbers, cutting back inside, that's uh, Sam Price. Into midfield, the long oh, looping numbers. pass. Oh. oh! Once again, it's lost forward. There was a, a, a two-man overlap then, and uh, if it had gone to hand, there would have been a certain try for Pontefreeze. But again, the pass, I think, was behind him. And nothing wrong with the build-up. And Pontino. Again, Pontefreeze have had all the, uh, the, the pressure, the, the, the opportunity, but again have squandered it. So the captain, Jake, uh, Jack Wilcox, uh, comes in on the uh, blinder flank to make sure it's an even contest at the scrum, but there that leaves a gap behind, of course, with no problems. As Swansea secure possession and clear the lines, but only uh, so far as Wyatt. Now then again, Pondepreet have the numbers. They have to make the numbers count here as Sam Price is over from the right. Well, he had support. Oh. It should have gone, I think. So close again. But Swansea have regrouped. And look comfortable in the defensive effort. And again, the Ponapreeth player held up on the Swansea try line. Swansea defence on tippy toes. Laid back into the hands of Gethin Downs. This time, surely, no. Well held up. Thomas again, the looser prop forward, but it had to come, didn't it? And it's fallen for Luca White from Pontepreeth to claw one back for the black and whites. Sam Price to the go himself initially. Pontefreeze have got to make this seven minutes count as it I believe it's seven minutes instead of the ten as it is in uh, a 40 minute each way game so Luca White the try scorer can Gethin Jenkins add the necessaries right footed he's about 16 meters in from touch and uh, sends it home and brings Ponty back within uh, one score. Ponty 10, Swansea 17. They've still got another five minutes, perhaps, to make the, uh, the yeah. sending off count for them. Yeah, Ponty have the numerical advantage. And Josh Gullivan in the, uh, in the sin bin. For Swansea, the replacement. Well taken from the restart. Downs digs deep. Back into the hands, the safe hands of uh, Gethin Jenkins. Going backwards, Bailey Porter. That was a difficult ball to take. Evades the first tackle. And the second gets it away to uh, Swansea's uh, opening try scorer, Noah Williams. Strong, a uh, really strong boy. And there's another strong boy, Isaac Thomas. Sweeps that was it a out. very nice pass. No, we know this guy's got pace. Evan Jones needs some help though. Can't do it all on his own. A little show from Oliver. It's Theo Rogers. I think Swansea have got to go through the phases while there's a man down and try and eat up a bit of time. Well, they're coming up outside here. Williams over the 22. Support is there. Once more, the plague on this match. The penalties, but it was Pogodic, I think, who got hands to the ball. And... Uh, Earned his side a penalty. Sent into the sidelines on the far side by Gethin Jenkins. A good game for Pondefreeth. 
just got inside the Swansea half. Prepare to make uh, a substitution on comes uh, Evan Godwin from Askol Gavin Goyer. Replacing Evan Jones. So wing three quarter for wing three quarter. The Swansea player, the fullback, who's uh, receiving some attention. Get up, get up. A bit of blood, perhaps, Bailey Porter. Stay awesome, stay awesome. There it is. Shielded again. In comes Downs, the scrum half, not required yet. As Ponty press forward into the wide open spaces. Ball bounces up and in the face of uh, Bailey Porter. Can't quite gather Pontepreda there in numbers. Prigodic again becoming even more prominent in this match for Pontepreda. Excellent pass. The take and pass at the same time. And Swansea. Oh, he's away. He's away. All the way for the uh, replacement. Uh, Swansea is scrum half. That's uh, Theo Rogers. Well, fresh legs on the field and the Swansea restore that advantage. Third try for Swansea. And a man down, a crucial score. Well, I'm not sure what the injury was that prevented him from starting this match. But boy, it certainly wasn't his hamstrings. <laughs> Maybe his turbocharger wasn't working properly. <laughs> well, he's finely tuned now, that's for sure. Pins back his ears and away he goes. No sign of an injury to his legs, anyhow. Excellent work there by the replacement, Rogers. An opportunist, opportunist try, if ever there was one. They're, and Swansea are back up to uh, full complement, I think. So no harm done on the scoreboard. So this to restore that 14-point advantage that Swansea enjoyed some... Uh, Five, seven minutes ago. That's the angle for young Bailey Porter. Doesn't miss, does he? Makes it look easy. Pontepreve 10, Swansea 24. One hand, perhaps, on the Dewar Shield. Oh, look at the determination on the face of Theo Rogers. An out and out sprinter. Wilcox, the captain, playing a captain's role, securing the ball from the restart. And Josh Gallivan back on, following his time on the Naughty Boys chair. Rogers kicked half charge down by uh, Pogodic. Let's hope he can stay on a little bit longer this time. Then. <laughs> Some rousing cheers of encouragement uh, from the stands. And Ponty certainly need them at the moment. And a confirmation of changes for Ponty leaving the field number one, Wojciech Kadelka, and he's replaced by number 17, Ethan Hardwick. Also leaving the field number four, Luca Alexander Wads, and he's replaced by number 19, Samson Silva. Ponty Preeth asking the forwards uh, to truck it up. Not for the first time, almost up to the Swansea 22. Good work by the replacement, Samson Philpott. <laughs> Was that a more apt name for a ball carrier? Oh, it's a wicked bounce. 
Sam Price bundled into touch. A good carry again from the uh, Pontypridd forwards. Not much choice there, was there? As Will Moore was up in the face of uh, Downs, I think it was, the uh, scrum half. So Oliver to find his man. Over the top it goes, that's Blythe. The prop forward. It's another opportunity for Pont de Will they go for the corner? Of course they will. They need to keep the uh, the pressure on the Swansea try line here, Dai. Absolutely, and Luke McCauley's come on. He's a, a really big lad. There he is. There he is. And oh, then Ponty. Accuracy is what's needed here. A tight net forwards drive towards the Swansea try line. Swansea doing their level best to halt the charge. Another go, the uh, heavy men, Philpott and uh, one or two others besides. It's on its way. Yeah, perfectly entitled to place the ball. And Ponty have clawed one back. Let's have another look. Looks as if it could be Johan Leishon, the number 13 for Ponypri, yeah. the app. Looks like him. Definitely Leishon. So close the gap then to seven points again off the post and back into the field of play. So Ponty still trailed by two scores. Not Ponty's day today. Not yet, it isn't. Still time. A player down for Swansea on the uh, on the far side. That's. Uh, Josh Gallivan. So if he's injured, then there's a fair chance that uh, Ross Rossi might come back on. Rolling subs, of course. Uh, Gallivan going off for the second time. And did you rest this time? Sends it long. The chase wasn't there, though. No, that's opened the door, hasn't it? For Ponderpreet, the kick downfield, the bounce. Swansea just about coping with the, uh, the speculative kick. Thomas is there, leaves it. That's Wilcox. Anywhere will do, so long as it's over the sidelines. Yeah, it was a great kickoff. It was deep into the uh, Pont de Prix 22, but there was no follow-up. There was no chase, and uh, Pont de Prix got back in to a very good attacking position. Swansea making further substitutions. On there's Sam Causey from the Skull Govin Goyer wearing 16. Penalised immediately for holding on to the ball. And 
No prizes for guessing what Ponti were intent on doing, sending it into the touch. Well, perhaps greater concentration might have uh, taken it closer to the corner flag. So six minutes or so remaining in this Adua Shield Cup final for Pontypridd to claim two scores. Having seen that conversion attempt to uh, hit the upright. A Pontypridd score now will open it right up. It certainly will. Driving forward, trotting forward, galloping forward even. Sam Morgan doing well for Swansea, the number seven. What's happening here? I think it's one of those moments where the referee would like to see it again on TV. Yeah, let's see what the uh, referee's assistant has seen. <laughs> I think they'd like to go upstairs for this one. Uh, it's a penalty for Swansea. No, I think he's going to try. Yeah, yeah, he's going to try. He's a try, it is. Yeah. So let's have a look. There were Ponty protests, weren't there? Go and see the uh, referee's assistant. Again, it was a lovely take by McCauley in that line out. And uh, for him not to have been in the starting lineup. Yeah, when you look at it again. Game on. Game on now. So the conversion is successful. As we were reprising that uh, try scoring effort, Gethin Jenkins strokes it sweetly between the posts, and uh, suddenly it's a two point game with some four minutes remaining. And Swansea have eased their grasp somewhat on that uh, Dewar Shield, which. Uh, it looked so firm and solid at one stage a minute or two ago. So it's all hands to the pump now for Swansea. Prigodic, one of the star players for Pontepri this Men evening. Over. Wyatt up from fullback, the cross kick into midfield. A little too far, perhaps, and Bailey Porter has it covered. Yeah, a little over three minutes, uh, I think, um, unofficially. It's a question of whether Swansea can hang on. So the dropout. Will you pick your spot here? Yeah. Finding Ryan Jones, the uh, lock forward, Prigodic. The prodigious Prigodic. Oh, that's an important penalty for Swansea. It certainly is, and they don't need to hurry. No, cool heads. They're going to be walking to this line out, I think. Take your time, says Noah Williams. Cool heads needed. Bailey Porter just wiping the ball there for a second. He wants to make sure that he can get this one into touch. Never mind the distance. Wanting to put it in the back, uh, back row of the, uh, the terracing. Sam Corsi organizing his troops. And let's have the uh, clear channel between the two sets of forwards, says uh, referee Oliver Hughes, who's had a, more than a decent game. To the back again, palm down. Lively Theo Rogers. Loose ball, still advantage Swansea. And a penalty, a full penalty. And again, the clock is ticking. Take your time. And it's the, the cool hand of Noah Williams once more. Urging caution. As Porter again puts it away. Can't be much time left. It's 24 against 22. Swansea. It's been a great year for Swansea schools in the Dewar Shield competition. Can they round it off and lift the Dewar Shield itself? That's the first element done. Not expertly, it has to be said. 
Theo Rogers in a heap of trouble here, but the referee's arm is outstretched once more. And it's taken in by Ryan Blythe. Swansea only need to retain possession. Another penalty. Pondipri desperate to get their hands on the ball. Not too far from the sidelines here. And there will be time. There has to be time for the for the lineout. Referee Hughes has a look at his watch for the first time. And he knows that we're into uh, the last few seconds, the dying seconds. And to the Swansea players looking in his direction. They have to do it again at this lineout. Noah Williams climbs high. Down it goes into the uh, the hands there of Luke McCauley. Out it goes over the sidelines, and there it is. A jubilant Swansea school side. Then all the replacements and uh, all the squad rush onto the field to Arte. Congratulations. Two breakaway tries in the end sealed it for Swansea. One for Wilmore at centre. And a lung bursting effort from Theo Rogers, the replacement at scrum half. And despite all the valiant efforts of Pontepreeth to get back into this match, they came within two points in the end, but they came up short. And the Dewar Shield, the historic Dewar Shield, is on its way back west to Swansea. Final score Pontepreeth 22, Swansea 24. It was a game that could have gone either way, we win. It could, couldn't it? I mean, Pondipreeth had taken their chances in the first half. It would be staying, the Dewar Shield would be going up to uh, Ponty this evening. They relied so much on their forwards, didn't they? And they had uh, well, the Indian side over the uh, Swansea uh, forwards for the greater part, and with the driving malls. Those driving malls in the first half, it looked as if, Swan as if Pondipreeth would dominate uh, the scoring. Pontypridd, well, their names have been on the the Dewar Shield so many times. Not so uh, the Swansea, and on the uh, refurbished Dewar Shield, there's some hundred plaques on it. The Swansea School side of 2022-23 will be added and take pride of place. Gallivan, one-handed. Came on, went off, came back on again. Went off for a second time, injured the, the second time around. Swansea scoring when they were down to uh, 14 players. It's a despondent uh, Ponty school side and uh, no consoling by the looks of it. There, number four, Luca White, who was among the try scorers. The man with the scrum cap there certainly stood out. Alfie Prigodic from uh, Thanhari. It'll be uh, Jack Wilcox, the number 12 for Swansea, who very shortly will uh, endeavour to lift the Dewar Shield, perhaps. But he'll need some assistance because it's a, it's a heavy old uh, shield, that's the Shield of Dreams. Yeah, the game played in good spirit, Ty. Absolutely. Yeah, the Dewar Shield, it's not something they, they're going to be able to hold over their heads as they uh, receive it. Swansea defence, well, they can be proud of their defensive effort. And they took their chances. And they were able to convert those chances into points and the kicking the reliable boot of uh, Bailey Porter saw them home. That's a magnificent kick from beyond the 10 metre mark. Gave them a, a slight breathing space and then Theo Rogers with that effort. Again, capitalising on a Ponty mistake as the uh, match officials prepare to come up and uh, receive their rewards, their medals. Swansea squad in a huddle, capping off a fantastic year for Swansea schools. Nick Murphy with the medals. Been assisted by Steve Lord. Some nice cut glass, adding to the collection of uh, cut glass, probably, because we've seen one or two of these faces before. Uh, 
So who's next? <laughs> Word of comfort. And reaffirmation for the Pont de Prix inside. In total contrast to the emotions of the Swansea schools. 15 and that is the magnificent uh, trophy and the cartouche at the top they are in the center just above the uh, cartouche in the center is the new cartouche uh, uh, prepared by the uh, the repair shop which uh, looked a bit sorry for itself when it uh, arrived at the uh, the barn where we've seen the repair shop filmed well yes yeah, so it, it's it's dis it's disguising three holes i think the new cartouche these are the medals that do a shield winners and over to the left the, uh, the medals which will be received shortly by the uh, Ponty school sides disappointed as they are but, uh, to reiterate that they did have their chances the tries close to yeah, final worthy of the uh, uh, Dewar Shield, and you feel for all the boys, but uh, one team well has to be run uh, runner up. As we said after the previous game, you know they'd be upset and kick themselves for about 20 minutes or 30 minutes, and then they'll look back and uh, hopefully they've had a thoroughly enjoyable afternoon here. Yeah, they certainly entertained us. Gethin Downs, the uh, scrum half there, receiving his uh, medal. Alfie Prigodic. Well played, sir. Yeah, probably there are no words, really, are there? Other than commiserations for the uh, the Ponty squad, they came with such high hopes. And those hopes were thwarted with those two uh, breakaway tries for Swansea schools. And as they prepare to come up to gather their medals and, of course, the famed uh, Dewar Shield, first presented in 1904 or five. Will Moore among the try scorers. Ocean Oliver, prominent at hooker in the thick of things. Yeah, smiles all round. That was Theo Rogers. Josh Gallivan. So will there be a trophy lift, I wonder? And then Howell, I can see down there, is hoping, I hope not. Otherwise, there's a long trip up to uh, Sussex once again, perhaps, to repair the Dewar Shield once more. Some stout timber in that Dewar Shield by now. As Jack Wilcox prepares to join his victorious Swansea side, they'll gather round the Dewar Shield, if nothing else. Nick Murphy alongside him for the obligatory uh, photograph and the handshake. So gently does it, Jack. <laughs> Listening against the uh, the backdrop of the floodlights here at the uh, Principality Stadium. So this is the moment. This is what the Swansea schools came for. Swansea schools are the winners of the uh, famed Dewar Shield in the season 2022-23 to round off a fantastic season for them
Let's have a go at it. <laughs> Gently does it, guys. Up into the air it goes. Once and once only. And that, that'll make its way back up to the uh, Ponty Club tonight. And then uh, it'll be displayed at the uh, our annual, annual sevens up in Clandivery in May. And then I believe it'll probably go into a museum for safekeeping here at the WIU. Well, it's a wonderful sight. And again, I... Uh, Congratulate uh, my old schoolmate uh, Lynn Howell for having the vision to take uh, that uh, Dewar Shield to be repaired. And uh, he was saying, Well, it's all your fault. He said, You said how sad it looked <laughs> 12 months ago. And it prompted me to think, Well, what can I do? And uh, that's the result. The Dewar Shield. Let's congratulate uh, Swansea on their victory and look back on the highlights.